Chambers joined by a man who can do his own introduction, but honestly, he needs none if you follow Nace. A man of few words. Hmm. That's what I'm going for today. Never mind. I'm joking, of course. I am Daniil, also known as Better Than McGee, and I'm feeling fantastic here, Patrick, for we have a special treat lined up here. If you are a Rocket League fan, I know at least one Rocket League fan who's very happy today, and I know another Rocket League fan who's very happy today, and it's going to be a fantastic day for all of us because we have a double line header for all of our Rocket League fans. We have both of our varsity premier teams competing in the CRL open qualifier. Isn't that right, Patrick? Yeah, you know, I'm glad to be back here again this year. Last year, it was uh, probably one of the first uh, streams that I was doing, at least one of the first long ones. I remember mm. uh, when I was uh, first year uh, talking to Dan, he had me in for a couple of RL matches, and then after he was like, okay, you've done like two streams now. You've casted for maybe like 40 minutes tops. Here's six hours, and then, you know, we ran with it. Honestly, no, it was very, very fun. Mm -hmm. uh, some of the best moments that I can remember are from those times, you know, yeah. the Spoods call. You can look in the Twitch Clips <laughs> channel. It's there. Well, the, whole, the whole point is I'm, I'm very excited. 40 I minutes was it. all we needed of Patrick to know that he was ready for the big time. And this is the big time, ladies and gentlemen. Even watching the coaches and players walk in – just talking to each other. They know it's the big time. The CRL Open Qualifiers, this is where everything is riding. This is where you want to put your 100%, your best foot forward and make sure you can deliver a quality match, a quality performance. Because, again, CRL, that's where everybody wants to be. Isn't that right? Absolutely. And, I mean... I got to say, I'm so, so pumped to watch our two teams go out today. Just in case, uh, for those who don't know, we have a new roster, at least on the Varsity Premier mm -hmm. side. They're the defending, you know, CRL champions. It's not too big of a deal, right? I mean, Fabs Ozai, Jazzy, coached by Shuffleverse. And then on our other uh, team as well, our gold team, our mm -hmm. Sinclair gold team, we got some returning names Vesh and Christian, who you all would remember if you were fans of last year, plus Barrist, who's come in from Genoa, from Italy. So, yeah, uh, I mean, if you guys follow the Italian Rocket League scene, not, a, not saying that, you know, I'd expect many of you would over here in NA, but <laughs> he's a big name guy. And Genoa is a huge school in the collegiate scene. So, uh, again, I'm pretty sure they beat Northwood. Like four to them, yeah. Okay, so that's like, all I need yeah, that's all you need to know to basically catch you up. I, I look, I mean, I could be wrong on that, but I'm pretty sure I am right. I was uh, just kind of watching our team of Jazzy, Fabso, and Zai scrimming earlier. Hey, look, mm -hmm. there's Daniel, a little cameo walk by, and uh, they were scrimming up against Cosmic, CG, and No Mansion. So again, three names that I'm very familiar with, not only just from. Uh, seeing them in like RLCS quals, but also in Collegiate, No Mansion, a guy who's been here for a pretty long time, Cosmic, a name that I do know from RLCS quals, uh, most notably, if anything that pops into my mind. So again, they were going kind of back and forth. Honestly, our guys looked very confident. Okay. I think I only saw them drop maybe one, two games max out of like the almost 10 plus that I saw them play against wow. them. Okay. So uh, yeah. No, they were doing really good. And I heard on the other side that Vesh was apparently peaking. So, I mean, uh, no matter who we're watching today, uh, it's going to be it's gonna be great. Fantastic. And especially for Rocket League, it's so momentum-based. Even just having some good warm-up matches before your tournament run can be the difference between making it all the way through winners versus going out in the first round. It is such... You cannot overstate the importance of playing confident, playing like you are at your peak of your performance capabilities. And from what you're saying, Patrick, unless you're lying straight to my face, which I know you can, uh, <laughs> I think they are definitely looking good to make a strong run today. And another thing I think is worth mentioning, we had a little bit of a show match to start the year off between our green and our gold teams. And I think that this is another opportunity for our gold team to kind of kick back a little bit. I ended up losing that matchup against the green squad um, to play at the LAN. So maybe this is a chance for them to kind of, you know, not necessarily get revenge because we are all on the same team in the end. But no, show maybe, off uh, their stuff, you know, show it, show it off. Mm -hmm. Show that, you know, we are capable of uh, causing some chaos in a tournament bracket. I just think it's hilarious how we're in NA school, but <laughs> we only have one NA player in Christian on both of our varsity premier yeah. rosters. 
Like, we're literally just EU now, which I love, because I think, honestly, my hot take is that EU Rocket League is, like, way better than NA play style of Rocket League, and that's why they're kind of the better region right now. You can hate me all you want. Facts don't care about your feelings. So, I will hate there you. you. Go. I am North American through and through in all my favorite scenes, all my esports. I will. You will find me defending all the I NA teams. Just said in the Rocket League scene, but even even then, you know, they still show up a lot in you know lands. You're but a traitor. still, it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be pretty interesting. We're gonna be going into game in a little bit of a second. We don't exactly know who we're gonna be covering, but we're gonna find out right now. And there we go. It is going to be St. Clair Green, and let's kick this thing off against Michigan Esports Teal. Absolutely, we got the squad, like you mentioned, Fabs of Jazzy PZY leading things off against Michigan Esports. It's a best of three in the upper bracket. These teams are getting off to a bit of a slow start, but that could change as we're seeing the setup coming off the center bar and Jazzy coming from the center, flying down to send that one flying in. I said they're starting slow. Not the case anymore. Well, Fabso's going to end up popping up to Zai, and then it's going to be off the backboard. Jazzy having no difficulty getting up and finding it. What I love about this St. Clair Saints green team with Jazzy, Fabso, and Zai is that they're always playing for each other. They always have a pass going oh, downfield. Wow. That's going to be a little bit of an overcommit. Fabso has the beat on the man, and he absolutely snipes a one through the bottom left corner. There is no real reason to relent at all. Uh, this is going to continue throughout this entire match. I will just declare that from now. They are yeah. already playing this fast, this confidently, getting goals of this caliber. It's not just the fact that they're getting goals, it's how they're getting them. They're setting up perfectly. They're not facing any kind of contest. And it's just no. one after the other after the other. I... This, they, they got this one. No, I mean, they're locked right now. Yeah. I was, I was watching them beforehand. Like, I, again, you're scrimming up against some of the top competition as well, and you're not dropping almost any games. Very few hiccups, and when they were making them, they were just laughing them off and everything. It was almost like I was just watching three demons just kind of laughing at everyone's Cackling. demise just in the background. Yeah, No, it's absolutely <laughs> terrifying. And uh, right now, Michigan Esports Teal, they got to be uh, kind of looking with big eyes and sweaty palms because, man, 4.15 left in the game. You're already down three, and I'm not going to lie, this 50 could definitely set up Jazzy. No play smart. Tries to force for his teammates. Stay back as the third man. He's going to have the touch to Fab, so can the inverted flip go through? No, not quite, but it's a double commit. Pop from Zai. Up to Jazzy. Has a reset. Trying to get around one. Backboard. Forcing out for Fabso. The shot not weak. It's going to oh, be wow. on target, but the save does come out from the cursor. They ended up utilizing each other to kind of stop the momentum to keep them in place to hold the ball. But a shot's coming out. It's going to go a little too high. Popping off the crossbar. Sending it right back, but Benny King not going to be able to beat Fabso. Two of PZY taking the opportunity Don't. to bounce that one down. Shriek <laughs> forward. Almost into the net. Fabso is going to be the factor that guarantees it a goal, 4-0. St. Clair College Green Squad absolutely decimating Michigan, Michigan Esports. Like, it's kind of like watching a, a cabal of demons. It's like if Kid Boo was playing Rocket League, it would look Not like literally. <laughs> and I'm honestly like, oh, Daniel, this is going to be such a fun day. I mean, Zai, Zai, that's not even a shot that Zai usually misses, but I think he's just kind of warming up even then. Fabso pre-jump over one, has an around touch, trying to look for the backboard. Reset. Can Zai find the flip? Reset into the double? No, not quite. But he forces it out for Jazzy. Looking for a bump now as well. He's going to be able to take the mid or the steel the uh -oh. other boost. Uh -oh. He's going to have the reset. Oh. I'm getting jumbled on my words, but it's because everything's happening so fast, and it's the first game of the day. Sorry, the first game of the day. Trust me, guys. I will lock in. Oh, my God. <laughs> but right now, it is going to be St. Clair with another shot. The Cursor with a save. And, man, this is just back and forth shot after shot. This is heavenly. This is a fantastic day. Nobody clipped that, by it's the way. It's going to be a fantastic <laughs> said, day. Nobody clipped that. I can already Please. tell. But... <laughs> We're here, ladies and gentlemen, and we're going to be witnessing the Saints getting yet another. No, never mind. Not a goal just yet. In fact, the Crazer zooming down. Not going to be able to get the goal quite yet, but Fabso going to get the deny. And in fact, it's going to end up rolling all the way from Saints side into Michigan Esports net. Jazzy with the goal. Although I think this could be more attributed to Fabso. Ah, it looked like Fabso's to me, but I guess Jazzy was the last touch in any case. That was the situation completely reversed for Michigan turning into a Saints goal once again. Right, I mean, 
Uh, again, this is the second time I believe I've just seen uh, Michigan get caught on an overcommit. They're just not, they seem jumbled. Uh, honestly, it's low boost on the defensive side. They're not finding their pads or their corners. And I think that's because St. Clair Green is doing such a good job of stealing boost in the opposition side. Mm -hmm. They're always setting up for a next man side with a reset, opting to fake it out. Going to get challenged though, and the clear will come through. Jazzy just trying to relocate back, trying to see if he can calm with his team to stay back. Zai calls him off. Has the clear, tries to get another touch down to Fabso, the pop up as well. Fabso opting to keep trying to force a 50. However, the Curzer with a great second touch. Jazzy reset off the sidewall, trying to find another reset. Double is his. Can he find the triple? No, Ooh. not quite, but it passes down to Zai. 50 is made though on the challenge. Watch that. PZY is in the corner. Even if he doesn't get the goal here, he's going to be in position to oh send it God. straight down. He lined that up, saw that coming from a mile away. The stars foretold this 10,000 years ago, and the prophecy was fulfilled by PZY. Sending that one in, the splash to cement it, 6-0 to oh so far. There's no mercy rule, is there? Zai, when you watch this back, I just want to let you know how disgusting that shot is. I mean, you know yourself, you just pulled it off, but I mean, that is absolutely brilliant, the pre-jump. The comms are just so fluid between these three, yeah. and you can just tell they've just been together, and their chemistry is so good. Uh, now, Fabso, trying to find a 50, but it's not going to happen. Zai, off the backboard. He's just trying to see if he can find a reset, maybe do a pass. No, not quite. Opts to go for the pass instead in the pinch with Jack but it doesn't fall through. Fabso with another shot, rebound, out. It should be a goal for St. Clair, but great defense so far actually staying composed is Michigan Esports. It's going to be Crimson off the back trying to find the clear. Fabso pops up to Jazzy, who's already up. The pre-jump from Zai, drop down pass, but no one's there in the center. Fabso opting to stay safe and will opt to be the third man waiting for the clear so we can put back pressure on the defense. This is a moment of patience from the Saints that we haven't seen all game except for the first 10 seconds. Right now, they are just circling around, trying to set up goals, and not going to take anything too early or too preemptive of a strike. They are just playing this cold calculated, and you already see Jazzy on the back line, ready to respond to this clear, sending this one into the air, chasing it all the way back to blue side. Bobzo on the ground to help with the follow-up, sending it straight in. 7-0, yep. to oh, 40 seconds left. Maybe they could get the 10th of game ahead. Right, I mean, I don't think that's going to be in their, <laughs> their goal, honestly. Uh, the, but, I mean, if they do, then that'd be nice. Right now, nice I who? think they're just trying, well, for us. For us. If there are any Michigan fans in the chat, I um, I apologize. But it's not looking too good right now. It's it just is, not. It is important to emphasize that, again, this, this roster of the Saints are the previous CRL Literal champions. previous, yeah. So, so they're, look, to be, to be fair to your point, this is probably going to be the hardest team that Michigan Esports Teal is probably going to face all day yeah. today. I mean, statistically, it, it is. It is, right? Yeah. So even though they got ranked on the 10th seed, I just want to put that out there, uh, our green team did. So Michigan Esports, again, probably going to be the hardest team they face all day. But honestly, if you're a Michigan fan, I think that's actually better. You can get it out of your system, get it out of the way. Yeah. If you take the loss, you take the loss. But you know what? You can guarantee you're going to be ready or at least very much locked for the next team you face. And as Fabso puts that one through the back of the net and we reach 9-0 with 20 seconds left, honestly, they're probably just waiting to just get into the next lobby. And that's the attitude you got to have about it. Don't focus about what the score is right now. Just kind of recenter your uh, thoughts on what you're going to be able to do next game. Hey, we did hit 10 before the game ended. Yeah, I they heard you, Daniil. Uh, maybe. I don't know. Yeah. They, they, they are crowd pleasers out there. They are. One thing I love about the green team, they're super friendly. They love the stream. They love the broadcast. Anytime they see me, like, hey, man, what's up? Hey, good stuff. It's, it's nice. It's pleasant. So it's it's not impossible that if I asked them to go 10-0 for the entire day, they would absolutely try their best. But in any case, ladies and gentlemen, this is going to wrap up our first game in this series, St. Clair College Green going 10-0 against Michigan Esports Teal, actually going to go 11. Yeah, and I have a little update as well. Uh, the gold team won their first game 2-0 as well. So that's Vesh Christian and Barris. Barris with a goal in that game as well. So a great job from them as me and Daniel do actually have them in the bottom too. So we can kind of keep you guys updated on both as we see the cameras flick over yeah. to that green team. They're just stretching Zai, just having a good time, making sure he gets all loose and ready <laughs> to put on those mechs. And honestly, I mean, I got to say, 
They look so good in the first game. I think uh, they're just going to continue their road of dominance in the second one. You see them watching, looking up the TV. They're either watching their own stream or they're watching the other, uh, the gold team go at it. So either way, uh, you know, good job on both teams. The gold team's just on the other side of the stage as well. So, you know, there you go. Yeah, and I think they're just enjoying the atmosphere, having a nice time. They are playing right next to their teammates, you know? They're on the other side of the stage after every game, probably, hey, how'd your game go? Oh, you know, 11 to 0, how'd your game go? Oh, you know, 12 to 0, haha. <laughs> hey, you know, it's just another day in the <laughs> office for these guys. Gotta one-up each other, right? So as we head into this game to St. Clair College Green versus Michigan Esports Teal, I mean, I guess, like you said, Michigan, they're probably just playing for the next lobby. I feel like, I feel like we're kind of doing the same right now. You and me, Patrick, just getting ready to see what else they can do. Right, I mean, I had a couple of mishaps on my commentary in first game, but if I'm going to have them, you might as well get them over and done with right. in the first series. I'll be locked all the rest of the day, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Don't worry about it. You know, I just woke up like an hour ago. Give me a break here. <laughs> there are going to be no breaks today, Patrick, because as you can already see, that's true. It's breakneck pacing. The Saints are going absolute 100%. Hey, good that save. Must be a really Great good save. From Crimson and Jazzy looking to uh, make that all in vain, oh, and he's going to succeed, beating out three in a row with just very subtle taps and aerial control. The control here, the foot cancel into being able to have the space to then move your car with your air roll to find the double, it's slow, it's past everybody, it's just what Jazzy needed to do to get it through, and that's going to be all they care about. As we head into a switch, we will be following whatever game is closer sometimes, so a couple of mid-game switches might happen. <laughs> Air dribble bump attempted, but it's not going to go through. Barris finds a demo. 2-1 so far for St. Cl uh, St. Clair Gold and St. John Fisher. Barris not able to find any dunk on that double attempt. The shot comes Ooh. through. A crazy save by Christian, closely shaved off the cross bar and Barris clears back into the defensive end. Barris doing a great job of maintaining that pressure. Christian not even caring about what's going on the other side of the field. Just go straight for it. No one was there to answer it and he had the speed. He had the boost to make sure it was going to be uncontested. Debo trying to get repositioned, even trying to flip there at the end, but it was too little too late. Those split second mistakes can cost you a lot in Rocket League of this level. Right, absolutely. Uh, it all depends on your touches, your comms, everything. It's a game of mental as well. So again, you can't, you have to let the mental go by you if you're St. John Fisher. But right now, the Saints putting down the hammer. Vesh, we know him so well for doing this all of last year. It's another double off a pass from Barrist, and it's an absolute manslaughter on the other end of the field. And so far, Gold has been doing a fantastic job of just laying down the pressure. Christian's trying to fight mid. Vesh is doing a good job of pushing that one forward. Christian there for the follow-up, but we're seeing him trying to contest Barris on the left side, sending it back over to Vesh. A bump is going to come out. Depot pushed out of the way in favor of Vesh. It's my ball, buddy. And he's going to act like a Barris. Jeez, actually, no, he's going to wait for that corner play. Vesh is going to get it out there. Barris is going to center it off of the crossbar from the top, but no one's going to be able to follow it up. They don't want to commit too hard. Christian chasing it back. Barris centering it once again. Vesh for the shot. And we're going to see the sorry for the save. A counter shot a rebound coming back Christian trying to get this one going but they're running out of boost they're getting dry I think they're gonna play this a little bit slow try to refuel and just reset for another play here as Vesh takes this one back down to the ceiling but again no one is there to follow up off of it you have to make sure you have the momentum the boost to play around in any case the Saints have the goal advantage they are just making sure they can stall it as much as possible if they get more goals great it's on St. John Fisher to get the answers right and that double pass down to Vesh is going to be saved out by Sori. Barris now off the sidewall. Has 75 to his name, but he's going to get beat out. Christian now trying to see if he can find a centering pass in the midfield, but it's not going to happen. Saints on a little bit of an overcommit. Debo trying to find a pass, but a great job by Christian to just force the fake. Mysteria Ooh, able to get a fake okay. of his own, but the second player there from St. Clair. However, Debo's shot goes straight into the back of the net, and after that double commit that had to be made because of the fake by Mysteria, it sets up a free shot for Debo on an awkward Saints defender in Barris. He's pulling a little bit of a Christian there. That was the last goal we saw the Saints.
Williams accomplished. A little bit of a gap in the defensive line, made an opportunity for himself, saw it, went for it, and no one was able to answer in time. We saw that Christian was off on the right getting boost, and Barris just wasn't in position fast enough to get the save. Now we're seeing Barris trying to get revenge for that goal. Christian going to center this one, taking it right down. Devo meeting it in the air, cushioning it a little bit, taking this to a favorable angle, and they're going to successfully get the clear. It's in front of St. Side now. Vesh with the save, preventing that from being a roller in. Christian going to beat the 50 over to Devo, taking it over the rooftop, bouncing off of the ceiling. Barris cradling it, trying to get into a good advantageous position. Christian's going to have to take the initiative, take us out of the corner. Sorry's going to be chasing it. Vesh is going to get beaten out by Devo, taking it once again into the corner on blue side. Vesh for the shot, going to just barely miss, allowing Mystery to get the save. Barris and the rest of the Saints are scrambling to keep this one on blue side. So far, they're finding success into the corner it goes. It's just a game of cat and mouth back forth. It's like ping pong for the soccer right now. Right, and the reason you're seeing the Saints go for all these long clears and high touches is because they're up 4-2 right now. They're just trying to force long touches into the back end, trying to force touches to the corner because that burns time. It burns boost for the defense to have to clear out and then find even more boost to get their own attack. So if the Saints can just control the midfield, play attack friendly, but make sure that they don't have any overcommits, they can do this and hold this lead and just drain this clock out. Again, more aerial attacks from them drains even more time. The shot out from Debo, it's going to force a little bit of an awkward defense and because of that, because of the fact that I know the Saints are trolling, this game will not be 5-2 anymore, <laughs> but it looked like it should have been. Overcommit by the Saints, it will be a one-on-one, -on -one. 50 to come through. Where's the second player on the side of St. John Fisher? There they are, Mysteria, able to bring this one back within one. A little bit of trolling from the Saints' gold roster, and right now, it could bite them in the butt. Seconds left. We saw the gold team get about four goals in that amount of time, or green team rather get about mm -hmm. four goals in that amount of time. So it's not possible for St. John Fisher <laughs> to tie this one back. Uh, they are very capable of doing so. Hopefully the Saints' goal. They are uh, they're buttoning up their ties and their suits, making sure they're playing. Good. I want to send Christian there to get the redemption, getting this scoreline to where it should be. Five to three, Saints goal taking this game to winning the match against St. John Fisher. And it was a tough battle. We saw St. John Fisher getting close here and there to tie things up, put some pressure on the Saints. But at the end, they're going to come out shining like a nice Rolex watch, I guess. I'm trying to sleep about something that's gold. Hey, you know what? It's all good. Right now, we know what the score will end up being, though, regardless. It is going to be the gold team who takes their first series against St. John Fisher. A great job there. Now, back onto the green side. And yep, they they picked up right where they left off. 7-0 right now. Jazzy reset. Can you find the double? No, not quite, but it forces all three defenders on the side of Michigan to commit, and that should be an easy put away for Zai. Only, only eight points? <laughs> Damn. Uh, I, I guess this team kind of fell off a little bit. Who, sorry, who? <laughs> so I, I, I looked at eight. you like for a sec. I, I didn't know who you were looking at. Our team only has eight points right now compared to last. Oh, game. I thought you meant a player on like the defense for no. Michigan had eight points total so far in the game, meaning they only touched the ball four times. Oh no! Total no, no, in no, the no, game. No. Okay, no, no, no. You meant goals. Okay. Nah, Other than I was like, what? That. that would have been absolutely insane. <laughs> <laughs> the Saints at this point in the last series they are at 11 to eight. So right now. While eight points is remarkable, it is nothing compared to the previous one. In any case, the Saints are still going to establish a very dominant lead for both teams, starting things off on their matches for today. And the CRL opens, we're gonna have two O's across both squads, and uh, couldn't have been in a more fashionable fashion, if you could ask me. I mean, there's not really much to break down there. Not really. There's not really. It's just preventing the players on the opponent teams from having breakdowns themselves. That's basically it. I mean, look, we want to play nice here, but at the same time, those scores were not close, nor should they have been. I expect you, We expect this out of uh, the green team so far. Yeah. Um, again, on the gold side, great job as well. They win 2-0. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. It really can't, you know, it's going good right now. Yeah. Let's hope it doesn't go any worse. Let's hope it just stays that way. I might have cast or cursed it, but who knows? Like I said, there's like there's not a lot to break down there. The Saints are just playing really well. Their opponents, unfortunately, weren't able to match the pressure that they were laying out. But as the day goes on, that's the beauty of a tournament. You're facing the bigger and bigger dogs. There's always somebody more fearsome than you are. And I, from the sounds of it, you know, the goal team is getting ready to start up their next matchup against who that is. Hopefully, it's going to be a bit of a scary dog. Give them a little 
little bit more run for their money and they're not going to make those shoulder checking plays, get the ball out of the clear line of sight from the goal and almost get tied up. Hopefully they're going to be forced to play at 100%. Right. I mean, if there was anything I could break down there from both teams, I think they are winning the midfield battle. And that really makes the big difference because when you can keep the ball and hold and just waste time, seal boost, find a bump, and maybe have someone awkward on the other side defensively, it when you have the lead, it doesn't necessarily have to turn into a goal. Exactly. You're playing for two factors, right? Exactly. And just being able to have that control, if anything, to me, is even more impressive than putting on a scoring clinic. Uh, not that the green team wasn't doing that. They were, definitely were. Yeah, they were. But they were showing that they could just keep the ball when they wanted to mm -hmm. and not give it away, brainlessly lose possession. They were very smart in every touch that they take. Uh, every touch is almost calculated. Um, the comms are sweet. People leaving for the other guy who has a better angle on it, right? So it's a great job. They're forcing for their teammates really well as well. It's something oh, yeah. I love to see that doesn't happen as often in the NA Playstyles Rocket League as it, I think, should. Mm -hmm. um, it's very solo play heavy, the NA Playstyle, whereas the EU Playstyle is a lot more like, okay, yeah, we can do like solos and everything, but it's not, you know, the only thing you're going to see. You're going to see a lot more passing, a lot more clinical passing plays, a lot more fake plays, right? Mm -hmm. A lot more people going up, calling off, trying to find a bump or a boost steal instead while the other guy takes the shot. It's a lot more of that, uh, and it just kind of feels like more complete ball in general. Uh, I, I know uh, that's just a casual way I can really put it. Um, so, I mean, I love what I'm seeing out of them. I hope it just continues and they yeah. keep it up. One thing uh, you pointed out is that I really resonated with is the way that the goal team was able to control the ball. It's one thing, like you said, to just get a bunch of uh, points, but the way they were controlling the ball was really impressive to see. Uh, and I think one thing I've started to appreciate more as I've watched Rocket League more, played Rocket League more, is kind of noticing how you play around the map, you play around the field, and you play around controlling the ball, and uh, seeing how Gold is able to do in that game, hopefully we're going to be able to see them do it in this game coming up against Kent State University. We have the St. Clair Saints Gold Squad against, we have Gavalanche, Evan, and Immenses uh, going to see who can come out on top. The Saints just coming off a 2 0 victory. Hopefully they can recapture the same magic as Barris riding upside down sends this ball in with the assistance of his teammates Vesh from downtown Bears just kind of tipping it in. And whether or not that touch mattered, that's one for the history books. All that matters is we have a point now. I mean, I think if Evan had a pre-flip, if he pre-flipped, maybe he could have gotten a pinch against the sidewall, but even then, chances are like under 1% of that actually even working. It was just such a fast initial shot from Vesh, and I mean, the extra tap-in is just all that needs to be done to seal the deal. So right now, great look so far from Saints Gold. I'm really liking what I'm seeing from Barris so far. I know this is his debut on this team on stream, I, I believe, at least when I'm casting him. I but so far, here. so far I'm loving what I'm seeing right now. He's filling his role perfectly. He hasn't really looked out of position just yet. So again, good job from the Saints as Christian gets the easy save. Going to be able to try to pinch down for a 50. He gets killed though by Gavalanche. And now Barris is going to have to try to force the clear with Vesh. Vesh is doing a fantastic job playing off of the Christian, setting himself up for success with his teammate Vesh. Gonna tip this one back up, setting it while Barris is going for the interference mid-air. Christian is gonna follow that rebound. It was almost sent back to Orange Sides, but they denied in the last opportunity. Vesh gonna catch this clear attempt once again. Saints are doing such a fantastic job denying these clears. Christian holding this one in the air. He's gonna have to touch down eventually to get some boost back. Evan. Being a 50 out over the Saints. One more, Sweet breaking move. their axles, going in, but Christian, the last second deny, gonna prevent that goal from going in. Vesh is gonna be riding the wall as usual as Christian and Barris are swarming around and circling, trying to maintain their defensive position, but it's not gonna work. A bouncer, a roller is gonna find its way in as the Saints were recouping, getting ready for this offensive play. This one kind of slipped through the cracks. Yeah, and it's great job there from the fake. Whoever faked that, it looked like they were going to go for the touch. It makes Bear slightly turn to the right, and he's actually going to then commit to try to go for the near post save. Because of that, he then allows the time for the other player to then come through and find the bump on him. So it's a great job there from the entire side of Kent State University as they tie things up one all. Christian with a reset, not going to be able to force anything, but he can find a pass to Bears who tries to find Vesh, who tries to find Bears back into Vesh again. I mean, it's just tiki-taka all the way, but the Saints just can't quite find Ooh. through. They can't strike 
eight gold just yet, and they have to wait a little bit longer as Evan gets the quick save down to hopefully what is going to be a clear. There, so the last moment there was almost no boost. Is still able to kind of get that clear, bringing it all the way back. It's the only reason the ball is still on this blue side was Bears is able to kind of cut that clear short. Uh, Eminences was almost taking that one back to orange side. Christian meeting it back in the blue corner. Bears going backwards to try to catch this one. As it, he saw that the ball was going to go back there, and he met it preemptively. These teams showing why they're in this phase of the tournament already. It's still just round four, but the quality of play we're seeing, the level of competition is so immaculate. As we're nearing the two-minute marker for this game one, things are still tied up. The Saints fighting valiantly to break this tie, but valiance is not all that matters. You really do need a stroke of genius to break ties after this even. These players are playing so close in skill. Christian is going to stop that goal once again. His defense is on point today. Ferris chasing this one up the wall. He's going to find a demo, and he's going to guide this one to Christian, who's going to go for the shot, but Evan with an immaculate save. Besh is going to be waiting patiently for this ball to find him, but he's going to break that patience eventually, trying to meet it. He's going to wait for it to fall down, taking it to the ceiling as his teammates on the ground are looking for the shot. Christian not going to find it. Still scrambling in the corner, looking for a way to turn this into success. 1.15 on the clock now. Neither team is able to gain a significant advantage. Who's going to break the ice here? I mean, now? there's your answer. Perfectly I was wondering if anybody was going to pre-jump this from Bears, but it's actually just going to go straight in. It's the Saints catching everyone on an awkward spot. And the reason being is because look at the boost numbers on defense. Everybody until the ball goes in is under 17. That means that the, the whole point is the boost is being stolen there from the offensive side. They're doing a great job of that. Everyone being under 17 boost is crazy. You're not going to be able to make a huge time save. And again, a long clear like that can just be fatal if it ends up being on target. Bear shows exactly why you need to work on your boost management, ladies and gentlemen, uh, for those of you who want to climb the ranks in your own right. Vesh trying to pop one up to Christian, who's going to have the drop down pass back down to Vesh. 1-2-1 one, one is the play. And look at the boost again. The duo from last year coming through yet again. It was about really dry on the side of Kent State. 0-0-16. Zero, zero, How are you really going to find an answer to no. a setup play like that? And that's one of those factors of the Rocket League that, like I said before, I'm starting to appreciate and fully notice is how the teams play around the boost pads, circling it around, picking it up, denying it. It's just as important as stealing it for yourself. And with 38 on the clock, Saints up 3-1 to one now, finally breaking that impregnable tie. It seems like they might have figured out Kent State University's strategy here and are able to play at their best. Whether or not they're going to be able to carry this through to the next game, we'll have to wait and see. But for game one, at the very least, it's cemented. That's 4-1 to one already. Right, I mean, again, this play doesn't need to happen, but it's all about just Vesh keeping possession. He just wants to hold this ball to waste the last 20 seconds, and in doing so, he has a beat, realizes, hey, you know what, I can carry this in the middle of the field. Bears, come on in for a nice little pinch. It's going to be a 4-1 lead right now for St. Clair Gold. With 20 seconds left, this one is all but over, barring an absolute miracle, and with 10 seconds being on the clock now, soon to come, it's definitely looking like it's going to be over. Maybe a goal for consolation out of Kent State. That will be exactly how it goes. But two goals in five seconds will be probably the greatest comeback I have almost ever seen. So on the we side of Kent it. State, we have seen it, but it would just be absolutely unbelievable if St. Clair Gold lets it happen to them. I don't expect so. I think they're going to be playing safe on this kickoff, just trying to maybe find a kill, maybe a touch to a sidewall after that. There's the kill. There's the sidewall. It's going to be Christian, who's going to be able to just drive that into the back corner. It's going to hit ground flawlessly. And again, it's going to be St. Clair Gold picking up yet another game. On the green side, leading 5-1, continuing their scoring ways is St. Clair Green, CSU Rams, in a little bit of a tough spot right now. Jazzy off the corner, can he find a pass? Yes, but it's actually going to be Zai, I think, who one of the Saints players looked like they actually almost got in front of it by accident. The bump being sent down, they're trying to run interference to the side of the Rams, but it's not going to be found. The shot doesn't happen. It's going to be cleared out by Zai. Jazzy, solo play, he has the double, he can elect to use it. He's going to have the angle. Whip out your protractors, ladies and gentlemen. That one was cute. 
That's me working on my protractor, doing the like angular spatial space-time continuum calculations on the ball as it navigates through hypotheoretical 4D space. And you know that's just what they do in the in a microsecond to make things like that happen faster. I have no clue how to respond to it. <laughs> I mean, it's just absolutely perfect. <laughs> I love casting with Daniil. He's just the, the analogy is it's simply stunning. Yeah, Feelings mutual, brother. But I don't know if the CSU Rams likes playing against the St. Clair Saints Green roster, at least uh, on a competitive level. Maybe this is a scrimmage. One thing to be learning a lot. But with your tournament life, you know, potentially on the line here, getting some of the losers um, this early on, you wouldn't like it very much. But game one under wraps here as. Saints Green look to get one more goal for the receiver. Not going to find it necessarily. Oh, why is this got to be a free jump? No. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Really thought they were going to go for it there. They did go for it, but I thought they were going to get it. As uh, we get game one underway, that's going to be the green side, again, very confidently taking that first game. And I would bet the rest of the series would look that way. But here, over on the gold side, things are a little bit closer. And that's what I like to see most. Christian already fighting for his life in front of the blue net. And he, Barris, trying to offer a little bit of support for Ivesh a little late to the party. But he's right where he needs to be right now. Is Barris is setting things up in the middle. Uh, we're going to see one go over him. But Evan, underneath, was able to steal the ball, get possession. Christian is going to just beat the ball. And he gets actually that flip to send the ball over to the blue corner instead of that being a clear perfect read on that situation turns it into an advantageous one Gavalanche is carrying this one straight down into in front of the net his teammates are all there to support the Saints need to climb up get their defense tightened it's going to work in their favor as Barris sends this into a shot Vesh going to force it in because that would have been going straight off the post otherwise imminence is you can see the despair in his windshield such an unfortunate play but still Saints are going to be able to take that to an advantageous first goal. I mean, even if you half flip, half flip there from Eminence just to try to even get back, it's not going to happen, right? I mean, playing shadow defense there is so risky, especially with Barris being so close, and he has the ball control to be able to pull off the flick. He has it right where he wants it. It's just tough, right? Vesh to clean up. He's going to be able to try to find the redirect, I believe, to try to find a pass, but no uh -oh. one was there. So for now, he's just got to chill out and maybe go for the shot that Bears can create off the pass. Uh -oh. A double demo as well. Bears and Christian running interference in the back line. It doesn't free up Vesh as he's most likely back rotating as he only had around six boosts. Now with full, he's going to try to commit to a clear. However, a double commit by the Saints, and right now it's going to fall on Bears if the clear happens. It will indeed. And the boost steal from Christian is going to set up a pass in the middle. Vesh, pre-jumping, reads can he have the sidewall double? No, not quite. It's going to be dropped back down. Gavalanche going to be the first man to it. Pass in field. It's going to be Barris, but it's going to be forced out to the sidewall. Sidewall seems to be where Vesh likes to live. He wasn't there, unfortunately, but I know if he was, he would have got that ball. I trust him. In any case, Christian doing a great job playing defensively, forcing that ball to bounce down, stopping out all the momentum, and Vesh playing in the net, trying to save any goals that would be turning them into would not. Barris needing that mid air. Bouncing it off of his roof to try to get it out. Vesh going to assist that effort as he rides the wall like a stroke of lightning and genius combined into one. Taking it all the way to the blue side. Unfortunately, he's going to get stopped out, but it's not going to matter as the rest of his teammates playing in perfect symphony are going to allow him to carry that ball from basically a different dimension and sending it to the perfect spot, the perfect time, sealing the time space continuum. Right, well, I mean, well said. You're an absolute scholar, Daniel Betterson McGee, and I will say right now that St. Clair are looking great. That duo is going to be, you know, just absolutely threatening the entire day. Team's got to get ready for them. And now, Bears trying to set up Vesh, but it's not going to happen. Corner, and now there will be actually a pop-up from Vesh, but unfortunately for him, Christian has already rotated as the smart man that he is. And now, because of that, he has the boost to be able to challenge, and because of that, now the ball can stay in the defensive side. So again, it's smart play from the side of St. Clair Gold just holding their boost, holding control they're able to find pressure, drop down to Christian, it's not going to happen but that's okay he's still on full boost, he didn't use any so he has all the time now to try to create a 50-50 ball but it won't happen as I believe it was Bears who jumped the gun just a little bit. 
And we're seeing Christian getting back, thankfully. I was a little worried. I noticed that. Okay, Vesh just uh, turning what was a mistake into a goal. I think what he was trying to do there was turn that into like a center. And then as he fell in front of the ball from the shot or a clear attempt, wasn't quite sure who shot that one there, but he fell right in front of it and just wiggled it in. Well, there was actually no point in backflipping there unless he genuinely reacted quick enough, which I know he did, to trap the ball against the back wall. It's going to be the double, and that would have been an absolutely crazy read from Vesh, who I believe was coming off either a high part of the sidewall or the ceiling with a flip in his pocket. Vesh now with a clear, has a demo. The shot should be easy for Barris as he's able to read those all day long. It's like Italian. It's just like it comes yep. naturally. I mean, he reads it perfectly. He's fluent in the ball. Uh, He's bilingual. <laughs> He's balling. <laughs> I like that. That's what I was about to say. You stole it from me. I guess he could, he's actually trilingual. He's got English, Italian, and ball. He speaks ball. He speaks ball. And you know who, who else speaks ball? Vesh. He's also trilingual. Polish, English, ball. We had a lot of trilingual people here on the Saints roster. And I mean, I see no flaw from it. I see no non-benefit. Everybody should be learning new languages. Because right now, apparently, it means that you become automatically good at Rocket League. That's definitely what that means. I propose we start teaching ball in school. Like, the language ball in elementary schools. Get them from an early age so they don't struggle this much um, in their later years. As Vesh is kind of writing a poem in ball. It's not going to be appreciated, however, by Kent State University. They aren't as well versed in the literature of ball culture. But Vesh and Barris, as we said before, they are well versed in this world. But it's not going to get completely lost on them as Kent State put up a great fight in game one. Saints kind of running away with things in game two. Maybe they could at least get one goal here. Not quite. Gavalanche wasn't in position to really get that going. Oh, and the wow. Oh, my God. <laughs> Vash, are you kidding me? That's like Shakespeare in ball language. I mean, it lines up perfectly. I haven't seen a player pull off a Cookser last year, so that's a first in my time at St. Clair so far wow. in collegiate. Congratulations. It doesn't happen often, because usually there's someone back on the defensive side yeah. to save that, right? However, when you're down 0-6, you got to really send all your eggs in one basket, and it makes sense why a play like that would work out. Vesh just kind of memeing for it, going for the Cooks, and it's going to pay off for him. Harris to round one. He has a clear line of Vesh, and he knows exactly where he's going to be. Is this the green squad? Or is this, is this the green squad? It's kind of looking like the green squad right now. I mean, I'll tell you what this is, is this is over. There's, there's no, like, there is, there, there is, it's Damn. done. They're past it. 7-0 uh, right now. I mean, if Kent State score to their own non-benefit, it's just going to end up in them getting brazil So... Again, like maybe you play for the Brazil if you're Kent State. I don't know. But either way, it's not looking like it is going to come into fruition. Never was with 10 seconds left being down by seven. And that is going to be St. Clair Gold finding it another series 2-0. Damn, do not talk to Patrick at 1.59 p.m. He just does not mince his words. This is... Oh, oh well that could... Hey, we'll call it 8-0. to <laughs> Let's just be fair there. <laughs> And let's just call it fair, 8-0 to zero for that one. But as we're kind of wrapping things up for this phase of the tournament, we're seeing Jazz. There's a Brazil. Well, there you go. And 7-1 uh, over on the other side of the field, other side of the pond, as you may say. We're talking NA versus EU, I guess. But uh, realistically, it's just EU versus EU on our both of our squads, plus Christian. <laughs> In any case, 1-7 uh, with one minute on the clock. Both of our teams just competing to see who can get the biggest score gaps, and so far nobody's winning. <laughs> if if Jazzy was able to reset that into, I believe, was Zion a pre-jump, I might have screamed. But it didn't happen, so I didn't end up doing that anyway, despite being very loud in person anyway when I'm casting. Zai, the sidewall redirect, he's not going to have anyone on this on the middle. And now two players from CSU Rams committing. Fab so he can just try to play this one off. He's already been called off ball. It's going to be a long clear down by Jazzy. The shot. Fab so can he get the rebound? No, and he shouldn't, because he can steal that boost instead force the defenders on almost zero, try to find a bump or a pass to the shooter, and very unluckily, it did get cleared out. 
But that opportunity does not happen if he gets greedy and goes for the ball in Fab. So instead, he just plays smart, plays for possession. This one's going to be all she wrote. St. Clair Green going to take yet another series, 2-0. And I don't believe we've had a 2-1 series yet. Both teams so far going flawless through their runs. Absolutely flawless, undefeated at this rate. It's only a matter of time before they meet each other. And you can already see them kind of getting ready for that moment. They're looking at each other across the stage and kind of anticipating what that moment might be like. Like, but that's in the distant future. Right now, they just have to play one match at a time and do their best to make sure that those matches are as one-sided as possible. And so far, you couldn't get more one-sided than what we've been seeing. No, absolutely not. Um, something that I do actually want to point out is even though we're seeing a lot of flawless series out of both rosters, if anything, I don't know exactly what the gold roster run looks like, mm -hmm. but I know the green roster, because they were seeded 10th, which I don't agree on. Just putting it out there. Why? <laughs> but I will say they pulled the group of death because of it. So okay. I do know that uh, Fisher is in their pool as well as Concord, who have been absolutely wiping the floor with everybody, including our team, the, goal, uh, the green team. They were able to take a series off of them, I believe, uh, earlier this year. So okay. it's going to actually be an interesting one. We might not be seeing this green team go through that uppers flawlessly. That is a definite possibility, and it always is a possibility. That's what I really like about Rocket League. Things are up in the air a lot of the times, quite literally often. That's what the Rocket part of Rocket League is all about, flying through the air, trying to catch the ball, send it going wherever you need it to be. But uh, there's still a lot to be decided, and there's only one way to decide it by playing and as we're waiting for our next match to come up I think we're going to be following our green squad as uh, looking at the stage to this window I don't see any of our gold players I think they're taking a little bit of a break but we can uh, just wait patiently for this next game to come up Patrick and while we're waiting for that to come to us um, you mentioned that they are in a bit of a pool of death here of those scary teams that are kind of running that bracket who do you really see taking the uh taking it all the way if not our own squad well that's the thing it's either going to be concord or us i okay. i say that with confidence um because right now there isn't really there aren't too many teams right now that when i look at our green rosters stack up uh to them all that well mm-hmm I mean, West Virginia literally got the number one seed, and we three won them, like, two weeks ago. So Why are we seeded 10th? Um, I, I don't actually know. Uh, I, I know it's a bad answer, uh, because I'm usually on top of these sort I of mean, things. I mean, it's not like you're doing the seeding. You wouldn't, you, no, no, I don't know. I don't know. And that's why I'm not going to give an answer, because yeah. I simply don't know. Okay. Right? I, if I were to think about how the seeding works, it's probably based off of past performances mm -hmm. in the CRL Opens. Seeing as how this wasn't the, the roster, oh, this wasn't the okay, roster in gotcha. St. Clair, right? Okay. So, because uh, they're new. Um, but still, I think like if we're talking power rankings, if I were to power rank every roster right now in CRL, I'd say, I mean, the, these are the defending world champions. They got two players from Dr. Boomin and Jazzy. I mean, I, I think that you need to seed them at the very minimum in NA top three. I, I I mean, the stats don't lie. Just based off of what we've been seeing just today, these teams are electric. They are really, and I would say eccentric in their behaviors on and off of the field. Uh, they are quite the team to behold, and they're playing just like it. But as we're getting situated and waiting for this next match to go underway, we'll be sending things off to a quick break. Ladies and gentlemen, don't go anywhere. We'll be seeing you soon for the next match of our St. Clair Green Squad. And as we're waiting for our Gold Squad as well. But don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. See you guys very soon.
Welcome back, Saints Nation. We are back with some Saints Green versus Indiana Tech in our CRL Open 1. I am Patrick Smoke Chambers, joined by Daniel Betterson McGee. So let's get straight into it. And getting straight into it is exactly what's going to be happening as Indiana Tech, they are not taking any tomfoolery from the Saints right now. This is probably the strongest defense we've seen today, which might be confusing for you to hear, considering it's only 30 seconds in. But at this point, Green might have already had three points against all the other teams. I mean, that, that's very true, but uh, I, you got to just give them credit for how they're playing. Jazzy trying to run interference, not going to quite find the bump onto Bluey, and now he's forced into an awkward position in the corner. A shot, pass out to Jazzy, it's not going to happen. Zai, can he find another? No, not quite. Maybe, maybe he might have had the angle for a shot, but it might have been just a little too wide and not very good for his teammates, so he elected to pass instead. A good job from Zai there to burn time. He has another player in the midfield, it's Fab, so, but i got to give it to Indiana Tech time and time again. They've been able to meet that one Saints player lurking across the middle for the shot. Fabso, flip around one, able to try to go for a bump, passes off to Zai. Zai trying to find another bump for Jazzy. Jazzy has time. Slow play. He's going to try to get up the ball, but it gets cut off by Bluey. Looking for the ground pinch now is Jazzy. Ooh, He's going to have okay. it double on his black as well. And Jazzy making quick work of the Indiana Tech defense. Very quick work and very... Uh, professional. This felt like watching a hitman go behind someone and piano wire them. It's just tactical, <laughs> cold, and direct. There's no dilly dallying, right? You go there, you have a job to do, you do it. He shot it off the post and arrowed it in. No wasted movements, and with just three minutes to go here and 30 more seconds to play with, the Saints are already them, uh, establishing a strong start here. Uh, and like I said before, Indiana Tech has been putting up the best fight we've seen so far, considering it's just one goal so far. I think, unfortunately for Indiana Tech, though, that first two minutes of the game was just the green squad figuring them out, getting a feel. And now that they've got the one drop of blood, beating Frenchies about to be well, yeah, exactly, and here it starts, Fabso with one as well. When I was watching these guys scrim against uh, No Mansion, CG, and Cosmic, yes, sorry, <laughs> said think about it for a minute. The one thing I noticed when the Saints green team uh, are hot is they stay hot. Like, they could be down 1-0 or even 2-0 in some cases to that stack. And all of a sudden, within 30 seconds, they put up three goals. They are a team that flies off of uh, momentum, is the word I'm looking for. And as the bump tries to come through, it's going to have to be Zai to have to commit. Miller has one touch over the Saints defender, but it's going to be Fabso, who's already back, looking for the shadow defense, has a save off the backboard. Jazzy now downfield, trying to bump one, bump two, try to find a pass. No, not quite. Fabso not able to kind of find the corner, but it's going to be okay because Zai is up there anyways so a good job from rotating back and because of that Fabzo now has the boost to try to send a pass down to Jazzy and even though it doesn't turn into a goal it still turns into another offense I love what I'm seeing here out of this Saints green team the drop down pass now down to Fabso and again they're just playing so calm so much composure with every touch Jazzy reset use it try to get around an offender but Bluey there for the save really essential save that you needed. I feel like if they got that one in there, but the series would have might as well just ended right there. The Saints would have been completely on a tear, dominating and just stomping all over them. But so far, Indiana Tech's been maintaining a really solid control and not letting the Saints get away with everything. You know, you'd already see the first deficit already. I saw the Saints were really dry for a hot minute there while most of Indiana was full on those bars. They are starving them out so they aren't able to maintain that offensive pressure that they were able to uh, just a bit ago a lot of get those two goals. They're doing a good job of batting them, fighting for their uh, boost pads. Easy wide, beating that one mid-air. Jazzy trying to send that straight in. He's going to get stuck, however. Fabzo looking for that corner carry, but not quite going to find it. Relying on his teammates now. Jazzy to center it for and Fabzo going for the shot, but once again, meeting some resistance. It is a tough path to victory, but you still got to traverse the road nonetheless as Jazzy puts a roadblock in Bluey's road to victory, and he's going to completely crash into it, not going to be able to recover completely. And in fact, that's going to turn into an offensive opportunity for the Saints bouncing off the center. Jazzy going for the shot, going to meet more resistance, a wall completely. Fabzo going to get demoed, did not look like a demo to me, but Great I guess job. he had the speed and almost a goal, but the respawn in time to get the clear. These are looking like clockwork in a watch. It is perfectly crafted and honed to perform a function, and these teams are doing it. Well, I actually really, really
really, really like what I'm seeing there from Indiana Tech. They're still sound defensively. Obviously, the demo on Fabso saves a goal, and then they find an offense on their own. So, again, even though it didn't have to go into a goal, it was a great job from Indiana Tech to just stay calm. And right now, Fabso, Demwing Miller is definitely not going to help them stay calm. Zai with a pass in field, trying to find anyone, but he gets the beat instead on a 50. It should just be a free shot, but a great job by Nas to make the read. Zai, reset. Can he try to find another? Maybe a touch around. No, not quite. Leaves it off for Jazzy. And with eight seconds left, and Jazzy on a solo play, looking for a pass now to Fabso. Team pinch. Yes, sir. Call Woo! it. Put it in. It's going to be the nail in the coffin. Didn't even need Fabso for this one. It's just going to be Jazzy all on his lonesome. Gets the touch around. The team pinch didn't quite happen. But if anything, it might have actually thrown the Indiana Tech defender off. And as we just get into this game for St. Clair Saints Gold, things are not looking very good for them. Facing quite a bit of trouble against St. Edwards University. It is three to one, and we're seeing Drew get the third as we come into it. But Saints have one on the board, 30 seconds left. Not possible, but at the worst case scenario, they're gonna be going into a game two, looking at the first loss of the day. And uh, whether or not they're gonna be able to handle that recoup and turn themselves into the winners of this set, we're gonna have to wait and see. But in the meantime, you're almost having Barris get that dream a little bit closer of coming out on top in this game one, but going to get denied. And that rea harsh reality of coming into this down one game is looking more and more closer to reality as the Saints lose their first set against St. Edwards, Edwards University. Now is the time to take a little bit of a moment to reflect, think about how you can play a little bit better to bring things to uh, success in your next game because you don't want to go to losers right now when you're so close to victory. Something I want to talk about, and this is going to be the most important part of the day Ooh. so far, okay. is with the Saints now being down in a best of three with only one life left before you go down to that losers bracket, I want to talk about the effect that Barrist has on the entire team right now. Coming from Genoa, a place where he's been through the toughest competition that you could go through. Mm -hmm. How is he going to be able to rally his teammates to get better in this series as it advances? We know Vesh, at least from my experience, he seems like a player sometimes where if he kind of he can kind of dig himself into a hole whenever he's down and not quite climb back out. Can Barris rally the troops and get them out of that? Can he unlock Vesh as he did in the prior couple of series? And can St. Clair try to get through? Vesh having an air dribble of his own, maybe has a 50, no, not quite. A great calm clear out by St. Edwards University. Barris with a 50 of his own, but it's going to be lost. And now Christian off the sidewall, only has 10 in pocket, has a flip, maybe a ground double, but no, not quite, gets picked off and it's going to be well going across the field. Just what you said really resonated as they're looking for a really good shot. Barris could have followed up there, but playing it safe as you recognize he was too far away. Barris sending that to the center. Dino taking that up to the sky as Drew catches it as it falls out of boost. That's going to be Christian coming in to really steal the show. But as he falls out of boost as well, he's going to be relegated to the sidelines as Vesh is fighting for control against Drew here. Christian trying to clear it out, but again, he's a little bit dry. You don't want to commit too much as you won't have a lot to work with. So they're going to start collecting Barris with 100. Allow him, it's going to allow him to play a bit aggressively with Christian in the side. Vesh playing defensively back, trying to get the boost back up. We're going to see a demo for Christian, respawning with that 33. Going to take some time to bring himself back to this game as Vesh takes the initiative on the offense. Christian and Vesh waiting at the back line while Barris was trying to go forward and they're trying to really work together to get a centered shot. Those are the ones they have so much success with, and it is a textbook classic. But St. Edwards University, just squad's doing such a great job of getting those interceptions and launching it straight to the sky as soon as the Saints try to go for something. And their aerial control on the side of St. Edwards University is just so strong. Christian with a beautiful save, preventing that push from turning into a goal for St. Edwards. Vesh playing it slow, waiting for his teammates to get in position to offer some support. Christian does just that as he sweeps out from underneath, takes it to the corner, now riding the wall off the crossbar, and it's gonna go in! Christian doesn't care about anything but winning this match, and you can see it in his play. He just solo one man here with this. You can talk about how EU wants to do this and do that with their teammates, <laughs> la, 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 la. I love Europe, I'm Patrick, okay? But when it comes to getting those goals, you can rely on 
and your old Canadian boy, Christian, to cement that for you. Love you, buddy. Great work. I mean, yeah, the, you got to give him full credit. Ceiling double, I mean, it's absolutely ridiculous. And yes, well, I did say that. Look, sometimes <laughs> that hero play can be the difference. It exactly. really can. And right now, St. Clair needs to hold that and gain confidence off of it. Christian making it work for the side of St. Clair, as he does. Captain Canada, as I refer to him. Arsenal flip reset sure. for Drew, though, and that's going to be an absolute beamer yep. right into the back of the net. Shades of SSG, the RC reset from Drew, able to find the flip over Barrist. It's a great shot, one that he's gonna love for the clip. One all is how it stands with 225 left. 225, I feel like that's the perfect number to be at right now. It doesn't have any significance to me, but it just feels right. 225, one to one. Daniel took his eyes off the screen for like one second. And that's the only, that's all the time St. Edwards needed off the kickoff. They had the man on the cheat. He was able to find the centering pass well, was able to cut through defense. 220 is a good scoreline to be one to two here. It is. You, look, you still have two minutes left, right? I mean, right now, St. Clair, you just got to try to find what was working, Drew, with a demo, though. And something I want to point out right now is that I love the amount of uh, demos or just physical play mm -hmm. that St. Edwards is pushing. It's forcing these Saints on defense to be on low boost. We're seeing a little bit of, honestly, the reverse of what we're seeing for the first couple of series. You'll notice, every time St. Edwards goes down the field, there's always going to be a Saints player in net who probably has a little under, like, 20. That's not very ideal because you then have to find a clear out to your teammate, and it's not the best situation to be in. Vesh now, 41 to his name, looking for a steal, but not quite. Looking to try to kill a player who's trying to go up on the rotation, but it has to fall down to Bears. Zero boost to his name, looking to run interference, but no one's there for the shot. Vesh, his name called. Trying to find a 50, but not quite. It's a great job so far from St. Edwards, but they're not out of the thick of it just uh -oh. yet. Shot going by. Oh, oh my god! And able to RNG his way into a double <laughs> off the 50, and it's great. We take those all day. St. Clair ties it up to a piece. And look at, come on, give us the credit. That was not RNG. He saw that, and he went full court, sent it. We got two hero plays coming up from Christian, obviously with the support of his teammates, making those plays possible. It's 2-2. Two two. Patrick, you said you like the physical play I'm starting to see some spiritual play at play here we're seeing two colleges or two uh, educational institutions with saint in the name maybe some sacrifices going on prayers are being made and somebody what? is gonna get favored <laughs> by God here and come out on top in this series I guess that's how we're gonna have to decide <laughs> whose team he's on as uh, we're looking at the Saints trying to fight their way through Dino is going to send that one in as it rode the top and look at how elegant this was. It's like a rainbow just floating through and then Dino just meow. Unfortunately, Vesh wasn't able to get the defense there. It's super impossible to predict um, where that one's gonna go, especially right in front of your net. What can you do? But you can get one more goal to at least tie the series. Right, but right now you gotta hope that Well doesn't mark a solo play up. He's gonna be off the ceiling trying to maybe force for his teammates, but Christian's already there with the touch to have Barris reset now, or sorry, dribble into the ground pinch. I thought a reset was going to happen, but with no boost, a ground pinch was all he had to, in his arsenal to pull off. Christian trying to find a shot right now, not quite. Well, bounces out to Barris. And now Barris, he's kinda gonna read the wall right now, but instead, it's not gonna be a beat. That's just gonna have a pass. It's gonna be down to Christian, the dynamic duo of last year's strikes again, 3-3 three, three as we get into 31 seconds, and they're not out of it just yet. 3-3 three to three with 30 on the clock. This is just, you know, I'm not going to say a lot of threes. bad things has happened anytime I mention the time we're at. But, ladies and gentlemen, Saints fighting for their lives here. Meanwhile, on the other side of the ocean, Saints, or the Green Squad, 1-2-0 on their matchup. Can the Saints Gold Squad find the same success in their matchup to at least tie things 1-1? One -one? It's tied right now in the scoreline. Vesh wants to take things a little bit further. Dino meeting him in the air there. Ferris carrying it forward. That was going to be the moment if there was going to be one at all. And unfortunately, it's going to slip away, but this could be the moment for St. Edwards, and it was Drew yep. finding the play with his teammate, carrying it all the way over, and you can see the stress, the frustration from the Saints as that play was made a heartbreaker, but it is what it is. Technically, three on the clock. It's not impossible, but... You seen the kickoff strap. Yeah, it's not happening. <laughs> I mean, we'll see. Vesh is able to pop it up, but with no Saints defender around, it should have been well who was going to be able to ground it. 
that will be all she wrote. I'm sorry. I, I got to be honest. You know, nothing against Vesh. Mm. Love the guy. But I almost laughed because I wasn't expecting the camera yeah, switch. Neither, so when yeah. I saw it, I was like, oh, no. Was they're, like, showing, oh. they're showing the pain. But, no, I honestly... It is what it is. A great job from St. Edwards, and mm -hmm. I know Dino and Drew are absolutely loving it right now. A great job yeah. to them. They deserve to move on, absolutely. Uh, and for our Saints gold team, this is going to be the beginning of their lower bracket run, mm -hmm. which yeah. means they're going to be playing a lot more often. So we've been kind of cruising down this bracket. <laughs> our green team already in quarters. But now... It's going to have to be that lower bracket run, which means that they will have to play, ooh, like, not not like double the amount of games. But yeah, it feels like double. Because it's going to feel the like stress it. is there. I mean, the, not only is the stress there, you're also facing people who then lose mm -hmm. to try to climb back up, and then you got to face maybe a potential person who's let's say you in the double in like the lower bracket final, right? Mm -hmm. You have to beat the guy who was in the upper bracket final who lost. Just to then get into the final, potentially against the team that... that just beat the guy that... <laughs> exactly, right? So it's, it's really, really tense. It's really, really stressful. Uh, but, I mean, you know what? I really like the effort that I saw there. Mm -hmm. I think that the team bounced back as well as they could have. Uh, they're probably going to disagree with me because they're saying, well, if that was true, Patrick, we would have just reverse swept that series. But... That's true. They believe in themselves. I believe in them. Mm -hmm. I think they showed out a very good game considering the chalking of the mental that probably happens in that first loss, especially in a best of three series, which is so, so unforgiving because of the fact that you lose one, you slip up once, and you're looking at potentially an early exit. Yeah, absolutely. And to look at it from the other perspective, I kind of feel bad a little bit for the teams who are already in the loser side going up against the Saints now. You know, uh, a team right. that has shown remarkable resiliency, capability for immaculate levels of play. Um, and now here they are fired up, angry, frustrated. And now they got a whole bunch of people waiting, like waiting for them to be uh, abused in the lower bracket. But as we're waiting for that lower bracket run to start, and our gold squad sitting comfortably still in the winner's side, just waiting for their next opponents, we're going to have a little bit of waiting to be doing, ladies and gentlemen. So we're going to be setting this off to a quick break as we get that waiting done. But don't go anywhere. We'll be right back very soon. Stay tuned for the next coming up matches. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back for this Saints Green special here. It's Saints v. Saints. <laughs> Once again, there are a lot of Saints here. I can go back and use my recycle my joke from before. We're going to see which side God truly is on in this matchup. We have the Saints Green versus the SHU Saints, and they are fighting very harshly. It's almost like the Crusades over here in front of the net, and Fabzo trying to rally the troops of his teammates, Jazzy.
fighting on that wall with Fabzo coming up from the center, trying to get that stuffed back over to blue side. They're going to get the clear eventually. Fabzo going to make that a little bit less of a dire situation. They're going to have to meet him in the air, and they're not going to find any luck until the last possible moment as Yanini catches him, sends that ball away. But Jazzy coming back with the rebound shot, meeting that, sending it straight down. Not going to have any follow-up, unfortunately. PZY trying to get that going. Going to get booted out of the way. Fabzo getting rekindling the fire that was just extinguished. But the moment has passed, and now the Saints Creed just scratching their heads, figuring out what's the next play for them. Right, I mean, they're doing a good job right now of just taking control of the midfield. They've been on the attack for quite a little bit. Now they get forced back into the defensive side, but they've been able to just get quick clears. Fabso, a nice little readjustment there to stay on his feet, able to try to commit for this next ball right now. That's been 50 out by Zai. It should be Jazzy with the beat. There it is, not on target. The redirect, though, maybe looking for a pass to Zai. Instead, control touch gets played off the sidewall. No one can find him, and the beat comes in from the defense. Jazzy up on his own, trying to find a pass down to Fabso. That's the man with the plan, but it's going to be a save out by Fuge. A great job there from SHU to keep them th to keep their score nil-nil. Yeah, it's zero to zero so far, and as I, I kind of repeat the same joke, this is the best defense we've seen because the green earlier in the day we would how already have by like eight points by now. So that's how you know the SHU Saints don't play around. This is a team of the highest, most quality caliber, um, or maybe the green squad if they're just playing with the monitors off. Who knows for sure? Obviously a joke. These guys are playing at 100% all the way through, and uh, right now Yanini getting bumped out of the way in favor of setting that ball straight towards blue side. Thankfully, there's going to be a recovery play. Fabso bouncing that forward as PZY tries to get the kick away. Fabso dribbling it towards the net. Jazzy with a shot coming straight down. That's a yellow net painted completely. Going to be one on the board for the green squad so far. So good. Couldn't ask for anything better. And it's just unfortunate. Fuji just can't quite re uh, reposition in time. Because Fabs was just flying over top of him. If he uses a jump or anything to try to turn in to the shot, I mean, with little boost as well, it's not looking good for you on the defensive side. A great job there by Jazzy and the green team. Jazzy looking to go right back again, trying to find a bump so the drop down pass can waterfall down. It won't happen, but Zai's already back up. 65 in hand, uses the flip, tries to have another reset, has it, but he's not going to be able to use it before he hits the ground. Now having to rotate long as Jazzy tries to grab next is going to be Zai. He has the top pop up to Fabso, but the ground double can't quite come through. He can't play dunk either. He has zero boost. A good demo out by XY or XI. And now Fuge trying to lurk. Has a man over the top. It's Yanini who has the flip, the reset, the shot, but it's going to be quick wow. save out. Rebound out to Fuge. And that's exactly what was the play. I, comment, I commented earlier he was lurking around. It's going to be XI who tries to run interference. Just has Fabso out of position. I believe gets the bump on him as well. And it opens up a huge lane for Fuge to slot the ball in. Yeah, and you have to do so much work to get those kinds of moments going. The fact that it happened at all, it's really a testament to the skill level that the SHU Saints has under their belt um, to really corral the opposing team into the position that you need to be in in order to find an opportunity like that is Oh my short God. Of a miracle, but Jazzy almost pulled off a miracle of his own there. Fabzo trying Excellent. to uh, make a sacrifice once again to get the favor of the gods back on his side. But PZY and she are going to meet midair. But we're going to see Fabzo looking for a beautiful shot. Going to send it right back over side. Jazzy going to go for the shot once again. Fabzo playing slow on the back line, waiting for anything to come his way. Still just waiting patiently. They are triple committing, but it's not going to be a full risk. They're going to be sending Jazzy back as they recognize their time had come. Their moment of uh, offensive opportunity is long gone. Uh, so they sweat back, got that defense, 30 seconds on the floor to break this tie. And look at the Saints are fighting very hard to do so. Um, Fuge is going to be chasing that one out. We're going to see Xi come back and send that one flying. Sai catching that midair, dribbling it forward, getting a nice tip over to the right side. Fabzo just a little bit off. Could have been a huge beam straight to the net with 10 seconds to go, Jazzy trying to lock in, and uh, if I can see them right now, I'd wager to guess that they're leaning slightly forward in their chairs, they're trying to go full force, but this is the first overtime that the Saints Green Squad is going to be seeing today, as they have not been pushed this hard so far. Wait, <laughs> that was an amazing pop-up. 
no, we're going to overtime first of the day. This could be the first defeat that the Korean team is seeing. Right, I mean, SHU, I did not expect this game to be this close right off rip. Again, the two teams that I mentioned earlier were Fisher and Concord, who I thought were going to be giving our Saints a run for their money. But right now, SHU denying all expectations. They are pulling off, so far, what I thought was probably going to be not a close matchup. So right now, St. Clair, they're in the, they're on the back against the ropes from SHU. What can they do to press forward? They've been doing a good job of actually that uh, so far. But right now, Jazzy has to try to find the save. He has now a clear and a double flip reset to his name. Off the sidewall, trying to find a pass. Sai is there, but he elects a slide flip to commit on the side of SHU. The redirect down to Fabso, but it's not going to come through for a pass. He can't find anybody in the middle. While they're still fighting over here, we're going to see Nini coming straight over, but she is going to have to ride the wall for this one. Fabzo bouncing up, getting this one, stopping the clear from coming through, and he's still fighting a one-man army over here. Yanini riding the wall. This is looking like some Devil May Cry stuff as Jazzy tries to take that into the net from the center. No follow-up, unfortunately, and the team is playing conservatively. They have to. They have to be playing carefully here because any goal would spend the end of this game, and they don't want to be going down without a fight, so they have to make sure they're not taking any unnecessary risks, but sometimes you have to. Sai going for one of those such risks as they're triple committing now. Fake. All three in front of the net. A perfect fake, as you said, Patrick. It's going to cause a little bit of a hesitance in the defense, and that could be all they need right now. Sai goes through, but no, Yanini perfect to bounce out. Pabzo going to stop that one mid-air right off the center bar, but no, she going to send that one flying back. Sai to stop the clear once again, tripling it forward. Pabzo on the right side <laughs> and on the left, but no, it's going to get intercepted. Yanini Gonna be able to take that, but Jazzy, but no, Yanini is still gonna chase that out. We're on orange side officially now. We are on orange territory, not for very long, as they're gonna get that pinch, sending it back. But wow, it is complete back and forth. We're seeing SHU Saints doing such a great job of stopping all the offensive pressure the Saints are putting on their way, but the Saints have to find something if they want to stay undefeated. I was gonna say, honestly, the recent into a breezy coming out from, I believe it was Zai, that's absolutely disgusting. And now this is not a smart bounce downfield. It's going to have to be Z, who now tries to cut back. The shooter inbound, it's gonna be Zai! Bang, bang, as Jazzy finds the shooter. And look at them. This is, they're just stone cold about it. They don't even, obviously they care, but it looks like they don't. You wouldn't think that these guys just won a two minute overtime against the toughest opponents they had of the day. They look like they just got a test back and they're like, oh, that's about what I expected, 75, happy with that. Well, they needed that. They that did. was absolutely probably so stressful yeah. on the side of the Saints. They're thinking, oh man, if we lose right now in that best of three, best of three, like I said before, stress. So, so grueling. It is easily one of the worst things that you can do to a player is to say, hey, you're playing best of threes. Hey, but no! <laughs> help they stick to schedule, okay? And Adamin's got to eat too. They got to go to bed. They got work. They got things to do as well. So sometimes the players got to deal with best threes. And this is one such circumstance as the Saints breathing a sigh of relief as they don't have to be the ones bearing the brunt of this unfortunate situation as especially now Sai taking that first goal in this game two situation. All the pressure now on the SHU Saints to figure out what's going on and come up with some kind of I love the system that the Saints have in play right now. Fabso is very clearly the third man who kind of jump starts the offense off of long clears and then Jazzy's really the one who picks it up, right? And he's usually the guy who's passing right now. He was playing so aggressive, but I want to say Zai is probably the goal leader on the side of St. Clair. It's going to be him who dives in again, but this time Fabso controlled. Has nine boost to his name, thought he was just going to play the wave dash. He's not going to. Alexa to play slow instead, which is actually even smarter because you're not committing to an offensive attack with nine boosts. So again, great job repositioning, trying to run interference. Jazzy, shot, saved up by G. And now, Yanini with a 50. He's going to win it, but it's going to fall back down to Zai, who likes to play high. The beat by Zai again. He's everywhere all at once when it comes to the attack. Jazzy has Fabzo in the middle. He's going to try to elect to go for a 50 as Zai rotates back, but Yanini there. Fabzo with the clear. Flip over one, the pass oh, middle, but wow. no, gets cleared out again. G now playing a race. Has one to beat, but he can't find it. 
can't find it, but he's gonna dig down deep within, find it in his heart to find it, but no, Yanini gonna stop the goal of destiny. I feel like I actually would have seen like, like a light emit from the stage and like he would have ascended if he found that one. Swear to God, Patrick, I was ready for <laughs> anything there, but thankfully Yanini kept us grounded in reality and Fabzo is going to try to bring us right back to that ascension state as Jazzy is playing completely nice and slow. Look at where his teammates are. They're all in the positions that they need to be in. One close to go for the follow-up shot and one of the back to stop the clear. These are the situations you have to be aware of, ready to be in, and uh, have to be in off. that minimal communication and do it efficiently. Unfortunately, he's going to bounce oh. off the top post the opposite direction. Not going to bounce his way in, but hey, the Saints already have one on the board. So close. It's so far, but you do want that second goal to just Absolutely. be able to have the confidence to think that you're up by two. You have that safety net. So, again, it's very stressful. Fabso, a great job on the slow play. He plays wow. 50, but no one's behind him. Jazzy trying no. to hit, but he goes diving. Woo. And now a quick shot out from Yanini. Luckily, wasn't on target. Would have hit far down. Pre-jump from Jazzy. He has the double lined up, but Gee, a great wow. job by Xi to read it on the backboard defense. Such an ample part of defensive uh, fundamentals is that backboard defense, especially against teams like this. Yeah, teams like this, you don't expect these saves. You don't expect these interceptions. And they come time and time again. We have the benefit, the uh, privilege of being able to look at this game without also playing in it. So we should be able to see these things coming, but I wasn't even able to see that goal coming. Just proving my point. These things sneak up on you. And if you're playing in this match, what hope do you have to have this mental awareness and the opportunity to even recognize this as a threat, let alone do something to deal with it? Right, I mean, is gonna make that cut, and he has the play in mind. He knows he has the beat on the defender, and even if he can't score, he knows, hey, Jazzy's literally right behind me. It's gonna be a goal regardless. It's a great play by him. The awareness to just push it on the attack, realizing he has the beat, and it's just great all around. That's a great shot, speaking of greatness, from Z. And wow, he's gonna put SHU back on the board. Down by one right now, that safety net is now being in use. But they're glad that the Saints have it on the side of St. Clair because you're only up by one. With two minutes left, this is still anybody's game. Let's see how the Saints work on kickoff. 50 does not go to their side. Yanini trying to find the mid-boost, but Zai's going to steal it. Jazzy, solo, has a reset, opting off. Calls up Zai to try to take the next challenge. Where is Fabso? Probably going to be going for this challenge right here. He ends up challenging right there. 50, going to be lost. And a great job of Z, stealing boost. He has the mid, around one. Can he find another? No, not quite. Opting to leave it for Yanini, but Jazzy's there for the 50. Yeah, the 50 is going to go their way, but the Saints are still going to be able to recover this one. Send it back over to Blue. Fuji's going to trying to meet it, but Fabzo with the flip is going to be able to send that one towards the center side. Fuji, thankfully, there to meet it, but PZY with the Rocket League equivalent of a slide tackle sends this one straight towards the corner, and he's also going to dribble it towards the net. Thankfully, oh Yanini's there to keep it out. Yanini seems to be the just archangel of this SHU Saints squad, always there when needed to keep this safe. Jazzy is going to be looking for a chance with this team, playing at the center now, and we have PZY in the back. Riding it forward, dribbling towards the center. Can you make that happen? Yanini once again there for the defense. Jazzy wide, taking this one straight to the ground, dribbling and carrying it, but Sai gonna go for the shot. So this one's gonna be she saving it. We're gonna be waiting for Fabzo to get that bump. Not gonna allow it to go straight towards the net, but it's still gonna go orange side. Jazzy taking this one out, taking the initiative. He's gonna beat that 50, but PZY for the shot. But once again, oh off the crossbar. Fabzo trying to recover, but there's no one there to play with him. Jazzy gonna have to get that save as that was going straight for the net. Bouncing it off of his back. And with 30 seconds left, I think Green Squad, whether they want to admit it or not, they have kind of met their match here. They're not gonna play too aggressively to try to go for any crazy shots. They just want to maintain possession. Never mind, Sai going to uh, take the cover I was just giving them, you know, <laughs> giving them false confidence. Like, you know, maybe we have a chance to go for goal. They're, they're slowing down, but no, Sai saw the chance. He went straight for it, using the same goal explosion as me. Man of good taste, three to one, nine seconds left. And honestly, in my mind, one of the best shooters in collegiate right now is a little having a little bit of an off game. That will be all she wrote. The Saints are now running away with it. So now I can get down into breaking it down, the analysis. Yeah, part, yeah. So what I will say is that with Zai, he missed two big opportunities earlier. He must have been, been stressing. And Walking it's out, amazing yeah. the fact that he finally gets found. That's probably a big confidence booster. Thank God on his side because 
you know what? Wow. As Jazzy finds a double demo, this was a must win in my eyes for St. Clair Green to keep their momentum. Zai going to be able to find another one. He's not missing any more shots now. But I will say, St. Clair, that was probably a little bit of a wake-up call. <laughs> so it's going to be interesting to see as their next opponent, I've been told, might end up being Fisher College. And uh, if you needed any evidence of the momentum-based nature of Rocket League, I want to remind you that game one was a two-minute overtime. Oh, what? Now we're looking at the Saints. They were so tied up and close at the start of this game, but now they are just running away with three goals in a row, basically, uh, to just take the series uh, in the last minute of the game. Momentum is everything. Right, I mean, Man, I was I was just scoffing earlier because not scoffing, but I was like ah earlier because I saw like Zai literally on the ceiling on a pre jump mm. and like Fabs was like sending it high. I thought like you know one two <laughs> like was gonna happen, but that wasn't the case. It didn't matter. They already had the four one lead. Uh, great job recapturing the magic mm -hmm. for St Clair in that series when it was looking kind of dire, looking kind of close. However, they still keep it two zero. On paper, it looks like a comfortable win. But if you were watching alongside here with us, you knew it was anything but that. Yeah, and the Saints, whenever they win a game like that, it, it does feel, like you said, like magic. They recaptured it. They were having a bit of a hard time in those first in that first game. In the second one, they were still struggling quite a bit. But when it came down to it, they found their stride. They rushed their way through it. And then near the last Basically, like I said, basically minute, minute and a half. It was just goal after goal after goal. So going to this next game, I think they're going to be riding high, riding strong, riding comfortably. But first, they're going to ride into the pit stops as we're going to take a quick break. As this lobby gets set up, as the players get comfortable and situated, we'll be right back after a quick break, hopefully with this match ready for you guys. So don't go anywhere. We'll be seeing you guys very soon.
Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. We are here with the Saints Green versus Fisher Navy, and we looked at the Saints face basically the strongest competition they had in the previous game, and that's the team to be the trend. Every game after the other is the hardest match they've had of the day, and that's hopefully how tournaments should go. So everything running as intended. But Patrick, as we're coming up against Fisher, I have more reason to believe that this is going to be more challenging than all the previous ones. Oh no, this is definitely the hardest opponent of the day, especially with names like Sosa, Wanda, Mike, and Adam on the field. So again, for those who follow Rocket League, you are very well aware of at least two of these names in Sosa and Wanda, Mike as you should be. Uh, so on the side of Saints Green, let's see how they stack up. It's actually going to be a completely open net from Jazzy. I want to see right now, what were the Fisher boosts looking like? Two people with full. I guess I don't really know where the defensive breakdown happened. Damn. I guess double commit maybe to the to the left side. But even then, I I'm kind of scratching my head right there. There should have been somebody on the backboard. So Saints get away with one. They find a gap in the defense, and they're going to exploit that to the fullest. Zai with another shot just off the post. Centered. Bang! Out to Jazzy, bottom right, slot it, count it, Saints up 2 0. Did we kind of like, gas this up a little too much? Just based off what we're seeing already, this is looking like the first game of the day, not the fifth. But Fisher Navy, like you mentioned, some heavy hitters on this squad. The Saints coming up with a really solid start here. Uh, I'm very surprised to see them finding so much success immediately. And honestly, it might not be a good thing. You don't want to get all of your, you know, secret sauce out there in the first couple of seconds. You want to sprinkle it up for a second. Right, I mean, again, they're gonna have plenty of time to do that because as of right now, it's best of fives time. So first to three instead, it's gonna be Zai with a reset. Ooh. Has the interference being ran by Fabso, but it's a great save from Wanda Mike. A save of class that I'd usually come to expect from a player like him. And now Sosa chasing down the backfield. He's gonna have Jazzy beat. Adam leaves it to Wanda Mike, double tap. It's gonna be in. A player of his caliber cannot be left with an empty back wall. And the Saints are gonna pay for leaving it to him. And this is looking a little bit more like what we were expecting to see. We're seeing Fisher now getting their first goal here against the Saints Green squad. And uh, it really is looking like a clash of the Titans so far, as we saw that beautiful setup play. Looking a lot closer to how the Saints got their first goal here. What the Mike getting an opportunity stolen out under him as Sai chases that ball, trying to send it straight down from the center, but it's going to get intercepted by Adam. He's going to get demoed for his effort. Sai chasing now over to Orange side. Jazzy goes for the shot. They're rousing wow. it off from the corner, taking this in. I've seen that yellow splash of paint so many times today coming from the goal. Now I'm starting to get numb to it. Just Jazzy consistently scoring all, 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 all of these goals for the Saints. And it's uh, it just looks like a classic textbook play. Well, the reason why that was so easy, I mean, you're saying, well, Pat, the defender on Fisher, he had full boost, yes, but he was upside down if you didn't see. <laughs> so the interference from that 50 was just so good. It left for an open net, very much like how this does right now. Okay. It falls down to Sosa. It's going to be Adam with the drop down pass. A great job on Sosa, just playing composed. Realizes he doesn't have to rush this, essentially. He doesn't have to dive too much. He's just got to rotate his car, use the side, get all that surface area on the ball and try to force it past the defender. You're winning on momentum going forwards instead of sideways. So it's a great job there from Fisher. They get back within one. And now we're looking for the Saints to answer this newfound aggression coming out from Fisher. A nice shot from Jazzy going to get saved by Sosa and back over to the blue side. The Saints have to be so careful with their clears. I feel like it's the clears that have been kind of causing them the most trouble. That's where Fisher kind of comes in, cleans up those shots or those clear attempts and turns them into shots. And uh, we're seeing one of my takedown side in the offensive attempts as Fabso tries to take that one off of the crossbar to center it, but there's two that met him there. Looking like a Dragon Ball Z fight as they flash midair and then disengage immediately. Just such very skilled and full aerial control of both of these teams. Adam bouncing off the center to allow a nice easy clear for his teammate, but Jazzy with the interceptions to take this back to the corner. Saints still leading by one point, but against Fisher Navy, you want to have that gap be as wide as possible because they can close it faster than you can realize. Lies. Jazzy doing a great job getting this clear, taking this back to the center as Fabso catches the rebound. Interceptions going wrong as it clears back over to the Saints 
side. Simon in midair does not want to let it even hit the ground. He sends it over back to orange side. Fabzo taking this over to Sai as he cuts that towards the corner. Gonna get taken out for the demo from Sosa. And as he comes back in, Jazzy's going to get that interception, cutting the play from Fisher Navy. 120 on the clock left. Can Fisher tie things up or are the Saints gonna be able to maintain this pressure that we're seeing as we get back into the corner? Fabzo setting things up for another shot. Gonna get the demo. Right, demo. Going straight for it, but his teammate's gonna be there to get the shot. Jazzy as Fabzo carried it straight down, served it up on a silver platter after getting that demo. And by the end of it all, we're four to two now already. And he tracks the ball down as well to just get that touch past the last defender. Such a good job from the third man showing that he can also do great work up in the front. So right now, St. Clair, they have their safety net. But with a minute left, there's still lots of time on the clock for Fisher to get back into this one. It's gonna be Adam who gets beat out. Jazzy now has to has the corner, but it's gonna be boomed back from Wanda Mike. Down to Adam, redirect on net, but it's going to be sent off by Zai. Nothing too challenging so far. Fisher just trying to see if they can start something on their offense to try to maybe limit St. Clair's boost numbers. But with Fabzo and Zai on near 100 right now, it's not seeming like that's gonna be the case. Fabzo oh has a clear beat, a huge gap in the defense. Definitely a mistake there from Fisher. Maybe a missed call, maybe a double. No, it's actually gonna be, be because of a bump that came out onto Sosa and it wow. left him out of position. <laughs> it's a great job from the off ball player on St. Clair. And they're gonna move up five to two right now as this one could very well be done. Yeah, it's those plays that, well, getting a little bit uh, ahead of listen, ourselves. Listen, at this level, when you're up by three, uh -huh. usually, but listen, you uh -huh. know you know what, at the end of the day, I deserve that. It is Fisher, no. they're gonna make you pay for saying stuff like that. So, look, I will eat my words in that regard. With 39 seconds left though, you guys are still down by two. So let's go, let's get it going, let's get it going. That's a second kickoff win. Caster Curse is incoming. I'm just kidding, Zai clears it out right now. Looking for Jazzy, let's get back on track. Zai having to commit up for the ball, dives in, Fabzo as well. This is a good looking attack right now from Fisher. And if this comeback happens, I'm definitely gonna be St. Clair enemy number one. <laughs> I would uh, be quite hostile towards our guys I'm St. Well. Clair enemy number one. I'm, on, I'm number two, Patrick. I'm right there with you. I'm joking, of course. Fisher Navy doing a fantastic job of coming back in this game. And if we're just following math, running the calculations, you see the calculator on the screen there. They can just, just based off of the patterns we've seen in this game alone, 20 seconds is plenty of time. And never mind, as Fabzo is going to take two of those seconds to get a goal of their own. But. Still, if we're following the precedent here, by the end of this, we could be looking at uh, like 14 to 12, potentially, um, in the last 15 <laughs> seconds. Uh, you laugh, but dead serious, the way this game's going, it's just getting cut by, like, absolutely dividing by 10 the amount of time it takes these guys to get goals as we get closer and closer to this five minute mark but here we are five seconds left Sacred college going to take this game one against fisher navy but it was not wow, easy goal line save. as even in the last second the fisher navy team was about to get one more goal so they are fighting hard for their lives, definitely. The scoreline was a lot different than we saw in the previous series, but I would say this is definitely the hardest game they've had to play today. Absolutely, um, and it's gonna continue that way uh, for the rest of it. There's no more of these quote unquote, I don't wanna necessarily like call easy matchups, no offense, but look, I'm just gonna call it as I see it. I'm a caster, right. I'm gonna stick it that way, so yeah. So far, these have been matchups to really kind of, I guess, warm up on the side of Jazzy Zion Fabso, but now they're in the thick of it. And if anything, the matchup beforehand was really a wake-up call that they yeah. might have been taking it a little bit too easy. So right now, it's going to be Fisher Navy putting them to the test. Let's see how this one goes. Fabso, a miss, actually, and that's going to be a horrible miss there as it's going to set up now Adam for a potential chance off the backboard. It won't happen. Jazzy able to keep calm and composed for the double tap on the ground. However, it still leaves a little bit of a gap right now. St. Clair, now they have to rush for boost. Jazzy having time now. Fakes the flip out to get over a defender, or under, should I say. And that buys time right now for Fabso to get up wall with boost. Finding Zai, the shooter. Can he find the double? No, leaves it off for Jazzy. The low shot, bouncer, but it's going to be just wide. Sosa didn't even have to put a foot on it, but he's going to get there anyway and get credited with the save. Fabso taking this from their corner, hopefully taking it over to Fishers instead. 0-0 zero to zero here, and this is probably the scariest point of the game because it's 
at least when there's one goal on the board, you can tell who is coming to this game with the strong advantage, who is coming in confident with the momentum, and you're able to play accordingly. Maybe you're like, okay, we need to adjust our defense, play more patiently. But with 0-0, it's no man's land. Nobody knows how to play right now. They're all still figuring things out. Jazzy, and there's a huge collision, a five-man pileup over in the middle as they're yeah. trying to fight for the ball. Fabzo on the ground as Sosa carries it right over his head. Going to get a demo. demo as he hits the ground. Jazzy with a nice save. Really necessary. The shot from Adam not going to find his mark as Fabzo bounces off the wall. Going to cut that shot early. Not even allowing to find his mark. But Jazzy with a bump off the roof towards the corner. Another perfect save from the Saints. Fabzo once again trying to get this out of the blue corner. Fisher not letting him. Jazzy rebounding off of the crossbar from the top behind the net. They're going to cut this one forward, sending it back over to Blue. A game of wow. Ping Pong, bouncing off the cross post. Not going to have enough ball up to turn that into a shot on the side of Fisher Navy. And as we get back to Orange, we're seeing Fabzo trying to slow the ball up for his teammates to get a nice shot lined up. Jazzy doing the same as he goes for the pinch. It's going to get taken out by Wanda Mike, carrying it back over to Blue side, dribbling it. PZY has to go for the interception. He finds it, thank God, as Wanda Mike looking to re-instantiate the offense as Sosa goes down, they're going to have to readjust and go back over to the side, recoup and play for the same offense as now Fabs goes for the shot, double follow up by Jazzy, and that's not going to go in. Adam finds the perfect defense. Fabzo saying absolutely not, bringing it back to Orange, and Patrick, this is looking to be a very deadly game. As I said, 0-0 is the scariest goal I'd be at. Neither of these teams know how to really take this. Right, I mean, it's, and since you started, I mean, it's been two minutes of absolute deadlock. Uh, it's just like no one can really get through the shadow to the game. <laughs> and uh, right now, as Jazzy takes up the sidewall, he does have Zai who is behind him. So again, maybe try to play a 50, force it to Zai. That's going to be exactly what happens. It's now downfield. It's going to have to bait a defender out. It is going to be Wanda Mike, who now then ends up passing Woo! it down to Fabso. A laser of a shot, but a better save. Adam, the first one to it. Jazzy off the sidewall, looking back pass to Zai. Can he find anything off the ceiling? Jazzy, drop down pass. Does he have a shooter? No, not quite. Sosa, great defensive awareness to play on the backboard. Fabso now looking for Zai. Back to Fabso. Fakes out the shot from Jazzy. Just high and just missed opportunity so far from the Saints. As they get low on boost, they have to start rotating back and getting ready for the counter. The counter is there. Sai is there as well to stop it from finding the back of the net. Sai is also dribbling this one back towards the orange side as Fabzo meets him mid-air. Going for the shot. It's going to go down. Adam not even going to need to get the touch as he's just going to corral the ball back. Jazzy goes for the backflip to take this one back to orange side. He's not going to have the speed to really beat that interaction. Sai slowly crailing down, stopping the momentum, slowing it as he takes it back over to orange side. Adam caressing it, just trying to get his team in a position to answer. They have to get the boost first, wow. but not in time as Sai sinks it in from the center. This one didn't get the luxury of bouncing off the cross post, but it was still a floater that Sai was ready to sink in. And I mean, that only works because of the beautiful fake by Fab, so they think the shot's going to be going maybe bottom left, but it just doesn't end up happening at all. Leaves off, they don't collect Fab so in time. A kickoff, and Aaron won at that on the side of Fisher. St. Clair have their safety net, and a huge play from the whole team with Jazzy to finish it off. Yeah, Jazzy going to get that kickoff play, but as we're seeing, we have a 2-0 score deficit. This is good for the Saints on paper, but like I mentioned, 0-0 zero, zero is the scariest uh, part. I'm not. Now I'm it's 0-2. Now it's 0-2, Fisher Navy has the pressure on their back. It's a gust of wind telling them, whispering to them, you need to score goals. That's, that gust of wind wasn't there before. They were just like, you know, figuring it out. The gust of wind is telling them what to do now. So they have a directive, a motive, and that is what any warrior needs to go from being a humble soldier to being a warrior of legend. Can they ascend into the history books and come back in this game two situation? Fisher Navy fighting for that chance as they take this one down from the side. Sosa goes for the shot, Sai denies it. Fabzo's the only one waiting for him on the orange side. Wanda Mike has to use all his boost to meet it. And now they're not gonna have anything left in the tank to turn this into an offensive play. They won't even have the chance to get things going as the time runs out. Saints 2-0 over Fisher College in both a scoreline and series so far. That was tense, but impressive.
Um, not something that you usually see when you can hold a clean sheet up against Fisher, but then again, these are the defending world champs, so that title cannot just apply to anybody. Right. Right now, they have to just kind of stay composed. They're doing a good job. They just need to work on, I would say, getting low on boost and having no one back for the counter. They almost had, they almost got burned. Mm -hmm. uh, it was Fab, so I believe on like 14 boost or so who had to make a save. It was a quick shot out <laughs> from Sosa and that would have ended up, I believe, breaking uh, the deadlock. Um, so, you know, when you look at it back, they did handle uh, Fisher well. I think they found their moments. Um, but again, like I said, they're a momentum-based team. And what happens when you let in one? Immediately, the next kickoff, another goal ensues. Mm -hmm. So they're a great. They have a. They have a great kickoff. Um, and I think that's really, I guess, benefic beneficial to uh, them. Even though I will say, I'm a little bit surprised that previous game. When they were up by three, I believe it was five two. Yeah. It was the first, the next two goals that Fisher ended up scoring. It came off of the fact that the kickoff went Fisher's way. Mm -hmm. They couldn't re uh, readjust. They couldn't have people in the back line with boost on hand to make saves, and they ended up either getting bumped out of position, maybe backwards, sideways in their own net, and it allowed for easy fifties because when you're not moving upfield to clear, if a fifty comes your way and you're moving sideways or backwards, you don't have the momentum. That's how Sosa scored his goal from the drop down pass and that's what I think that St. Clair needs to kind of focus on a little bit more is I guess the kickoff if anything because yeah. uh, it's a quick way to get burned and even though it sounds very basic it's really a big momentum starter and can lead to a lot of goals if unchecked. And another huge benefit of getting that kickoff is the early advantage that you have playing on your opponent's side of the field. Absolutely. You have a lot more leeway to just play around boost. You have two guys fighting in front of the net. You have three on the opponent's side fighting against those two guys. And you have one guy in the back not only playing for the clears, but they're just picking up boost the entire time. That's exactly what we want to see. And that's exactly what the Saints are doing. And it allows them to maintain their pressure and their advantage so well and keep them playing uh, against the opponent's side, keeping that force still going. Um, but, hey, you know what? Turns out, Saints won that series. That was a best of three, not a best of five. We were mistaken. Oh, the gr oh okay. Just hearing that um, now. Yeah. Uh, okay, so sorry. Just got out of my ear. So, wow. actually, we thought it was best of fives at the semifinals. Mm -hmm. It's just going to be best of threes until the finals. So, so apparently the website lied, but hey, you know what? <laughs> well, thank you. You know what? I, that's a lot of stress off my back because I, I honestly, I, uh, yeah, no, th there were definitely some issues. I think that obviously St. Clair were doing a way better job. That's why they won the series. Um, and then maybe, you know what, what we witnessed, that clean sheet. Now I'm going to go off the back of this. It was the fact that Fisher was so close to coming back in that first game. Mm-hmm. And they just let it slip from them. Mm -hmm. That mental shot carried over, and they just couldn't find anything offensively in game two. That, that's why, even with Saints on low boost, yeah. you weren't seeing the best quality of shots from come from the uh, comebacks, from the counterattacks. And Fisher, I'm going to go ahead and say, I think just kind of gotten a little bit in their own heads. Mm -hmm. uh, because, it, it, again, I will say it wasn't the Fisher that I expected to see but at the same time they even that team still did give the saints a little bit of pressure so hey you know what they move on that's it is how it is i would just not be surprised with a juggernaut like fisher now in the lowers mm -hmm. if we're going to be seeing them again soon yeah i wouldn't be surprised either as now our saints green are sitting comfortably in the winners finals one game away yep. from making it to day two ladies and gentlemen as we are getting comfortable and getting ready for the next matches for either of our squads we are going to get ready to send it over to a quick break but you won't want to miss any of the action because it's getting closer it's getting scarier and everything Everything is on the line, so don't go anywhere. We'll be right back after a quick break, ready for our next matches. Stay tuned.
Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. We oh are my. the Green Squad going against Concord Whoa. University in the finals. <laughs> uh, and another little mistake hiccup here. Uh, it is actually best of three all the way through. No best of fives as we're seeing the Saints coming off with a strong start with one on the board against Concord University. Yeah, Concord definitely the number uh, one team right now in collegiate. Crispy, Helix, and Simas looking absolutely incredible. They're just burning everybody in their path so far this season. But right now, that is not the case. St. Clair, they already have a goal on the board. Simas off the back wall. Has to try to find a wave dash to try to force a 50. It's not going to go his way. Zai, shooter, but he's going to be saved out by Crispy. A great job to react on defense. And a long clear. Jazzy having to play shadow. He needs to watch the second touch because he might be sending it straight to a Concord attacker. But Zai clears him, has his back. Yeah, I mean, you said at the beginning of the day, Patrick, it's going to be either Green or Concord University taking this one through. And you weren't lying because this is quite literally the only two possibilities at this point now as Jazzy rides the wall from the corner. He's going to beat that exchange. Helix is going to catch him at, as he heats the ground, however, and he's going to take the demo out on Fabzo. Playing down one man for a couple seconds is all they need to find a goal. Crispy is going to tie things up one-to-one -one with a great coordinated play coming up from Concord University. Right, and I mean, even with the demo coming through, what, what the enforcer on the side of Concord does even better, and I believe it was Helix, he then cuts off Zai's path of defense. So then Zai has to tap the brakes to avoid getting killed on demo. And because of that, he's not able to get to the shot path. So it's a great job on Concord. They're just so effort flawlessly. Uh, they're just, <laughs> sorry. They're operating flawlessly on the attack as of right now. And St. Clair, you got to kind of put a wedge in their plans if you want to see anything come through. Zai, pass down to Fabso, pass back up to Zai, but it's just not going to be able to fall on it. Crispy with the clear, it's going to be left for Helix, 50 on the corner, and now it's going to have to be left out for Simas. Next 50 goes those way. Fabso, up early, has a flip, not going to elect to use it. It's smarter to leave it now. Zymas able to clear it down to Jazzy. Jazzy with the clear out, going to be back down to Fabso. And again, right now, we're just playing a little bit of ping pong, but it's a little bit risky because this one is merging a little closer and closer every time to St. Clair's net. And the net is going to have a guardian made of green Fabzo, not allowing that one to get any closer to the danger zone. As Crispy, right in front of the net, not even able to get that in. Fabzo with another beautiful save with the assistance of his teammates. The Saints desperate now to get a clear. They know they can't handle this pressure for much longer, so they are able to get it out. Crispy trying to send it right back over to Blue, but I have a feeling that Fabzo is going to beat him to it. Fabzo is going to get that ball hitting the ground over on, well, it was on orange. Now we're back to Blue as Jazzy fights for that clear. Crispy is going to stop from going much further. They're playing so well. Saints should be a goal. Oh, that's definitely a goal as yeah. no one's there in net to save it. Kind of caught the Saints out with their pants down and turned that into a very quick goal to establish the goal lead in this game one situation. Yeah, and unfortunately, Fabso ran out of boost, so he can't play the sidewall redirect, which would have maybe had the potential to find a shooter. But because Jazzy and Zaya were both up, Again, they both had to dive, so a little bit of an overcommit from the Saints. Concord doing very good job to expose them of that, as they should. Zai with a 50 down. Can he try to find the dunk onto the defender on Concord? No, not quite. And it's going to result in a Simas shot saved out by Fabso. Demo by Jazzy. And now Helix off the wall. Zero boost. He can't play for dunk. Going to have to call off. Crispy, great first touch to his name. Has a reset now. And can he try to play it around? Has one touch around. Maybe another one down to a shooter, but it's not going to happen. Helix going to have to play this one safe. 50 off his own wall. It's going to have to be. Zai, okay. the pass, down to Fabso, but no, the defender meeting him there just in time. A great job so far from Concord. As Crispy now tries to man the counterattack, he has an inverted flip to his name. He's going to be able to 50 it out. Fabso, who's going to be able to win the race first to the wall? It's going to be him. Jazzy, able to try to pop it up to Zai, but it's going to leave for an open St. Clair net. A double surely on the way. No. There it is to Crispy, and Concord punish the Saints yet again. I got to say, Patrick, I'm realizing now, I don't know about their actual record and all their other leagues and stuff, and even on stream in general, but this would be my first time seeing the Green Squad lose a single game. I've never, I've personally never seen it happen. So, do they want to have that happen here, or do they want to maintain their perfect record in my eyes, at the very least? Can they come back <laughs> here? <Daniel's eyes. laughs> That's the only record that matters. It's the only one that matters. Honestly, the Daniel record, <laughs> right? Eyes. But Concord University, they, they are not joking around. Like you said, this team is here to play some of the best oh, players. But yes. Bob, so defying destiny, gonna take that ball, send it straight to the net. Two to three is a lot more manageable, a lot more doable.
doable with 130 on the clock. They can take this one back. They just need to find those. Just so unfortunate there from Zai. Like I said, his shooting was looking so good earlier today, but he's seen a couple of shooting blunders in these past two series. So again, not able to put that one through, but luckily his teammate had his back. Jazzy opting for a Cookser pinch. It's going to be able to just clear the way and opt for Zai and Fabso to just take their time and reposition to uh, be able to adapt to Crispy's clear. And now Jazzy with a 50, going to be bounced out. It's going to be Crispy yet again off the ceiling with a flip. Beats a man, but no, Fabso there to meet him on the backboard. A great job at staying strong, but as the Saints go on offense, they're going to have low boost. They're most likely going to have to give it back up on defense. We'll see what happens. Fabso in the corner. Now he's going to be the one responsible for having that play happen, but it's going to get stolen out from him. Can someone else step up to the plate to get this going? Fabso has to go back. No boost in his pocket. Has to make oh, a defense. It's going to get stolen in front of him as well. He's going to have to rely on his teammates, but their drives too. <laughs> The high side is going to be the only one with any boost to work with. Jazzy finally getting some replenish. Going to have to come back on that defensive to help his team. And now they're looking at a healthy level of boost. And that boost is going to save them from another goal. Jazzy taking this one out, going straight for it. Crispy's running out himself. Going to get that 100, however. Going to be able to play a lot better on the defense side with that recouping. Jazzy going to have to go back and get some more. As with 20 seconds on the clock, the Saints don't have a lot of time to work with left to get this goal to tie things up to make maintain the perfect field record as Sai chases it forward with the team on the ground. Fabzo bouncing to the corner, going all the way back to Jazzy. He's picking up the boost at the perfect time. Going to get the bounce off the wall from the crossbows, hitting the ground. Fabzo straight forward, but no! That flick happened. Going to get denied. It's going to have to hit the ground eventually, unless Fabzo has anything to say about it. Sai carrying it forward. It's going to go to the corner and send it towards the net. This will be the perfect opportunity for Concord. University to send it straight to the ground. Sai Mass going to do just that, but Sai catching his midair. Crispy going to be the one to cement it. However, St. Clair, St. Green going to lose their first game today. And again, it's my first time seeing them lose a single game, period. So they are going to do some talking, some figuring things out. And uh, hopefully they can handle loss as well as uh, this next one's going to be the one that decides everything for them. Right, I mean, group of debts. So, like I said before, Concord, as of recently, definitely look like one of the top teams. They have just been clearing everyone including now us for one game. And because this is now, correction, best of three on the finals, like we said earlier, now the Saints are looking at one and done. They are staring down the barrel of possible series defeat. So while the series is underway, this very well might be the Saints' last game in that upper bracket if they can't get something going on the attack and if they can't stop Concord altogether. A pinch now from Fab, so it's going to be a shot. Crispy able to get the save out. Zai, corner. Can he find the read on the Jazzy? No, not quite. Zero boost. Jazzy has to rotate. Zai trying to play for a 50 to play time for his teammates. It's very important that he does that, but a reset past Fab, so is going to make Jazzy have to expend so much of that boost just to get a simple clear. The demo not going to help either. Crispy all by his lonesome around two Saints defenders. It's going to end up being a goal, especially on a double commit like that. Simus doing a really good job of just staying composed with the little boost he had. Knows that he can just fall on it if Crispy can get it around two and play the 50 off of Zai. It's a great job by Concord, and they open up the scoring. Yeah, 1-0. At least it's early on enough. The Saints can recognize the situation that they're in the game state and play and adjust accordingly. Sai doing a great job playing off the side wall, dribbling it forward, going to get intercepted. Sai Mas had enough of watching that ball gracefully dance through the air. We're going to see a nice shot come out long court from Jazzy, and that was bouncing excellently, allowing the teammates to try to make a follow up play, but none was there, at least none in time. And Helix trying to recapture that same match that Saints just had a second ago. But hopefully this time they want to turn this into a goal. Jazzy, however, going to be the last person to deny that opportunity. Taking those 100s is better than completely dry Jazzy. He's going to have to pick up the scraps to get himself back into this game. He's back to 100 now. Sai going to retreat, pick up some boost in the meantime as Crispy turns into the offensive opportunity. No one's going to be able to get that save. It went through two of them, yep. and no one was ready to answer that, unfortunately. 2-0 now, Concord University. They are playing so well, and it's hard to it's hard to answer anything that they're doing right now. I mean, that is absolutely perfect placement there by Simus. Threads the needle through all yeah. 
three yeah. Saints, especially the two on the goal line there. Let's see how the kickoff goes the way of the Saints. It is going to be Jazzy, but a great bump there, and it's going to free up an attack now for free on the side of Concord. Fabso able to break it up for now, but Simas off the ceiling, has a flip. How's he going to use it? Inverts instead to try to get the scoop shot. Zai, really, really awkward off the back wall. He was coming down from the backboard. It was a great job of Zymas. Look at how he reads Zai's movement. He's going to just delay the flip so long that Zai then has to fall off the backboard, and he has no control over his car. He has to just land and hope that he gets dealt a good card on the RNG bracket. It definitely wasn't given to him. A great job there by Simas with an extremely incredible offensive awareness play, and he puts Concord up 3-0. 3-0, three minutes on the clock, however. Plenty of time to recuperate your dreams and turn them into reality. As Fabzo tries to do just that a little bit too early, however, it's going to hit the crossbows and go no further into the net side. Going to bounce off the side wall, and no one's going to be able to convert that into a shot. Just no boost to play with, none, even if it's just by a small margin. Concord University always just has slightly more than the Saints to work with, and those are all the difference makers when it comes to managing these plays. Number 50, going to beat out Jazzy. Look at 0% in that tank. What really can you do to get something done? The answer is nothing as you watch him dance the ball into your net 4-0. Looks more and more likely that the Saints will be looking at a lower bracket finals to try to qualify for day two. I mean, it's a great play from Crispy there. I mean, there's no other way you can put it. Give these guys the credit. They are so deservingly aware of. I mean, they, they really should be talked about as if they are one of the best because right now as of recently they have been acting like it right now or not acting sorry they are not acting ladies and gentlemen sorry they are playing like it they are that team as of right now and St. Clair they need to try to find a way to strike gold we'll see how they do it Simas able to find a 50 as well one of his own it's going to be Zai who ends up on the winning side of it but no Saint there able to just play off of the 50 it will have to be Fabso off his own corner ends up getting a good touch Jazzy trying to run interference but Crispy has enough boost to get around him and finds the booming clear. That's huge because Jazzy doesn't have any boost in the tank, so we can't kill the player working down the field in Helix. And now Simas able to try to play for a 50. It's going to get around him from Zai, but it's still lofting up in St. Clair's end. Jazzy able to find the save. Zai back down to Fabso, but it's just a little bit off the mark on the terms of the pass, and the shooter will not be able to get found. Simas trying to find he uh, Crispy, I believe, or no, it was Helix. But even then, it's still Kong Court, running interference even when they're trying to get to their back line. They find that demo. They break up the offense. It's a great pass. It's a great shot. It's going to be an absolute laser beam. And Crispy's going to be able to put it away as we just bouncing crossbar to ground. Really awkward to clear out. You can't really do anything from the backboard because where your momentum is going to take you, you're going to own goal it no matter what with the spin on the ball. It's a really tough play, a really great one, and a heads-up play from Concord's Crispy. Yeah, Concord University are completely dominating in this game two situation. The Saints are completely struggling. They're up a paddle without, but they're up a river without a paddle, and as they take it now to 6-0, I can't imagine another situation other than the Saints losing this series 2-0 to Concord University. Absolutely. And needing to fight their way back from the losers' finals, waiting for whoever fights their way up to them. Right, I mean, Concord, this is just, uh, I'm telling you right now, it's mental chalk. You're seeing the Saints miss key plays. Uh, they're missing key positioning. Uh, they're a little bit awkward. They're low on boost. I think the most impressive thing that I've seen today is the fact that Concord is making the Saints look like the teams that the Saints were playing earlier. Yeah. They're making yep. them look low on boost. They're making them really run around on defense. I can just tell by the movement of the cars how panicked the Saints are playing. Yes. They're, they're not, they don't have the control of that midfield like they did from before. You can just tell Fabso off the back wall. See, he's missing that shot. That's not one that you would usually expect a player of his caliber to have go by the wayside. Sai has to make a save. Fabso going to end up getting demoed for his efforts as well of trying to rotate back and help his team. It's a really good job from Concord. They're making the Saints stretch, and when they do, they're punishing them for it. It's a great job. They're not letting them play close together, and they're playing very distant. It's going to have to be a clear into the own backboard to try to find a clear to Jazzy but it's not going to happen. Side, team pinch potential with Fabso. It's a nice one, it's on net, but it just wasn't going to go fast enough after it hit the ground. With that overcommit, it's gonna be a free net and a free goal. And again, Concord catches the Saints sleeping.
25 seconds to score seven goals. Not even Santa could deliver a gift that sweet no. for Saints. <laughs> and especially, uh, it's October, the spooky season. Not yeah. Christmas. No gifts are going to be coming for them, except for the sweet relief of knowing that you're going to be in the lower bracket. No more guessing. They know for sure what's coming up next for them is a tough fight in the lower finals as they wait for their opponent after this lobby. And they'll have plenty of time to think, to reflect, to consider how Absolutely. this game could have gone differently for them. And uh, hopefully they can come back stronger in their final series of the day coming up as they go down 7-0 in game two against Palmer University. We're going to take the series 2-0 the St. Clair Saints Dream Squad. Uh, fantastic match all around. And the Fisher match, hey, 8-0. Put them up. I mean, why not, right? Uh, this is it. Concord at least going to be moving on. So for the Saints right now, here's your focus. All right, guys? Losing is not something that you encounter very often. You guys are very good. But it's just happened. So what do you do? You play calm. Let's just relax a little bit, right? Team talk with the guys. Don't worry about the Concord match, and if anything, if these players are of the caliber that I believe they are, they were probably looking at the score when it was about 4 or 5 nil, and they already had this one out of their mind. They were already probably yep. thinking about the next matchup, which is what you need to be doing, and that's why the score gets ran up a little bit so high. It might be the reason why some of the other scores from some of the other teams ran up a little bit high. It's because sometimes when you start thinking about your next series, you're not focusing, obviously, on the one that's actually on the table. It's a great job there from St. Clair, and... I believe I was told best of three for the finals, but now all of a sudden I'm actually getting told no. It actually is a best of five finals. The so Saints aren't j out just yet. So if anything, that makes it very wow. confusing. That just flips the <laughs> entire narrative on me. And for everything that I said in the last like 30 seconds, that just simply doesn't apply. So right yeah. now it's going to be Concord well, with the ball, mind. with the goal. They already have one to their name. Mental chalk definitely setting in for the Saints. And now, if they give up another one, I can already tell you right now, St. Clair, they got to just regroup and then start thinking about that lower finals. It's not the best case scenario, but this game still isn't over. Absolutely. They need to refocus in, recenter in. Let's just take a look at what's in front of us right now. Jazzy off the back wall. He's going to have a flip, able to get it to Crispy. It's going to be down to Zai as well. So, again, St. Clair, they're looking good, but they're still on defense. We need them to break through. Looking to do that right now is Fabso. He has the double tap, but he can't find it. Shot being found out oh. from Zai. Or Jazzy, my mistake. Helix with a crazy save, though, and he keeps Concord with a clean sheet. An absolutely wonderful save. Probably the best one of the tournament I've seen so far and right now it's going to be hero plays like that that keep concord on a clean sheet are you kidding me the saint i was getting ready to say to say the saints needed that so badly because i thought they were going to get it in but since they didn't get it in i can say they needed that so badly <laughs> but unfortunately they were not able to get it that would have been a huge play for the saints to find but hopefully maybe even just the tease of getting close to a play like that would be enough for these guys to get themselves back into this game. It's going to bounce down from the cross post. It's the perfect situation you want to be in, but again, the defense is just too tight on the side of Concord University. They weren't able to make the ball up on the side of the Saints, and now it's back with the blue side. Simas is looking to be a terror on this side of the field, and so far, he's had some success. He's going to cut that pass over and bring things back to blue side. Crispy just trying to trick to trace that ball, follow it towards the net, and take it all the way in, but he's not going to get there. Sai is going to have a beautiful save. Jazzy trying to get the clear, but Crispy already one step ahead of him, getting that ball, cutting it back. And Fabzo trying once again to chase this ball up towards orange side. Met with a lot of resistance, however. They don't want to have the Saints get any more chances or anything close to what they had just a second ago with the ball just dancing in and out of behind the line. But Jazzy there you go. There finding you go. a nice shot. This is the kind of shots that we were seeing earlier earlier on in the day. It's just a nice forward going, tracing it down, and then flipping it Great back play. in. Beautiful play, one to one. Basically three minutes on the board. Hey, it's, they still in this. You know what? There it is, right? That could change momentum right there. And a great play from Jazzy delaying the reset just until Crispy was too high. Taps off the ceiling, has one of his own now, can try to see if he can poke it with the flip into the into the wall for a double tap is what he was trying to go for. But it doesn't fall through. Jazzy 
lofting shot, but it will be easily saved up by Helix, and I believe, if anything, it was probably just a pass attempt to one of, uh, I believe it was Zai, but Zai doing a good job rotating back. Tapso so awkward on his own back end, and he's going to get demoed for it as well. I expected that. A great pit maneuver now by Crispy. Not actually a pit maneuver, but a great job to get the, uh, the attacker on St. Clair out of position. Tapso with a flick, but he has zero. He has to force. It's a great job from Crispy to force the flick into the corner, because now Fabso has to try to 50 with no boost. He's actually going to be able to do it, though. Zai, with a lot of boost in tank, is going to get bumped out of play. A great job there. I love that cut from Fabso. I think he has a lane, but no, Crispy out of nowhere, off the side of the net, is able to find the save and keep things 1-1 apiece. Out of nowhere has been the consistent theme I've been seeing this game. We were looking at just a goal that should be turning to something of nothing but imagination as Crispy usually or anyone else inside of Concord University coming from literally off screen and slamming it out of the way. 135 on the board, one to one still. The Saints are fighting a lot better than they did in those in that game two, especially, but definitely better in their game one as well. Because so far they're managing to keep even footing with Concord University. But the one thing that's for them won't reflect is the fact that Concord University is controlling the field so much better than the Saints are. It's just out of this world how well they are doing at controlling the boost pads, playing around those corners, getting the interceptions and those cut plays. It's, uh, it's quite unprecedented, but hopefully Saints will be able to find an answer within the last minute of the series. Potentially. Hey, and I mean, with a deadlock that it has been right now, it's probably next goal wins if I had to take a guess, unless, you know, people start kind of taking their minds off of what's in front of them. It is now going to have to be St. Clair with the defense. It's going to be a great job to let Fabso take it. Even though he has zero boost, he can probably try to play a flick to try to get it to one of his teammates. No, and if anything, St. Clair's out of position right now. This is really dangerous. No one except for Zai with a lot of boost, and right now he's just sitting in net. Not a place that you want to really be in. Now, it is going to be Zai who gets the clear out. It's not going to be found for the redirect, but it's going to be left to Jazzy. Jazzy, can he find the dunk? No, not quite. A great job on the backboard by Simas, and now it lost perfectly down. Double off the ceiling, has the dunk as well. An amazing show of mechanics and air control by Simas. He keeps the ball in St. Clair's half. He has a shot, a pass, another one. No, not quite. I thought maybe for a second it was going to be open for St. Clair. Oh. A booming shot, but a great save by Simas on the shadow defense. And now Fabso off the sidewall, has a man. It's going to be Jazzy but he just barely misses him out. Just passed, and we have overtime. Overtime is where it's going to be settled here. Can Concord take one more goal? They had so many in the previous game. Or are the Saints going to have a comeback of all time and at least get one on the board against the best Rocket League team we've seen today here in this tournament? Patrick, it's electric. The players, they're so focused, and you can feel their passion. You can feel their dedication with every touch of the ball. Jazzy playing aggressively. I like that the Saints are playing more aggressively than they were before. They have a little bit of confidence back. All it took was one on the board. Fabzo oh chasing God. back. This is Fabzo we've oh, been seeing no. all day. Helix is going to intercept however. He knows that if you let Fabzo get on a lane, he is very difficult to stop. Passing up the side. That looked like you just put one button pass. Didn't feel like it took any effort at all. It's Jazzy. Oh my God. Helix there setting that out of the corner or maybe it just missed naturally. In any case, the Saints are feeling the pain as right now 100% boost. Jazzy is going to be trying to get to that ball but he knows no one's going to be able to get there in time. As, oh, Concord, they're not going to be able to stop that cut from coming through, but they're ready for it regardless of Simas catches that one, takes it to the ground. Crispy just misses. Could this be the play that Bobzo needed as he stands on the jump pad or the boost pad as it spawned on him? Sai is going to get that clear. Is anyone going to be able to meet it? Yes, Crispy taking it up. Sai is going to cut it one more time as it goes back. Fabzo catching it, taking it to the ground. Sai chasing it up. Are they going to be able to turn it off an off, off, offensive opportunity? Sai gets a deep demo and Crispy is chasing slowly Fabzo, Sai, and Jazzy are fighting for their lives. They got to watch on the counterattack right now. This is going to be a high lofting ball. Simas with a beat, but he's not going to have it. Jazzy able to find the fake, read the fake, find the save. But now Simas, sidewall with 49 in pocket. He has a man in the middle, opting to leave his flip reset until later. Jazzy uh -oh. picks it off, but the Saints operating a low oh, boost and a double commit as well. It looks bad right now, and as the boost the still boost. comes in, it's not going to happen. Look at the boost numbers right now for St. Clair. They're all really low. The shot's going to come in at some point. It's going to be a high one. Fabso, it wasn't going to be a shot to be worthy of a goal, but it may have resulted in a pass. So again, St. Clair clearing out of their own back end. They have Crispy now bearing down no. the shot, but the save, the bump not able to come in in time. Crispy with a demo on Zai as well. Fabso into the corner, has 
no one long. He's just trying to play time right now, so the Saints on the defensive side can grab boost. Fabso up again, has the beat. Who's up? It's gotta be Jazzy. Jazzy, awkward, leaves it. It's going to be for Crispy's shot. It was a great fake by Simas, but now the Saints rotating down the other side of the field. They have to try to get Zai on the counter attack. He's going to have a touch. He has another player on Saints on the middle of the field. He has to play it off to Helix, though. Helix working around the back. Fabso, that's a huge dunk. Somebody on St. Clair needs to be working down and trying to find the read, though. It's gonna be Jazzy on a little bit of a risky dive in, and now it might lead to another Concord counter attack. It's going to be on the defensive side. They on the goal line! It. It's going to be Simas who just rips away the potential of the comeback from the Saints. A great job from Concord. They spot the hole, and it unfortunately let was all started from a dive from Jazzy that just didn't find the result he was looking for. That was just, that was unbearably One close. Yeah. Yeah. Um, one thing I was pointing out just a second ago. Oh, wow. Hold on. University of Maryland and the Saints gold squad are going oh, into another again. overtime. We're, doing it again. we're right back here. Thankfully, at least this time, this is just game one. They're not fighting for the life just yet, but it is a huge advantage as they are starting the approach. Christian, the Canadian hero, Captain Canada, going for the goal. Oh, my God. How did that not go in? What a save by Waiters. And now it's going to be Maryland who have to try to force the counter. It's just patience, patience, patience. University of Maryland, they are waiting and biding their time. Hexify or Hex Hexy is chasing this one up. Besh is taking this one off the sidewall. Now the rest of the Saints are chasing this one straight towards the net. Turtle takes it out. This must have been one of the Teenage Mutant variety because that was a play worthy of a ninja. It was just so sneaky, so well executed. And that was the save that the Saints the Maryland squad needed to keep himself in this game. Christian is playing like a literal, unironic, just actual demon shark. He, what is he doing? <laughs> like actually, these guys going crazy right now, even getting a demo just for the hell of it. He's going ferocious right now. Vesh is playing aggressive, getting another demo. Uh, Hexy is just going to be another victim underneath Christian's tires. Barris going to get an excellent cut, a beautiful save, and then another, another demo, demo from Christian. Vesh trying to make the play for Barris in the center. Going to go for the shot, but off the post. Christian with the rebound, allowing Barris to tip it one more time. Hexy, however, going to tip it back. Vesh and Barris playing on the side. Christian with 100 boosts, waiting for his opportunity to strike. It's going to go straight down. Clear is going to come out. Christian off the back. With all that boost in mind, he's able to play for it, keep it on the orange side, or a blue side, rather. But now it's back to orange as Maryland wants to start their offense. And again, offense started. It's going to be Turtle who probably tries to force, but it's going to be Waiters with a huge Huge demo, that's massive, but Turtle, a little bit of a mess up in the wave dash, was trying to play the 50. Hexy tries to find a pass in the middle. Turtle there to pop, but he doesn't have a player who can play to. It's probably gonna be a 50 back out to himself, and that's exactly what's gonna happen, but the 50 was missed, the chance missed. It's now gonna have to be Maryland who counter from their own backfield. They've done a good job of doing it so far. Ball back in the Saints end. Vesh off the sidewall, has a man in the middle. He sees him too, air dribbling around the defense. Can he get it past? Yes, he can, but a great job by Turtle. Obstacle for the solo play instead, and it costs him as it doesn't, oh, opt into a goal. However, it leaves Christian to still stay there as he can still force the defense of Maryland to have to retreat. So again, it's a great job uh, by Vesh. Well, it didn't actually turn into a goal. It still allowed Christian to play around the ball, and that's all that matters at the end of the day if he can still keep the pressure going. Right now, Maryland with the pressure going. Turtle with a 50. It has to be cleared up by Vesh. However, it's not going to happen. Barris, he has a long touch, but a defender should be up on the backboard. It is going to be Hexy tries to clear it out. Trying is going to be the key word here. Everybody's trying to get these clears. Both teams are so on top of both of them. Wanders is, our Waiters is going to be fighting for that, but ultimately he's going to find his way out as Barris goes, or that was a Christian going for a nice shot. Barris is waiting on the sidelines to try to get a recuperation. Vesh on the sidewall now, just taking this back up. It's going to get caught midair by Hexy, but Still, it's going to be Maryland's possession as Maris takes that shot back over to blue side. Going to try to get the shot off of his own shot, passing it up to himself. But still, the defense for Maryland so tight, not allowing these shots to be found. Vesh is going to be playing on the ground, watching it fly over his head as his team is going for something. Bears going for a shot. Waiters fighting that one once again. Christian on the ground with enough boost to kill. He's lethal, and he's demonstrated plenty of times he's looking for those demos very actively. There are big opportunities for him. 
teammates to get the offense going. Christian taking that back with a nice flip. Vesh with the demo of his own now. He's going to get a taste for blood and he's becoming a man eater. We're about at the point where it's a second game here. We're five minute or four minute overtime, close to five. Can anybody find a goal? Oh, that's going to be Maryland with an open net, wide open. The Saints forgot about the defense part for just a second, allowing Maryland to capitalize while no one was able to get back to the net. Uh, game one going to Maryland. Right, I mean, Maryland, great job there, defensively aware that the Saints were sending all their eggs into one basket. They're able to find the 50 they need, and it just results in a clear that just sinks right into the Saints' net. You got to think there's a little bit of a sour taste in their mouths after that one, and they don't have very long to recover from it because they are now, I believe, if I saw that right, best of three, right? Best of three. So they are on their tournament life right now. Yeah, tournament life on the line for the gold squad and they're not called gold for no reason these guys are trust me top 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 level collegiate players capable of so much devastation but with your back against the wall playing against another incredibly high level team Sometimes the pressure might get to you, and we might be feeling some of that pressure now as we head into game two momentarily. These guys fighting for so much. It's CRL. We said it at the start of the day, which feels like, oh, so long ago now. This is what everybody's fighting for. Thankfully, the coach is there, keeping everybody smiling, laughing. It's not all doom and gloom, but it's about to be time to refocus and get right back into the game. Christian with his patented lean in. Nobody does it like he does as we get started. Game two. To Saints gold, life on the line. Can they get something done? Here we go. Vesh up to Barris on the sidewall right now to get things started. He's doing a good job of running the offense, and it's going to be Christian with yet another demo. Somebody start tallying these, honestly. He's been a man on a mission, and now Vesh has to be the one to defend. The shot coming in from Waiters, potentially, but Christian with a good 50 to let that one go by. Vesh just diving, trying to see if he can try to find a pass maybe off the backboard. It's not going to happen to commit on the side of Maryland, but Hexy is going to be able to stay standing. Never mind. He's going to be taken off the pitch, deleted by Christian, yet again. Christian has definitely become the enforcer of the lineup. He's de It's not a role that I've seen him honestly take over for a little while because back when Raman was on the team, he was one of the ones who I remember, I remember was that. honestly being the backline enforcer. So right now, Christian seems to have picked up that role. He's doing quite a good job of it. However, a double commit from the Saints right now might lead to a little bit of a messy clear, but Christian just doing enough to be able to find Vesh with a reset, with a dribble. Can he find a 50? No, not quite. Bears, one up. Does he have the man in the middle? It's Christian. Shot on target, and it's going to be in. Line drive, one-timer, tee it up for the Canadian. Christian sinks this beamer. Let's go, Christian. Nice, beautiful play. You love to see it. The energy that he brings in game and out of it is unrivaled. And shots like that are what you need. You need someone that's going to take those kinds of risks, takes those kind of plays, and does so without hesitation. He's doing it so well, and it's afforded the Saints a lot of goals in their tournament run so far today. Turtle is going to wow. get it. Wow. <laughs> that one, I'll admit, a little bit more finesse on it, a little bit more of a graceful spin as Turtle tips that one into the the net from the side straight to the center one to one 350 on the clock these teams completely locked in and uh i really couldn't tell you who this one's going to so again like you know i was saying wow just because of the fact that the goal was like obviously hard i mean it's an open backboard players of this caliber are not going to miss a chance like that it was just because of the fact that i don't i honestly i don't understand how he was just so open there was like no one around a 30 foot radius of him it felt like so, again, St. Clair letting a man get by. It's not what you want to see, but we'll see how they react to it. Barris with a pass infield, but Turtle's going to be there yet again to cut it off. It's the second time I've seen him do that, in fact. And he's definitely been, been the wedge or the thorn in St. Clair Gold's side so far when it comes to running their attacks. Hexy now trying to just dribble, trying to maybe set up a pinch. It's not going to go very far, and that might cost him as Barris tries to send it up to the middle. Dash with a little bit of a backflip, but you're honestly glad that happened because now he can just take his time and play off the corner. The ground pass, the pinch into Christian, but it's not going to happen. Christian just not able to react in time, and honestly, who would? Reset instead. Ground double maybe being found out, but the dunk doesn't come through. It was almost a clip and a half for Christian, but it'll have to wait. 
Waiting is never comfortable. It's something you don't want to have to do in a Rocket League match with your tournament life on the line, but sometimes you just got to do it. 240 on the clock, and that goal was palpable. It was so close, but the follow-up was just never there, and we're all of a sudden, we're already back to orange side. Barris doing his best to make that no longer the case. Vesh as well, wall crawler, sending a shot straight over to the blue side from that wall. A save coming up from Pexy, but oh, Waiters, a oh, goal. Goal, goal there. Yeah, just like you said, Patrick. Vesh is going to be chasing that one off the cross post. Christian's going to be the one to find it, however, sending that shot straight in from the side wall and just getting blown away from the aftermath. Really just take a moment to bask in the glory of that one, Christian. Two to one now for the University of Maryland. The initiative is on them to find an answer to what St. Clair Saints Gold has been sending their way. He really loves that top right corner. It's the second time he's found it, and honestly, perfect placement as the defender was coming in from near post. Doesn't have the time to get far post. So good job of Christian placement on target. And now the Saints go up in the lead. And this is a little bit of an overcommit. They're going to be able to catch them on the back foot. It's going to be Vesh from the clear as well. And now the Saints have their safety net. This is a huge play from Vesh, a big time 50. And it's going to be one that he looks at and, and in relief says, well, thank God, we got our safety net. A little bit of weight off the shoulders. <laughs> for now. For I want to reference for now. For sure. But that weight is going to be going on the shoulders of the University of Maryland. But if you walk around with heavy weights on your shoulders long enough, you're going to get pretty strong, you know? This yes, fast Son Goku here, 3-1. to one. University of Maryland just biding their time to find a chance to go for an explosive shot. Waiters finding one such moment. Going to just miss it. But Hexy finds the rebound here. 2-3. to three. 144 is absolutely nothing for them to tie if not even get a two more to uh, really take the series if they really want to but of course the Saints goes for the Saints they can walk away with three more within the next 10 seconds it's not impossible we just have to wait and see who wants it more Christian right now he has the kickoff go his way and he's able to find a beat off the ceiling does he have a flip to dunk yes he does but Hexy just able to get under him He's able to just get the save out barely. Vesh now, reset, on ball, has 56 boost. He's going to elect to use it early to try to see if he can scoop it around a defender, but it didn't happen. Barris with a bump, Turtle able to just recover barely enough. No, never mind, he's going to leave it off to Waiters. And now, off the ceiling, a really weird touch from Christian, but it's actually going to work out because it leaves the shooters without any, you know, lane to shoot. Uh, it's a great job. Barris able in transition, maybe would have wanted that one back, but the angle was so, so acute. He would have had to be really on his A game. And because of that, the counterattack comes through. Maryland scores. They tie it up three all. And honestly, on a counterattack with not that much boost when St. Clair had a lot, a couple of mistakes there in the shadow defense by St. Clair. I really think that shouldn't have been a counterattack that resulted in a goal. Saints must be really feeling the pressure now, watching your two goal advantage immediately vanish, turn into a tie. And while you are, let us remind you, one game away from your tournament being over. And wow. now that is four to three. That is shocking. Um, Very shocking. And the Saints gold squad must be feeling the weight of the world. Fall back on the shoulders. <laughs> University of Maryland just dumping it right back. They had enough time with those weights. It's the Saints gold squad. It's their turn to feel it. And I know they're feeling it hard. Barris getting the demo right off the kickoff. It's going to be straight in front of the orange net. Once again, another shot There's coming another out. One. But a, oh, save wow, a save from Vesh and Barris. Beautiful coordination of the two of them working together to keep this one going. Vesh with a shot with the help from Christian and the rest of the Saints. They're working together to keep this offensive triangulation force working. They're not even sending too much back to the back line for the defense because they are already down. Tournament life is already on the line. It all comes down to this. They need to find a goal to keep themselves in there. They there found it. There you go. Exactly. But, I mean, there's got to be hype there. I mean, I mean, Christian just kept the Saints alive for right now. It's a great job on the shot. He's able to find the back of the net off the backboard. And with 24 seconds left, you, you, that, I I mean, that's it. You're, you've now kept it. You've kept yourselves alive. You yep. now have to focus on the next 20 seconds. Anything can happen. Vesh off the back wall. With this now boost of momentum, can St. Clair be the ones to make the comeback when they had the safety net to start off? Hexy electing to not let them do so. A touch down, back down to Vesh. It's going to have to be a clear from him. Wave Dash is just trying to get over. It's going to be a beat. However, it's not on target, and everybody on the side of Maryland has boost. Right now, it is going to have to be Maryland who wants to elect to keep it up. Turtle 
control with a full tank as well. Vesh now on the ball. He has another touch on the sidewall. Can play to the corner. Is any Saints member there to maybe force a shot? No, not quite. It's going to stay up, though. Saints liking to do so. A little bit of a weird one. Turtle with a carry. Can oh. he find a shooter? No, not quite. Picked off in the shadow of defense by, I believe it was Vesh. A good heads-up play, and we have overtime for the Saints tournament lives. Second overtime of the series. Saints fighting for a chance to make it to game three. I think they just need to get one more goal. University of Maryland fighting for their chance to stake, but oh my god, Waiters with the beautiful shot. Vesh was there for the save. In fact, I believe in Christian went for that as well. The Saints are playing so carefully. They don't want to let anything slip by. It would be devastating. Oh, and Christian! God! The duo of destiny, like you've been calling them all day. The perfect play together, sending it from one man to the other, taking it to the net, and that keeps them in this tournament four to five with the OT. The Saints are back in this game, back in this series. They just need to recapture that magic one more time to stay in this tournament. Often known as Polish power to me, Vesh, the musty pass into Christian? Are you kidding me? He's absolutely peaking right now. I wanted to get another look at that one. That might have even been on target as well. I don't even know if Christian needed to be there. Back posts are laughing about it. They gotta be feeling good. They have. What an emotional roller coaster. You're up 3 1, you give up the lead, you then come back and you win it like that in overtime? They gotta be on cloud nine right now. No, thankfully they're on the Saints, okay? And they're gonna be winning this game for us, representing us. And But I completely agree, you must be on cloud nine, feeling the joy coursing through your veins. Barris kind of switching roles now with Christian, being the enforcer, seeing his name in that kill feed so, so much more often than before. But as we're coming into this, treat this like a best of one. Everything on the line, one goal is all you need to shift the momentum completely. I feel like the Saints want a chance in this game. They have to be the ones to get the first goal. But I'll be honest, it feels like they might actually be doing better under pressure just based off of that last game, that OT situation, how they're able to come back, tie it up, and then win the OT where things didn't go their way in that previous one. Potentially could be their strat to just throw a goal and then play full force from there. Doesn't look like it, however, as the Saints are playing so aggressively, trying to get this one out of orange side, back to blue. They're going to miss that one on Vesh. Barris is going to take the initiative, however, but going to kind of get cut here. The clear are not, the clears are not going to be going without resistance. Vesh going to get a nice, simple save and take this as an opportunity to go for a clear attempt yet again. It's not going to go fully out and they're going to chip it back in as Waiters is going to get beaten out, taking this ball back to blue side. Barris on the wall, waiting for the 50. He's going to get lost out. Turtle's going to keep this one going forward, taking the three for a shot. Vesh is going to get beaten out once again and actually going to be a goal. That looked like it was there. going straight for the post to me, but I guess my eyes are faulty. It's just a great play by Turtle. He's just extending, dives in, and he has the pixel perfect pass down to Hexy. Can't place him much better than that. And University of Maryland, glad to be up 1-0. It's going to be on the Saints now, led by Bears so far in that demo category for this game. As you said earlier, the position swap up now. It seems that he's playing a lot more of an aggressive role. The drop down pass from Christian to Vash. This duo never ceases to amaze you under pressure. And they've proven time and time again that they can hang with the best of them. Yes, and in fact, they might just be the best of them. We saw Vash passing to Christian for that last game. This time, another switch up of the roles here. Christian passing to Vesh for that goal. Vesh taking this one to the side, passing it over to Christian. Can they go for another? Another duo play as Christian holds that one, not wanting the momentum to be wasted, keeping it still close to the ground. Barris saving that one out, but that's going to allow for a clear. But Christian has other plans for it, taking it back over to the blue side, and in fact, going to catch it with the side of his rear, stopping it out over to the blue corner. Turtle is not going to find success chasing that one back. Stuck <laughs> kind of in no man's land, but it's going to work out eventually as the ball does make it back over to him. What a touch. Butt. Vish Vesh riding this one on the ceiling. Christian chasing this one back. No boost to work with. He's going to pick it up and ride this one on the ceiling. Hopefully going to beat out Turtle. Yes, he does. Turtle's not going to be able to predict where that one's going to go. Hexy now looking for a chance to strike. Taking it slow. Teammates on the back line. Going to just play for the clear. And Christian passing this one back up, forcing Maryland back. 
to play defense. Two of them stuck over here now. Ferris goes for the shot, but wow. Waiters what waiting his way over to get that save. Vesh now trying to find a way to beat Hexy. He's not going to be able to get the chance to. Christian going to get beat out as well. Ferris finally going to stop this push from finding his way to the net. Vesh just playing frantically as the Saints are struggling to keep their foot on the gas pedal. Maryland doing a great job, but no! As I'm saying it, Ferris finds the pass attempts back and forth from Maryland, intercepts it, turns to a goal. There you go. See, that was just like a nice setup play from Maryland. They're trying to get a clear pass it around, take this back to Orange side, but Bears had other plans for it, sending it straight in. It's a good job from Bears. He just notices the gap in the defense and he takes full fledged control of it. And now the pass down. I thought it was honestly going to be in, yeah. but just barely wide, I believe, from Christian. Vesh trying to see if he can play around with the ball, trying to get past one defender. It won't happen though. Bears off the sidewall trying to play maybe to someone going to actually end up being himself. Christian, he has a pinch now. He's going to be able to use this to get up the field. Wave dash two. He's trying to look for a player, but it's not going to happen. Vesh able to just sit back on defense, get this clear, and now he has to react to Hexy's play. He's going to do so well as he creates the 50, and it's going to force Bears up, and he can maybe find a pass downfield. No Saints are up. No players from Maryland are up, and it's just going to be a ball that very scarily just drops down to absolutely no one. Waiters is going to be championing this offensive, but I don't think his teammates have quite caught the memo as they're being wow, forced on pinch. the back line. Hexy and the pitch off the wall is going to allow Christian to beeline that one in, shooting it straight. 3-1. to Things are looking really good for their Saints tournament run against University of Maryland. Christian, look at that. And since he was going so fast, they tried to get that save, but he just basically bounced it right back in, having great control over his vehicle. 115 on the clock. Saints goal just have to avoid getting two to three goals scored on them. They could even afford one. Just can't be two or three. That's all they need to stay in this one. But Maryland, they are still showing signs of life. Can they make this one work? Well, we will see about that right now. Turtle trying to get a dribble out to the corner. It's going to fall down to Waiters who can have a second touch trying to get it around one Saint defender in Barris. But no, Barris standing strong so far. And right now, St. Clair, they're in a little bit of a thick of it. But the clear out from the backboard from Vesh on the back Backboard defense, nice heads up play from him. Now leaves Barrist in the corner. He has 100, but he has to watch out. The ball over his head. He's going to call Christian's name, and Christian going to be the man to answer Ooh. the phone. He's going to be able to do his job. Finds a demo for his efforts as well. Maybe a second one on the end of the back line. Barrist for the pinch downfield. I can only imagine he's trying to tee up Vesh, but no. A great job of turning around from Vesh. He knew he was beat. Christian with another one. Empty Free net. backboard, but he doesn't have very much boost to work with, and it's going to have to be Turtle to clear out. A drop down play. Vesh fakes to Barrist, but the shot not powerful enough. And Turtle finds the save. It won't be able to get through. Now with 13 seconds left, it's going to be the last push. Can St. Clair hold on? They can't give up a goal. They've done a great job of doing so right there. And with Vesh off the ceiling, can he find a double to Clip Farm? No, not quite. But it will be the end of it right now as it will be St. Clair College Gold to move on as they win this next game over the University of Maryland. Things were looking really bad for them when we first came over, losing that long-ish OT. Then uh, with the longer one, they were able to take it back. Now they are going to be staying in this tournament. You can see the relief on their faces. The joyous smiles of the boys in gold would have been quite a different scene if they weren't able to take it back. And anything for Christian smile, anything. <laughs> I mean, yeah, he's definitely the ray of sunshine on the team. And I got to say that it, like that OT could be the thing that propels them through the entire run that they're on right now in the lower bracket. Having a play happen like that feels so good. And you just, like I say, you, you go on a high. Yeah. You're on cloud nine. And uh, right now, that duo in Christian and Vesh is just finding play after play after play. But I got to say, it also comes off the back foot of Barrist, who's able to let them, let them work. He's staying composed. He's his boost management is something that's not talked about right now, mm -hmm. but that might have been some of the best boost management I've seen all tournament from any of our teams. And it's because of players like him who can stay in the back and clear the ball out safely. Fulfill all the roles that need exactly, to be Exactly, right? Christian and Vesh can make these plays going up the field, ladies and gentlemen, because they know at the same time that Barrist is back there waiting for the clear so he can cut it out, take his turn on offense, and just buy time for one of the two of Christian and Vesh to rotate back to grab boost in order to have multiple exactly. players back to control the midfield. It's all running through Barrist, and it's because of him that these plays between Christian and Vesh are allowed to unfold. 
Yeah, absolutely. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to be seeing our gold team stay alive in this tournament here. And our green team just waiting the losers finals in their own run as well. Everything is going uh, not necessarily perfectly, but it's going as good as it can right now. We're going to be sending things off to a break as we're getting ready for our next matches for either of our teams. The brackets are working out. We're going to figure out what's going on in that end, but you can figure out your snack situation. You can figure out if you want to put on your robe or not and get even cozier than you are already on this Saturday afternoon, but all that matters is that you don't go anywhere because after we come back from a break, it's going to be more nonstop action. We'll see you guys very soon. Welcome back, everybody. I was just looking on the tower below me. We're in game right now. It's going to be Christian starting things off strong off of what I believe was an absolutely disgusting crossbar save that I was watching a little bit earlier before we went in. So, again now, starting off things strong on the side of the Saints is Christian changing up the goal explosion as well. So, it is going to be uh, UANL on the other side of the board. Losers round eight. Best of three. Let's 
get right into it. Christian with a reset. Tries to play the 50 down to Barris. It's going to be Barris now trying to play into the middle. Can he find anybody, pick anybody out? No, not quite. He's going to get picked off. Vesh now trying to force another touch to the middle, but Christian not able to be the shooter to be found. The demo from Vesh doing a good job of just clearing out the back line, and St. Clair can work on this counterattack yet again. Yes, and just seeing what we're looking at so far, the Saints obviously getting that goal so early on. Momentum-based team, momentum-based game. The mental is back. The Saints are feeling good about themselves after they came back. Bump. But that might be the uh, insecurity hit that they needed to take to get them grounded and remind them that they just have to keep fighting. It's only going to get harder as each game progresses. No game is free here, especially in the loser side. These teams are all so hungry for their chance of success making it to day two. I mean, that bump from Deviza is absolutely criminal on Bears. It completely starts that play off and is the reason why that's even allowed to happen. So a great job right there from UANL. And now, St. Clair, let's see what you got in pocket to respond. It's going to be Vesh playing the low 50. A good thing that I want to see a little bit more from the Saints roster, low 50s that will end up turning into progression downfield, which then in turn go into shots. So, it's something good that I think a lot of players need to do more of. Christian, with a flip into the ball, trying to see if he can maybe find a 50 or a dunk. He's going to be able to have the beat. Barris not quite finding Vest Shooter, just barely offline. And now Deviso with a clear of his own, working down the side of the Saints. It's going to be cleared back out by Christian. Now, Choppa, able to find the 50, has the back wall. The man in the middle. It's Ooh. going to be Azale with the goal. A great one on the side of of UANL and they go up in lead 2-1. Yeah, you UANL are doing a great job of fighting back against that early game aggression coming out from the Saints. Right now, uh, <laughs> if I was on the Saints side, I would just kind of uh, take a deep breath and fight a little bit harder, get more demos. They were having a lot of success in that last series when they were fighting against getting those bumps, those physical plays. I mentioned before the spiritual plays are the ones that they might be needing, but I think this one's where you want to get more physical, looking at how UANL are playing i think they would do well for that but right now they just have to stay alive themselves as they're getting demoed while they're trying to go for these more critical plays of shots going beaming shot yeah thankfully christian's going to be there he's like a mirror for these lasers refracting them and sending them where we want them to go and he's going to try to get that clear cut it back but unfortunately it's going to be a little too fast for him christian's going to get that tip sending it towards the net but it's going to get saved out by Deviza vesh on the ceiling wanting to beam it straight down hit shot double. barris oh, on no. Not gonna go. Christian trying to get that tip back in, but now it's a chaos. Everybody's scrambling to get this ball going where they all want it to go according to their own agendas. And Barris is taking this back over to Orange side. It's going to be intercepted once again by Deviza trying to just get this back up. But Vesh, Christian, and Barris, they have to make sure that anything they do, they're 100% certain on it. Right. I mean, honestly, this is looking a little bit scary, but it shouldn't be any problem for Christian. He's back with boost, with composure. He's able to find the clear out. Vesh, the man to advance it downfield, trying to run interference, but now backs out. He's called off his line, and he's going to be able to keep this one in the corner. Barris, the next man up probably, but the pass can't come quite down from Vesh. Vesh, Azael able to find the save, has the corner as well. Going to steal the boost, and that's a huge boost steal on the side of UANL. It fuels their attack to keep going off the ceiling. It's going to be Vesh, has to force with zero. Barris, he's going to get beat over the top of from Deviza, and now with Vesh in net with zero, it's going to drop right back down. But it should have been probably a goal. And now a double on the other side. Christian with the 50. And it's a play that goes all the way of the Saints as they go laughing all the way to the bank on what should have been a goal in their own in their own net, honestly. That was an exciting one. That was a beautiful play. But it was one of those shots where I'm like, I can't even like get that pump for it. Because it's just like, that's just like... That's just what he does. Like, I saw that coming. Christian had that ball. He was ready for it. And then 10 seconds before that goal came out, it already happened in my head. Great yeah. play from Christian. He knows exactly how he wants to play his offense. And Vesh looking to recapture that same magic. Christian and he are still playing so aggressively. Barris collecting all the boosts on the sides, making it very difficult for UANL to fight back and try to make their defense as strong as possible. Still, they're going to have to do something to prevent the Saints from walking all over them. It's 2-2. Two one minute left, luckily, likely to go to an overtime once again.
Right, I mean, overtime, the name of the game so far for the Saints gold roster. They've been put into quite a few of them as of lately. So, you know, anything, any slowing down, it could mean that it's just fatigue of those chances yeah. that have been created. That's with a double demo in his own right right now. Sends UANL backpacking. They're going to have to be on their own end defensively. 33 boosts wow. their names. Christian with another demo refer returning to form as we saw him before. Barris on the corner. Vesh going to have to be the one to get called off. Now calls off Barris. Tries to get the, another pass into the midfield for Christian. In, but it won't happen. Demo from Azael. He's able to try to find Barrist. And now with the net being a little more open than you would want if you're a Saints fan, it's going to have to be the Saints to tighten up the bootstraps and lock in on defense. I like seeing the Saints net open because it usually means they have some next level offensive play that I am not able to predict or see coming at all. And right now it seems that might be happening as Vesh intercepting this cut play, a lob over from mid to blue. Still going to find his way over there with two seconds on the clock. Next time the ball hits the ground we're going to overtime and that's going to be right now both of these teams fighting for their tournament life it's still game one thankfully they have a little bit of wiggle room but you obviously don't want that stress of game one looming over you if your opponent's managing to take it chapa still going to be trying to fight for a chance to keep this one going towards blue side uh, Sale is still also keeping that pressure going. A bit of a bump situation coming out on the Saints. Uh, Christian and uh, Barris are going to find an interaction, but still a sale on the ceiling. Christian riding that one as it hits the ceiling and goes towards the ground. Going to be a beam, but it's going to get stopped out. But Barris is going to be the one that finds the rebound, and it's going to be another one for the Saints in this series. 3-2, to two, one game up against UANL. Can they make game two even more magical? I mean, I hope so. It's a great heads-up play there by Christian. He finds the bump on the defender, and that's all that Barris needs in order to slot that last one in. So, a great job there from the Saints. And I gotta say, ever since that overtime, I know sometimes plays look a little bit ropey here and there, mm -hmm. but they're able to find the back of the net when it really matters most. And I think that really has to come down to the fact that they're just composed in the midfield. I'm seeing it right now. They're getting good bumps. They're getting good boost deals. If it just even comes down to 12 pads, sometimes that can be the thing that makes or breaks a counterattack. So, again, they're doing a good job of not getting their big pads stolen and I think it's really helping them in the transition. They're able to send a guy back into the back line and enforce, or whether it's Barris or Christian right now, they're kind of mixing the roll up a little bit between the two, who are able to clear out the back line, make Vesh uh, have the room to be able to make a play down to one of the two of them. And right now, we've been seeing that for the past two series. Hopefully, it continues as St. Clair gets into Game 2 up against UNL. Christian was walking that ball for a second there, but it's off the lead going to have to try to wrangle control and get it back before animal control comes through and takes it to the pound. But with 4.30 on the clock, there's a lot of time to chase this ball and get control of it, tame it from the wild, uncontrollable beast that it is to a kitten of sorts. But now Barris doing a good job as well. That's chasing this towards the orange side. They're finding the success off the cross post. No follow-up shot necessarily, but they're at least going to maintain the pressure. Never mind, going to slip its weight into blue as they both missed the chance to cut that clear and Vesh is going to hit that one as he rides the wall predicting where he's going to go exactly and he's also going to get a nice Rocket League slide tackle stealing the ball perfectly and he hit the ground running as well Christian going to hit the ball on the rooftop stopping on the momentum keeping it up in orange side could have been a great shot if that one wasn't cut out but uh, UANL doing such a good job of stopping all the pressure that the Saints are putting up but can they do it right now? Barris getting that perfectly set up for Vesh go. to go for the shot just one man in the net and it looked like he didn't have much boost to work with either just a tough situation and uh saints are going to make the most of it and again that's all because of the fact that vesh gets a beat on the original guy and allows Barris to go up on the sidewall and just do the work he's able to find a beat on the center and he just calls vesh's name vesh is there yeah i'm on full tank of boost i'm good at boost <laughs> management and it, it's able to pay off on the other side for the saints now christian half flipping has to try to just stay safe he has 72 boost to his name but he has to get ready for the counter it's actually going to be a little bit of a double commit. Christian just trying to get back down just so we can help Barris in this clear. Barris over one, under the next. He's going to be able to chase it into the corner, but a great job on the flip cancel by Divisa to get it on the clear. And now, with a carry, able to try to get the center out. Vesh says no, and he's going to be able to clear for now. Christian on the sidewall. Just gets beat out, though, by Azale. And now, Divisa double. Can he call his name? No, not quite. Christian there with the backboard defense, an essential part of any defender's game if they want to stay in the series. Yeah, and staying in the series is all you can do on the side of UANL. Right now, they're not even worried about winning it. They just have to survive this game, too, if they want
one even a chance of staying in it. 250 with one on the board for the Saints. They are looking a little bit shaken inside of UAL. We saw that they were looking very explosive, very fiery, getting a lot of demos, a lot of bumps, physical play coming through. But now Christian completely uncontested on the orange side of the field. Where did all of that go? Hey man, you know what? Here's the thing. The dive comes in from two players from UANL. It was Deviza and I believe the player, whoever wasn't demoed, the back line gets cleared out completely. Yeah. And Christian's just able to find the reset free as can be. He won't miss chances like that. And again, it's because of a double dive that happened from UANL. It was a player who was just sneaking a little too far up on the left side. They're able to find that big pad, but what's the point if you can't get back for the save? Now the ground double from Deviza trying to make it happen, but it won't come into fruition. The Saints on another counter attack. Vesh trying to run interference, but a play is going to get broken up on the side of Christian. Barris trying to keep the ball in hot water for Tigres UANL. And now Barris trying to rotate back. He's actually going to cut rotation though and try to dive in. That might be a little bit of an errant mistake, but Christian's going to make sure that he can just stay back, keep the 35 in the tank, get the save, get the big pad, and now work on another pass. Has a man down low. It's going to be Barris. Ops to go high. Has a force to beat. And now he's going to oh. have the double down to oh. Vesh who stays composed. However, Chapel was coming back down the back side of the net and he stayed even more composed, able to find a quick save of his own. The, now the ceiling pinch, offering another shot to Barrist, but it's not going to drop. A great job so far from UANL to keep this ship afloat. However, the Saints are definitely knocking on the door. That was a nice three-man save coming up from UANL just a bit ago, and it was completely necessary. The Saints pressure was mounting so much. It's so much you can do. Not a lot, especially when you have no boost. Visa losing all the gusts of wind, keeping their sails floating forward towards blue side. 120, Saints looking 2-0. Devisa trying to make a difference there, but not going to be able to finalize that. A demo coming up from Barris as well. Just going to alleviate any of the pressure that UNL was hoping to put on the Saints. And as Barris is taking that to the ground, it's going to be an opportunity to Devisa to catch that one, take it to Blue Christian with full boost and a lot of confidence and a nice head of hair as well. Going to be able to chase them down, get them out of the corner. Vesh looking to turn this into a goal opportunity as he's dribbling this through the skies. It's going to hit the ground and turn into a UANL possession. Barris is going to try to stop that possession from turning into a goal with 45 seconds on the clock. They just have to maintain that a little bit better, a little bit longer. Vesh taking this up to the corner. It's going to ride the wall. A very common scene. But what we haven't seen so far from either of these teams is one of those successful plays where they just beam it straight down with a two-man play. That's a lie. We've seen Christian and Vesh do that at least twice. I just wanted to remind everybody <laughs> how good these two are. And there we go! Christian cementing it. Three minutes, or t three goals with 22 seconds left. UANL, they they are not looking to be in a good position, and dare I say, I believe this is just going to be the game. Well, again, it's just Barris who's able to find two UANL defenders on the backboard, and both of them commit. So he's just going to place it soft, using the underside of his car to get the softer touch. They both weren't expecting it. Clears down to Christian, and both defenders not able to get back in time. Ground pinch down to Vest just to try to see if he can clear the ball. Back pass, and no, it's not going to happen. It's going to stay in the end of St. Clair, but up three with eight seconds left. This one is nigh impossible, and I'm going to go ahead and say it is now as the clock strikes one very soon. I swear to God. <laughs> no, there's only two seconds left. I'm going to stay strong. I'm sticking by my word. I don't care. I'm not caster cursing it. This is definitely going to be a St. Clair win. And even if a kickoff goal happens, it's they not going to happen second. again. They just wouldn't have I'm, to let it touch nope, the ground. I'm doing it right now. It's not impossible. I'm doing it right now. The fake kickoff into the 50. It's going to go the way of now UANL. But now it will be impossible, just as I stated, because I definitely will not caster curse them again. <laughs> It will be St. Clair Gold moving and you on. You are very adamant about not caster cursing them. I respect that. I need to make my point clear. Look, listen, every caster has their times where they end up doing it, but sometimes you got to put your foot down. You got to just stand tell against them. the universe. Look, I know. I'm not dealing with this today. No, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> no more curses, and I think the Saints might have broken whichever curse was on their shoulders throughout the today, and it looks like they are some alleviated individuals looking nice, restful, and calm, and again, smiling, happy once again. They were really kind of going through it in that last matchup, but ever since then, it's been one whole match, and they seem like a completely different team. Ladies and gentlemen, their tournament running continues, and our day continues as we follow them through it. We're going to send things off to a quick break while we get ready for whatever match lies ahead don't go anywhere the run of dreams still continues we'll see you guys very soon
Black Saints Nation as we got St. Clair Gold going up against Ole Miss in the losers round nine. Sea Money, Lunar, and Stealth, three people that I am familiar with name-wise, and although a lot of you guys should be, they're very good in the CRL in their past seasons. We'll see how they stack up right now up against our gold team. It's going to be Stealth with an attempt on a Psycho, but it's not going to go the way uh, that he wants. However, Lunar is going to be able to have the catch with a reset, and he's going to still play it into the Saints' defense. Christian with the clear, trying to find Barris down low. He's going to be able to do just that. I thought at least maybe a team pinch happening, but no, Barris able to not be found. Besh now with a carry. Slow has to try to play it down to one of his teammates, but it's going to be a great job by C Money to, ca to catch it and to be able to work back into the offense. Yeah, now the offense is going to be lying on the Saints' side. As Christian, that looked like almost like a Tony Hawk, like underground skate trick he just did, riding that ball from the corner into the center. It's going to get intercepted, however, unfortunately. Would have been beautiful otherwise. Vash getting a demo. Going to be a perfect opportunity, unfortunately. Barris not going to be able to stitch that one in. Lunar and the rest of Ole Miss chasing the Saints, desperately trying to prevent them from getting a goal. But it's not going to be that easy as Barris going to get this clear. Actually, no, this can get beat now. Stealth chasing was straight forward. It was right at the center. Nobody was actually there to capitalize off of that, though. That could have been devastating for the Saints. Could have been a straight beam shot in. But now we're going to have to focus on the present, not in the past. Hopefully the Saints are going to be able to turn this into a good future if Christian's going to keep these saves up. Thankfully, the Saints still have three minutes to get one goal. Ole Miss is going to be vying for the same kind of luck. Three minutes left. Neither team found anything, but it looks like in a game like this, that can change at any second. Absolutely, Ken. And as Lunar tries to play for C-Money off the backboard, it's going to have to be Christian and Desh on defense. However, with C-Money grabbing that demo, Christian on zero, he will be back with 33. He can maybe sit on backboard and wait in case Barris gets beat over the top. Nice no, Desh going to be able to get his number called. A quick shot on net, but it's not going to be anything of C-Money uh, that C-Money can't control. He's actually going to get demoed, though, from Vesh for his efforts. Barris with low boost, going to have to just let C-Money take it off the backboard. And it's kind of the same thing right now. C-Money's doing a great job of controlling the defense. Even as St. Clair keeps aggressing, they're finding these shots with people that just simply have a low boost. They're not able to put any power behind them. And because of that, it's just going to be Ole Miss who can sit back, clear with full tanks, and hopefully find a good counterattack. Christian is going to be leading that counterattack into that corner. Vesh is going to bounce it off the crossbar and off of his own. How did that even happen? What are the physics in this game? That looked impossible. Please replay. Enlighten me. <laughs> Christian's going to send off the corner and then Vesh bounce it off the cross post into himself and for the shot. That happened so fast. It was genuinely visually confusing. No, I mean, just quick aerial up into a double. I mean, for Vesh, it's just a routine play, something that should be scored. And when you give Vesh an opportunity with a free backboard, he's surely not going to miss it. Stealth now trying to create an opportunity of his own. Bounced it off the corner, but it's a great play from Barrist off the ceiling. He has the challenge now. And now Lunar with a reset, trying to get around one. Can't do quite that. See money able to find the next. Can he try to find Stealth down in the middle? No, not quite. And it will be Vesh to clear out. However, Stealth able to just cut rotation. And now that leaves Lunar up for a solo play. Has a reset he's probably going to try to get. But he instead tries to go for the 50. Smart man as it clears up Stealth for a shot. Not enough power, though, and Vesh gets a save. A save that could turn into a potential goal here. If they get one more, yes, a good save from Barris. Going to keep them in their lead that they fought so hard for. And another shot. Not going to find its mark, though. Not even going to need a save as it just hit the post. C Money going to stop a nice shot coming out from Christian. And Christian going to be kind of lashing out, finding two demos after that one. But C Money all on its own is going to be able to save that ball, send it back over to Orange side, and kind of reset the situation. It's going to cost all its boost, however. Not going to be able to find much in the meantime. Barris, Vesh, and Christian all on blue side right now. Christian's going back. Vesh and Barris playing up here. In fact, now it's just Vesh up here. Christian's going to be swashing out with Barris, maintaining the pressure. Neither of them have boost. It's time for them to kind of retreat, recoup. Barris is going to lead the charge while the teammates kind of re-evaluate how they want to make that offensive play without boost. The answer is they don't, so they have to come back in after they're ready, drink some water. Now, Saints with 39 seconds left. They have the goal advantage. They just have to at the very least make sure they don't get scored on, but obviously they want to get one more to really guarantee the victory here. But Stealth 
taking that straight from the center. Not going to get that much further as the Saints have their defense ready to go. Vesh now meeting this one mid-air stealth, kind of nullifying that push. Lunar in the corner. Vesh not going to bother jumping up, just going to chase, go for the boost. Christian's going to leave that defense himself and go for one more shot. It's not going to go their way. Ten seconds left. Looks like the Saints might have found this game. One against Ole Miss, keeping, once again, one step ahead of their opponents continually. And uh, this is a momentum that the team definitely needed from their struggles earlier on today. I was going to say, hold your horses just for a sec, but never mind, that will be the kill. I thought for a second there, with the demo going out and Stealth being able to beat one over the top, that a potential solo play or a pass down could happen. But it was a good job on the backboard defense by the Saints defender, able to ground it and alleviate the pressure. 1-0 is your final score. And St. Clair, got to say, ever since that overtime, they haven't slowed down. Not at all. I mean, overtime really is a kind of a wake-up call, right? You look at it and you're like, damn, I could... I could lose <laughs> at any given second and my tournament's over. They had that brink of despair moment twice, in fact three or four times today. So if they are working by, hey, potentially Dragon Ball Z rules, anytime you get close to death, you just come back way stronger with Christian three seconds in finding a goal and just cementing themselves with a firm advantage for the rest of the series. Ready to make a good one off the kickoff. That's just going to build momentum. And right now, it's going to be Old Miss staring down the barrel of a potential exit. A little bit earlier, honestly, than I would have imagined for Old Miss's liking. So we'll see how they deal with it. St. Clair off the sidewall. It's Barrist. Has a beat in the man. Using the flip to just try to get past. Can he find a person in the middle? No, not quite. It's going to be Vesh playing smart, sitting back. Christian with a double demo of his own. Turning back into the demon that we saw from him two series ago. Always getting the demolitions, always finding the bumps. Vesh with another one too. Says, hey, why not? Let's just join in. Let's all get demos. Let's all open up the field wow. and let's all start scoring as Vesh and Christian make the play happen with an assist from Christian and yet another demo on the back foot. All right, Barris, your turn for a goal. We've had our fun. You know, let's get everybody a team goal here. Uh, just why not make this 3-0 before we even hit one minute into this game and just really make a statement that you wanted to make all day that you are a top team and you deserve to be going into this day two. Right now, unfortunately, you have to prove it through your victories, but the Saints are kind of making it look easy breezy. Speaking a little too soon, I hope not, but just based off of what we're seeing right now, it seems to be at the very least what they're thinking just based off their playing. We saw before with the green team, you can see that they were playing panic. Right now, I can see that the gold team is playing confident with another goal like that. Hey, Bears did get his one. Hey, look, he called it out. Call the man's name, he will answer. Bears with off of the back of a before, demo again. Before. Christian with another pass. I mean, it's just absolutely beautiful Rocket League that we're seeing from them right now. They look so in control in the midfield. They're not even giving up a single low 50 to Ole Miss to try to even time burn to get another person on their side with boost so they can challenge and hopefully set up a counterattack. It's been stuff like that that they've just been shutting down. It's amazing to see out of St. Clair. Not something that, you know, again, from this gold roster, we're used to seeing, we're used to seeing them usually work off the back foot very much like this right now as Barris is able to find a save. What the difference maker is is how are they going to be able to come back, though, and return to their scoring ways? Up 3-0, though, they can elect to just kind of hold and time burn. However, Ole Miss is not a team I'd want to be doing that up against. Christian gets another save for his liking. See money with another recenter. It should fall down to Stealth, and that's exactly why you got to treat these guys with the utmost respect. Stealth able to find the pass from See money It's a great job from Ole Miss to get situated, to start stealing the boost that St. Clair's been using for these counterattacks and they're gonna be able to set up and get themselves back on the scoreboard. That one goal represents a lot uh, for this series. Ole Miss, that one point of defiance goes to show that they do not want to be trifled with. They don't want to get bullied around in this series, and the Saints have to worry. They've been in a situation where they had a two-goal advantage, and then, boom, next thing you know, they're down one point. It's not hard to do. Well, it's definitely hard to do, but it can happen is the most important thing to walk away with. There were three minutes left on the board, Barris, a perfect save. He's definitely filling all the gaps in the team that need to be filled while Zesh and
and Christian fill all the gaps in Ole Miss's side that needs to be filled, namely the giant gap between the left post and right post of their net. And uh, they're trying to fill that full of that big, great ball. Vesh riding the wall, trying to find a chance. He didn't get that touch, and now it's going to get sent back to orange side. Christian going to meet it and walk with it back over to that post, to the net. It's going to get stolen away from him. Somebody help him. Barris is going to be the man to step up for the job. South is, however, going to intercept Christian. Going to get beat out there. Stealth is going to knock that one straight down into the no into Lunar, who launches that into the net. Two, three, one, two minutes, 20 seconds on the clock now, Patrick. As every second goes on, Ole Miss's revenge nears ever closer. Yeah, I mean, Ole Miss, again, a team that has done good in CRL in the past, uh, a team that, through the names alone, you can tell they they are able to climb back into games very much like this one if you give them the time and space to allow for attacks. C-Money now, 1v1 against Vesh, has the flick, going to opt to try to go for the bump instead, trying to play it to Christian. Christian going to get demoed by C-Money, an open lane. Barris has to try to force to the corner, and now he's going to get a demo of his own. A good job there because it frees up Vesh. One touch, a lot of boost in the tank, has maybe a lot of a little bit of a touch in mind. I thought he was going to try to go for a reset, but he has to force for a quick touch down to the force. However, now Lunar with a save on the back <laughs> foot. It is going to be Vesh again. He is so aggressive right now, but I'm loving what I'm seeing out of him. It just fuels the St. Clair attack. It's almost as if he's regaining the midfield control again, as he was a couple minutes ago. He has another carry now, and he's going to have to force Lunar on no boost to try to force out to Stealth. And again, St. Clair are back, but they have a lot of boost in the tank. They can make this work. Making it work is one thing, but making it work for you is another. They want to make this ball work for them. The Saints are going to offer it a contract to sit and fill Ole Miss's goal. It's going to decline the offer. And in fact, consider one from Ole Miss. Fortunately, they're going to block that contract from being signed. And now we're back to one minute territory where both of these teams are looking and very attentive of the fact that it's all going to come down to this minute, whether or not Saints are going to be able to confidently make Make it through the rest of their run right now. It's looking more and more likely as Vesh gets that perfect shot from the side, bounces it off of the top post, and then launches it once again. We've seen him do it before, and it never gets any less interesting to witness. I mean, Vesh is just a double demon. He always hits those. I mean, he just the ability that he has to read shots off the back wall when he creates them himself is second to none. A lot of these players do have that ability, but they don't quite find the opportunities or create them as much as Vesh does. That's what I find so impressive about his game. I hope he can continue to keep it up for the rest of the series. 38 seconds, Christian with a carry. Does he have the beat? Yes, he does, but it's just off the bar, and he can't force it in. Zero boost. He's going to try to force a beat, and no, Stealth is just going to be playing behind his teammate. He's going to be able to keep this on control. However, Bears dribbling through the entire team is going to say, screw that. I'm just going to take this myself. Zero boost as well on Barris, but it doesn't matter. The dash off the wall, he's going to be able to maintain the speed. Has the flick to pop up to Vesh. <laughs> and Vesh's name gets called once again. Such a brutal force in the offense. And he's done it time and time again so far today. He is the main suspect. Anytime a goal is scored, you're pointing at Vesh, but today we're going to be pointing at Barris. He gets one right off of the kickoff, and it seems like the game is done. They're calling GG's already with 18 on the clock for goal. Lunar actually That's left. It. Yeah, I didn't want to. Play. I was gonna say, I think they, I think they just straight up for, they can't forfeit, so. They're just, they know they're out of the tournament, so that's going to be it. So, St. Clair Saints gold, eliminating Ole Miss. It's going to be GG's. I mean, there's really no point. I'm assuming they're just going to let this clock run out. Maybe BM, maybe get a little bit of a demo on Stealth. I don't know. What would be incredible is if Stealth just solo plays on the entire team right yeah, now. But with zero up. boost, that will most likely not happen. Most that's going to be all she wrote. The ball will touch the ground. Maybe they'll give a little consolation goal to Stealth as he has carry of his own. No, not quite. Goes not up the even. crossbar. And that is going to be it. Ground sure to come. Guys, why are we holding this ball up in the air? We have another series, please. I'm losing my voice. Please, just let it drop. I, I know why. It's because Brandon's standing behind them. I can see it from here. I think he's oh, trying okay. to amuse him a little bit. <laughs> and there they go with the goal. He, he looks amused thoroughly. So, in fact, even some of the, uh, the green boys are there cheering them on. Proud of the progress that this team is making. Fighting their way through the loser side. It's no easy feat. This team has been doing such a good job of, you know, coming back from the brink and you would be 
I wouldn't blame someone for thinking this is live just based off of the fact of how locked in Christian can get. But yeah, that was just a little bit of a camera bug there. The team is celebrating for sure. They are joyfully uh, taking in the victories as they come. And they are one step closer to the losers finals, which means that they would have a chance to fight for their way to day two. But I believe they still have one or two more matches away from losers finals. So ladies and gentlemen, as that next match is waiting for us, we will wait with you through a break, but don't go anywhere. As soon as that break is done, that next match will be waiting for you. So don't go anywhere. We'll see you guys very soon.
Welcome back, everybody. We're back in the Losers semifinals as St. Clair goes up against St. Edwards University. It's already been Vesh to put in a kickoff goal. Saw it on the tablet below. So just catching everybody up to speed, I'm Patrick Smoke Chambers, joined by Daniel Betterson McGee. One and only. And here we are back against St. Edwards University, the players that sent us to the Losers in the first place. Saints are already yeah. back with a vengeance, getting the first point in this series. Patrick, I think, uh, what do you think their odds are to get revenge and advance to the Losers final? Well, I think they're feeling good. I think there's definitely a lot of note-taking going on mentally uh, based off of how they performed last series, kind of looking at maybe if they can find any holes or gaps in the defense that they couldn't expose last time. So again, it is a rematch. They have an idea of how these guys play. It's going to be interesting to see what the Saints do to act on. And it's going to be interesting to see how St. Edwards plays if they change it up, if they stick to the same tried-and-true formula that they had the first time. Either way, it's going to revolve around Drew apparently going for a solo play, tries to find the ground pinch, but it's going to be 50 out. Vesh on the near wall is going to have to try to find two 50s, finds one, lets the other one go by him, drop down pass or lofted pass more, I should say, to absolutely no one, though, as no shooter was around for St. Edwards University. Christian with a little bit of an awkward clear off the back wall with five boosts. It's looking a little bit dire right now in the Saints' back end, but they're surviving for now. Yeah, survival is what it's all about right now. The Saints have one point already, and of course you want to try to widen that gap further, but they have to just play with that fact in mind that they really don't have to do anything right now. They just have to not get scored on. But I think they're going to go above and beyond Vesh trying to get that goal passing to himself off the crossbar. But was launched a little too high there and his teammates weren't there in time to get that shot going. Plus demos making it even more difficult. Christian lobbing that back towards the center. Dino going to intercept. Blue corner. It's going to be a fight, but Barris is going to win it out. Christian meeting that in the skies. Well, he's going to intercept that from hitting the crossbow. Would have been a perfect center otherwise. Vesh is also demoed. Their offense is severely crippled as a result. Saints waiting and biding their time for another opportunity to strike while St. Edwards trying to mount their own offense in the meantime. Yeah, and again right now, the Saints, 2.30 left. they got to be careful on defense. They've been doing a good job of it. I really like what I've seen so far out of Barris. That's not a miss that you want to have happen. 
from Vesh, but it's okay. Barris is going to play it down to the back corner for Christian. Shots coming through, though, as you do see the Saints a little bit running low on boost. They are able to manage to find their back pads now, and they can start kind of set their feet on this counterattack. It's going to be Christian in the middle looking for a man. It's going to be Vesh, but he ends up having to pop it high as a result. Doesn't want to take the 50, then he knows he'd probably lose in that engagement and set up a counterattack on the other end. Yeah, counterattacks are basically everything in this game. Both of these teams are playing such solid defense that the offense you're going to get is basically just coming off of the failed offense of your opponents. That's going to be the biggest opening I think both of these teams are going to be working with in this series, considering the fact that we only have one goal on the board and it's already basically 140 in. And Christian meeting this one in the skies. This could actually be the turning point of the series as Vesh goes to shoot that one in. Well, wow. kind of tripping up on the tires there, but recovered fast enough to get the save. Going to demo Vesh while also advancing over to blue side while Barris going to do his duty, scoop this ball out of danger's way. Drew is going to get the save. Christian going to use his momentum to stop the ball in its place. Vesh getting demoed again. They're bullying him. They recognize him as a very strong threat, core part of the Saints offense, like I just said a bit ago. But Christian, he is a one-man army when he needs to be. He's going to start launching it, but they aren't going to stop him from getting too much further. And it was a great job on Christian Awkward, so he just repositions, uses the wave dash to just find the momentum that he can use to carry the ball downfield. And even though on paper, or at least from your eyes, it doesn't look like a huge play, it allows St. Clair to at least have time. Right now, that is something that they don't have as they're trying to really scramble on the defensive end. Vesh with a goal line save, clears it up to Christian. And right now, let's see what Christian can do. Demo on the side, does he have a man in the middle? It's gonna be Vesh with a cut. Over nice. one, can he play over the 50? Yes, he can. Completely evades the defender. And I wanna take another look at this one. Yeah, taking a look at this beauty over here. Vesh just rolling that over the top. Black smoke cements it 2 0 well right now. St. Edwards University, I don't think they're going to have enough time to find the answer here. Well, 39 seconds left. We have seen miracles happen before, and uh, sometimes in this tournament, we've seen teams come back with little time remaining. Again, However, usually. yeah, yeah. However, St. Edwards is really going to have to start sending full house, and that's simply not going to work when you got to deal with a counterattack first. Vesh, just a high shot, trying to force a defender up high to force the ball up high. It burns time in the end. So it's a great play there by Vesh to just waste away a couple of seconds, crucial, when we're talking about a 10 second mark coming up. Yeah, and with 10 seconds going, this game is 99.9%. .9%. Now it is 100% going the way of the Saints. And in wow, fact, 3,000% going the way of the Saints. Now with three seconds left, three points couldn't be possible, even if you tried your damnedest. Saints winning game one. This must be a huge confidence booster to go one game up 3-0 against the team that just sent you to losers all those years ago, which feels like years ago at this point, but realistically it's maybe an hour or two. And uh, Saints rushing into game two, feeling confident. Yeah, I mean, absolutely brilliant play. I, I know it wasn't the most, you know, obviously you, you think, oh, where's the hype for a drop down pass? I mean, they were, the game was already decided, right? So it was a great job from St. Clair in all. The score will go down as 3-0, but we all knew when it was over truly with that 2-0 lead, that safety net. So a great job there from St. Clair. They're playing great, and they're just keeping momentum going. These guys were knocked down into the lower bracket, and they kind of looked a little bit defeated. They got into an overtime uh, that lasted a little over four minutes, and it ended in probably one of the most mechanical passes I've ever seen Vesh pull off uh, to Christian. And since that momentum booster, since that hype build, they just haven't slowed down. Mm -hmm. They've looked so more, much more composed. Barris looks very comfortable on the back line. Vesh looks just incredible, and he's really always there when they need a shooter. And I love how Christian's able to just control the midfield. Like I said, not letting himself get awkward, even in awkward positions, such as that time where he was facing sideways to the ball. Yep. It's just simple. He's not panicking. Back up, take your wave dash, continue the carry, force for a teammate. It's a good job from Christian and Saints as a whole, and they're just continuing to roll here. What I think is working so well for the Saints team right now is that Christian and Barris are able to just flexibly take position yep. of each other. Obviously, Barris has been playing backline most of the time, but it really is Christian and he's switching between mid. Vesh, obviously, playing defense very well whenever necessary, but it is mostly these two stepping up between the defense and midfield, setting up with Vesh to go for these opportunities. Vesh and Christian, we've talked it to death how good of an offensive duo these two are. Obviously, again, Barris making that all possible, but here it is. Saints looking for the ultimate retribution. Again. 
against the team that sent them down to losers as we get into game two here. It could be all of it on the line. Going to the losers finals, the chance to make it to day two. They fought so long, all day long, for this opportunity to make it. And if we <laughs> lose here, it'd be absolutely devastating. I mean, Vesh, I'm not gonna lie, you're gonna pay for that one. You try to go for a Cookser pinch. It did happen earlier in this tournament, but you have a lot of boost here. You don't necessarily have to play like that if you have Barrist on your back as well. Maybe the call was just made. Maybe it was because he didn't have time and he had to try to clear quick. But regardless, it's going to be an errand play by St. Clair as a whole, and it's going to cost them. They go down now, 1-0. 4.30, so lots of time remaining. We'll see how they handle the pressure. Vesh not able to find anything on the offense. Going to leave it to Christian, trying to see if he can challenge now on the side of Vesh. Christian with a flip. Does he have the double? No, oh. opts to drop it down to Vesh instead. Maybe he didn't get the reset, but even then, a really threatening play from St. Clair, and they're going to wish they had that one back. Yeah, that, chances like that don't come very often, and to tie up the series would have been perfect for the Saints. They're just going to have to do it the old-fashioned way. They're going to have to work for it, just like anyone else was a Christian. Wow. Right in front of the net, Barris also here to get the assist. That could have been very dangerous if there were any depots or bump plays made on the side of St. Edwards University. As we're back over to Orange, Barris trying to get the steal, and he's going to have some success. Most likely going to get met mid-air here, and that's going to be well sniping that out back to blue side. Vesh trying to bring it back. He's going to have a bit of a confrontation with Well, and we're going to see Dino steal that out from under him. But Christian's going to take the initiative to fly this one out with express delivery over to Orange side, and it almost rolls its way in. Fortunately, St. Edward's University able to stop it in its tracks. Vesh cutting the clear, and uh, we're going to be seeing them go back towards the offensive pressure. The Saints, three men all in the corner. Can they make something work here? Ryan the ceiling. That, oh, Barris almost got that one with a nice pinch shot, but it's going to get stopped out. Back to Blue Saints already in defensive formation. These guys are playing at 100, but they're dying to just get at least one point on the table. Right, I mean, they got three minutes to do so, but they just got to be careful. I noticed that they were at least taking the time to let Vesh get back and play his third man in case the ground pinch from Barris didn't come through. So it was a good job there. But again, as you mentioned, all three of them were stuck in a corner. If anyone on St. Edwards gets a little bit of a lucky clear there, you could be looking at a counterattack. Speaking of one, here it comes, and it's going to be off the air dribble. The pass from Well down to Dino, who puts an absolute laser through the middle. Here's where things are going to be a little bit scary for the Saints. They had a very successful game one, but now it's looking like they are on the back foot in this game to St. Edwards University. Maybe they just had to remember who they were playing against. They beat them before, they can beat them again. Just have to tell themselves enough times and maybe the tenth time was the charm to say it to themselves. And it looks like they are looking a lot more like their former selves that sent us down to the in the first place. Can the Saints figure this one out here before it's too late? Can they even tie this one out? Might even just be going to a game three at this rate, but Christian with the demo. Barris the bump. Forward. Barris with the assist. Vesh trying to oh. finish it, but not going to find his way to the back. Drew with the rest of St. Edwards University. Defense just way too tight. Right, I mean, you know what? On the side of St. Edwards, they are technically playing for their tournament lives. They have to hold this two-goal lead. If they lose this, this could be it for their run. St. Clair, same thing. Regardless, if this goes to a game three, both teams will be on their tournament lives. So we got to get up and get loud. Vesh off the back wall. Does he have the double? No, not quite. Great job on the defense from St. Edwards. And they retreat with a goal not given up just yet. Clean sheet to come. Yeah, Barris is just doing a great job of chasing this ball around. And another double Demo. We're seeing a lot of them, but at least Wells is going to find the single trade with Barris. It's going to be solo Vesh for a while, but the best are back now, trying to just recoup the boost that they lost in their lives before. Dino trying to chase this one, not going to get the tip. Vesh finding the shot to get one more on the board. Saints 1 to 2 with St. Edwards University with 124 left. Each second matters infinitely more than the previous. They just have to make this one happen. And it's just a bad read by Dino. He just simply can't get the touch he needs. And then Christian also bumps the goalie near post. It's a perfect play from Christian there, uh, supplying the pass and getting the bump, the physicality coming through. It's a great job from St. Clair. They're right back in this. And all of a sudden, it feels like the pressure as of late is on St. Edwards University. So right now, let's see what they can do. Barrist, a lofting shot, but it's not going to be on target. 
target. Drew able to still find the save points to just alleviate that pressure. Oh. Christian uh -oh. at 50. No one back. Never mind. Barris okay. is there. He has 100. He's able to try to find Vesh in the middle, and that will not have to come into fruition because Well is right there ready to defend. Shot coming through. The defender not having enough of a good position to try to get a hand up, and it's going to be St. Edwards with their safety net with 50 seconds left. Well, hey, game three situation. The Saints just have to really reevaluate what is going well for them. Do they want to go on to the losers' finals? How bad do they truly want this? I know for sure the answer is through the roof, but can they play like that? Can they play like they want this win here with 45 left on the clock? Vesh, Christian, and Barris are fighting so hard to get this ball back over to Orange Side, and they're going to have a little bit of success, but can they keep it here? That's been the main trouble. These teams are trading back and forth so well, getting the ball back and forth between these sides. Great keep it there. A great shot is possible if they're able to line this up, but Barris, no, not going to be able to finish it. Christian, not even gonna, he's going to get the touch, going to bounce off the ceiling, but this is just stalling for more time. Vesh getting demoed as well. They're just playing perfectly to keep these seconds draining as fast as possible. Christian, one more in the sky, carrying this one down. A, a goal there! Oh, a goal. Either of those seconds could have actually spelled it for him, but without either of them, this game is going to end, and that is going to be a game three situation. Saints versus St. Edwards. It's getting scary for both of these squads. A good job, and it's going to go to game three. Both teams on their tournament lives, and I really love what I saw from St. Edwards there. What they're doing is they're just allowing, they're forcing high because they know St. Clair have to burn boost and time in order to find any sort of offense. That's why you don't want to force low. You don't want to give up any quick passes. Force high. Make a guy have to go up in the air. Make a guy have to be up in no man's land. You can send a guy to challenge him, try to mess up the offense a little bit, and if it just takes one clear at that point to break up the attack, mm. you could be looking at your game three. They did a really good job there of taking control, and it will go to game three. I feel like the Saints are playing really calculated. They're not taking a lot of scary risks, but yeah. one thing I saw some other teams having a lot of success doing, especially in those high intensity of offensive situations, was making those bump plays in the net. Every time the Saints want to go for a shot, they, the defense is already there, and they're meeting them in the skies. If they can get someone to make those bumps, make those demos while they're going for it, it could be what they need. Vesh, so close to getting a goal right off the bat, would have been huge for them. Barris as well, trying to keep that flame alive. But still, if the Saints can maybe try to get more aggressive, they might have some more success. But it's also opening them up to a lot of risk. Patrick, this game is going anybody's way. But I don't like how close St. Edwards is already getting to the Saints net. Right. I mean, it's game three. This is it. Your life on the line. No matter what, somebody goes home right now. We're going to see who it is. Well, with a 50, has to try to set it to the sidewall. He has another man beat, almost beating Vesh. But Vesh with a great save, leaving it up for Barris. It's going to be controlled now by Barris. A 50 as well, forcing it out to Vesh. He has one man beat but well doing the better of him just being able to get the touch which was Perfect so touch. very well needed just to try to alleviate that pressure however Vesh is just on an island all by himself and no one's there. challenging him he's able to get a pass down to Christian, Christian! that's going to be the first goal opening up the scoring St. Edwards you got four minutes on the clock don't look stress now look at that perfect play it was just obviously we couldn't see because of where the camera was but my heart stopped I'm like is Christian full sending it right now is Christian full sending it right now of course Christian was full sending it. Vesh was up there, no boost, and a dream floating in the air, but four minutes left. This is anybody's game. We've seen both of these teams both come back from the brink of despair. Just look at the score. Game one and two, both of these teams had a huge advantage in respect, uh, respectively for each of them, but can they nail it? Saints already on another offensive tear. They're feeling themselves. They're feeling confident. I can see them grinning at each other through the window, but they need to carry this home all the way instead of bringing themselves. They're seeing Barris and as well as Vesh, they're trying to get the trade back up. Drew going for the shot towards the net. Christian with the defense. He has no boost. Going to have to take a second to recoup. What a pass. And they survive oh that. Oh, my God. Time. Well, with the beautiful try to get the rebound off that beautiful save from Barris. It's not going to be enough, though. Christian, the only one with the boost on the same side. That's but the be shot it. is going to be it, Christian. Perfectly played. Using that defensive gap and filling it with concrete. You are not getting out of here alive, is what he's saying. Try your best. Try your damn just chisel yourself out, but we're going to make a statue out of this marble. 
hey, you know what? Again, Christian, he is able to make big moments happen on the side of again. Team Canada. He has a kickoff now. Well, should be able to get to it. But again, St. Clair, they're looking good. You just kind of try to hold out now. Maybe, you know, you, you think maybe you play a little bit of Southgate ball. Shout out to all my guys who know what I'm talking about there. But I don't think that's the answer. Southgate ball never works. And I think you really have to try to push the momentum. Maybe not send all your Whoa. eggs in one basket, though. You got to be careful. The beat almost comes out. Saved up by Vash. The shot from Dino. And a huge demo from Barris. You would have thought it was going to open up a shooting lane. But well, does a good job of getting back and getting safe. He just had barely not enough boost to make that happen there. Also, the way Barris is just like moving, it's like he was snapping around. Perfect aerial control on these players. It's so scary. But as we're reaching the halfway point of the series, two points in, maybe this is the halfway point for St. No Edward. That, like that. would have been horrible for St. Edwards. Might have actually just called the game there. Thankfully, they didn't have that. Fish with the perfect beam shot. That pass feels like something you'd see in like a flash game from 2007. Press X to pass, and he just lasered it in. Beautiful play. The pass from Ferris was perfect. Saints are riding the high. They just have to last the rest of this half. Like I said, it was since that overtime. Ever since then, the Saints have been on that wave, and they're not looking to stop surfing just yet. Dino with a pass down. He's actually just going to go ahead and take it himself. Christian in the corner. It's a great job from Dino to push the offense, but so far, St. Edwards cannot break through on the other side. you got to start thinking St. Edwards. they got to start sending full house. Throw everything at him. Kitchen sink. There's a demo, a shot, but a great job from Christian, the captain of the team, getting back in the back line, making a crucial save, keeping the Saints on a clean sheet. And they're doing so well right now. The Saints maintaining such strong pressure. Christian and Vesh, the dynamic duo, but thankfully for St. Edwards, Vesh doesn't have enough boost to make something happen here. But now Christian does, which means Barris getting the save. They're all full, but look at the side of St. Edwards. They were all dry for one second there. This is a huge opportunity for the Saints. Whether or not they recognize it, they're going for it full speed ahead. Barris trying to set something up. Vesh is going to try to capitalize, bumping it up. Christian and Barris, or Barris is on the backside. Christian fighting in the middle field, trying to get back now. Christian ready for that clear attempt, sending it right all the way back over to the orange corner. Drew and Dino playing the defense. Barris and Christian at the front lines. Vesh on the back, and he's going to catch it with the sidewall play. Can he take this back? It's going to be a nice slow pass over to the corner, but no capitalization. One minute left on the clock, and Saints are looking to be in a very good position to take this series home. One minute for St. Edwards University to see if they can stay alive in this tournament. Save comes out from Christian. They're doing a good job of pressing up on the offense. 57 seconds left. It's going to be a try. Everything that St. Edwards does to put one foot forward, they immediately get kicked right back from St. Clair. They're doing a really good job right now, St. Clair, of controlling the midfield, forcing high touches like this into the back corner. It's going to force out boost. It's going to force out time. And right now, St. Edwards needs literally anything to go their way. Pre-jumping. It's going to be faked out. Well, split reset. Can he have the beat? No, not quite. Vesh, the first man up to it. It's going to be St. Clair now, clearing down the field. Christian, not going to be able to get the boost deal. Wells. Going to have to follow this one. Leaving it down for Drew. He's going to have 22 seconds to work. And this one is pretty much all but over. It's going to be most likely St. Clair. However, they need to try to not give up anything on the back foot. But it won't happen. 10 seconds left. 10 seconds for St. Edwards University. 10 seconds for St. Clair to pull off the comeback. And 10 seconds is going to be all she wrote. Vish puts the dagger in. St. Clair, move on. Saints fought so hard. This is the team that sent them here in the first place, made their day longer, made their day more stressful, and here they are winning it all out in the end. Two to one against St. Edwards University. Beautifully done by St. Clair Saints Gold, ending it off 4-0 in the final game. This is the team that we know and love playing at their full form, and I couldn't ask for a better time for them to be advancing into the Losers Finals. This is the kind of energy that you want. You don't want to be sitting cold for two hours waiting for your opponents to challenge you. No. You want to be coming in hot, ready, confident, and having something to prove. And this is the roster that we're going to be seeing going into the lose finals, fighting for their chance in day two. Oh, uh, man, I'm just so impressed with the guys right now. I'm so proud for them. You know, they totally Absolutely. deserve this. After the overtime, they just haven't slowed down. I feel like I've mentioned that time and time again, but I need to because... 
they just haven't hit a wall yet, honestly. That, yeah. Or at least when they have hit that wall with losing, I believe it was one game in the last series, they just immediately bounced back. They took the time. They talked it over. I mean, everything so far from them just spells clean comms. They, they are oozing with confidence right now. Uh, we've literally seen Christian literally full send certain attacks, and it's paid out, right? So not necessarily a bunch of hero plays, but when they need to be made, they are being made. The team play comes in later. We saw Barris with an absolutely amazing pass down to down to Vesh. That was, They're doing such a great job oh. of reading gaps in the defense and it's just paying out. Absolutely. It's paying dividends. It's a huge investment that they're making. And for their final opponents for the day, they'll be playing Oof, against Ball State. Ball State in the losers' finals. It's a tough one. Take it's a really tough one. Absolutely. But like I said, if you want to have your best chance of walking away with a victory, this is it because they are riding the wave. They just have to make sure they don't completely crash out. But one other thing is our green team waiting in the losers' finals for so long are going to be against one. Fisher squads to again fight for the chance of day two. Both of our teams fighting losers finals. One had to fight their way here. The others have been waiting here all day. But in any case, final match coming up next. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll be sending things off to a quick break. But if you've been waiting here all day, there's no point in missing out on the finals. So don't go anywhere. We'll be seeing you guys very soon, hopefully. And that match is going to be what we've been waiting for. <sighs> See you guys soon.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, as we are in the Losers Final Best of Five series. Let's get this underway. It's going to be Ball State with Go uh, with Oath, Ga, and Wova, whereas it's going to be Saints Gold with Bears, Christian, and Vash. It's the finals of the Losers Bracket. Let's get underway. Let's. One team qualifies. The other one gets sent home. I cannot wait to see what the gold team has in store for us. Ball State University, probably the most formidable opponents that you could be there to face against today, I guess unless you're in the upper bracket, second best, but still, these teams are both hungry, ferocious, and at the top of their game, Ball State University, at the very least, have been sitting here waiting for the Saints for this time to come, whereas the gold squad over here, they've been fighting ferociously, and if I'm going to judge by how uh, Christian gave me that handshake just a bit ago, I think they're ready, they're confident, I had it like, I feel like I got a jolt of life energy. It was a good dap up. <laughs> Perfect. So with three minutes, uh, three and a half minutes on the clock now, the Saints are fighting strong and hard. No points on the board for either side, but the first one will set the tone for sure. Absolutely, but here we go. Three minutes left in the game. It's going to be go with having to be off the back wall. Going to send it down to Oath. A good counterattack so far that gets broken up by Vesh. Go trying to work the corner, but it's going to be Vesh again that meets him. And so far, Vesh has been a great force on the defensive side so far this game. Christian off his own corner. Has one man to beat, but he's not going to be able to do that. It's a great challenge by Oath. It sets up a potential attack for Ball State University. Go on the back line trying to find a demo, but the ball gets 
gets cleared nonetheless. Nonetheless, but Vesh is going to try to make it even more. Christian is going to get beat out there, but it's not going to be a goal. It was very close to being yeah. one by God, but now it is. Wova just sideswiping that in. No one was ready to defend it. What happened there? Yeah, yeah it's just unfortunate from missed. Vesh and Bears, both just whiffing on the ball there, maybe expecting a different uh, path of, yeah. you know, the ball, but it just didn't happen. They just both get caught off guard, and it's going to be just an easy free one for Ball State to go up 1-0. So right now, let's get focused on the side of the Saints. they got to try to not let this hinder them any time mentally, and they need to try to get back in this one. Christian looking to do just that off the sidewall, and he's going to try to man this offense, but it's great backboard defense from Ball State so far. They're controlling really, really well in the midfield. They even have a guy running interference just in case Vesh slips free. But now with the ball down into the defense, it's going to be Christian under one. He has a man in the middle, embarrassed, but Wova is going to do just good to clear it out. Not a lot of boost on the side of Ball State, though. The Saints definitely have an advantage, and if they're going to try to get boost on the side of Ball State, they'd be risking their defense. Saints, the time is now if you want to get this goal, but it looks like they're going to get the clear and their boost is back up. Saints, in fact, on the deficit. Vesh is still trying to push for it. However, Bear is going for that shot, but it's going to get pounced out. Vesh on the back line trying to get this clear, and he's going to find a little bit of success. Bears is going to be one that finds the rest of it, but he's also going to get a demo on his way out. Christian now fighting for the team's life in front of the net. Vesh here for some of the assist. Yeah, Christian was a little bit awkward there. It's going to lead up to Vesh getting demoed as well, so not the best opportunity for St. Clair there in terms of starting a counterattack. However, as I say that, Bears is just working his way down Let's the go! The second I say something like that, they then turn on the Jets. It was looking bad, honestly. It looked like Christian was awkward. Vesh had been demoed. But Barris, the third man, how could I forget? Ice cold in his veins as he sinks it through all himself, sets up the opportunity, and Christian finishes it off. 1-1 one, one with a minute 20 left. 1-1 one, one with a minute 20. This is getting, skull, it's getting cold. It's getting icy. Both of these teams are feeling the chill in their veins. Realistically, Patrick, I feel like his Weber's winning this game one will have obviously an advantage going through the rest of the series but it's going to be so big it's going to be so big and it almost slipped away from the Saints for a second there as Oath went for a nice beautiful hero shot play Vesh getting the airborne riding over trying to carry the ball forward but Oath stealing it out holding it back on blue side and that could have been a huge shot and it is it's going to bounce off the cross post it almost was a double but then straight from the center it's going to be a beam perfect play the fake out. Yeah, Christian was playing for Gah, assuming he was going to go for the double, but teammate was there and not a lot of support left from the Saints side. 48 seconds for the Saints to tie this up. Right, and I mean, something I want to touch on is just how good Ball State is doing to make the Saints awkward on defense. It, it, and, you know, he almost just made it work there as well on the side of Oath. Lucky that Vesh stayed composed. But that hasn't really been the story so far for St. Clair. Both times they've conceded, it's been because of errand rotations or missed balls or maybe someone gets bumped and instead now another person has to force from position with not a lot of boost and they can't get a clear. It's simple things like that that Ball State's doing. It turns St. Clair on their heels and they're not able to find the daylight that they have had in all of these other series leading up to it. Yeah, and the way the Saints are playing right now with 10 seconds left, this is their final opportunity to tie things up. It would be huge for them to go into an OT in this game one. Barris, Christian, Vesh, they're all playing for this one on the back line. Vesh wants to get the reset. Christian holding it into the air, but it looks like it's going straight for the ground. And no, they're carrying it forward just a bit, but with the perfect play, we're going to see them smack it to the ground on the side of Ball State University. That's game one going to them. The Saints not too far behind, but not ahead in order to get the game. And I don't know if that was last man, but if the Ball State defender there doesn't use one jump and save the second one for a grounding touch, that was very bad because you had Barrist, I believe, in the back, just right behind whether it was Christian or Vesh who were carrying the ball. That very well could have been an equalizer. So a good job there for the Ball State defender to stay composed. Whether it was Gut Oath or Wova, I wasn't quite looking at the name. I was just kind of focused on everything that was happening yeah. around him. So even then, ground double opportunity for Barrist, going to get shut down. Christian now off the sidewall. It's going to be back to Vesh. Vesh staying composed, leaving, letting oh. the shot come through. It's oh, going to be wow. Barris who calls his name off, and now the Saints got to work backwards on defense. Got save there was perfect, and turning it into a goal at that. How is that even possible? Just really stole it out from underneath in front of their net and scoops it all the way over to blue in one swift, smooth, fluid movement. 
with 20 seconds down in this game two situation, the gold squad, they might be feeling the chill, but they can't let it freeze them up. They have to be playing hot. They have to be playing like it's their first game of the day, fresh and eager, remembering all of their past moments of success that brought them to even be playing the Losers Finals in the first place. They have to let that be what carries them forward into this game. Christian with a nice shot, perfect shot in fact, but Wovo with an even better save. That's trying to meet the wall. He's not usually beat out on that wall, but he is this time around leaving Barris to get the save. Wova clearing this back towards blue side, trying to set up for a good shot. Christian beating the 50, taking this around off the sidewall towards the center, but Wova going to be there. A nice brick wall. Vesh trying to meet this one over to the center. Barris is going to be the one to do it, but Gut is going to intercept. Christian trying to get the remnants of that play, and he's going to get bumped around, making it damn near impossible. Again, he is basically stunned for a good amount of time. Saints looking good on the boost, but are they going to have a chance to utilize it? Well, that'll be the key question in mind as Gut tries to play it back into the middle. It will be cleared out by Christian, and for some reason, I thought that I didn't think that was going to be on target, but the game credits him with a save. It's a great clear it nevertheless, and a great job of picking through the defense on the side of Vesh. Redirect from Oath just saves Barris from possibly being able to have a shot on net. A great defensive play by him. Drop down pass, though, ensues, and right now, Ball State scrambling for answers. However, an overcommit on the side of St. Clair. Will this one drop into fruition for Ball State? No, it will not. Christian with the first save, the clear out now as well from Barris. Back to Christian. He has the catch. Does he have the goal? So yes! in. It doesn't need to be. Christian with an amazing catch on the other end. Pre-jumping the clear. And it's going to be a great play from St. Clair, from Christian. These hero plays seem to find him time and time again. And he's going to be able to be the one to draw it up one all with three minutes left. Every day that goes by, I'm further and more convinced that Christian is literally the chosen one. Uh, and that is another one of those moments that makes me more uncertain of that. What I hate to point out, though, is when you look at the difference between the Saints' goals versus Ball State's, the ones that they've been able to find in this match, Ball State's are just so much more safe. graceful and planned. Whereas the Saints, they're a lot more nail-biting yeah. and close. They, those are the kind of goals that you want to be relying on if you want to win the series. They have to clean up their offense, and they have to find these goals more consistently if they want to have a chance to come out against one of the best Rocket League teams in collegiate esports. Absolutely, and I mean, that double demo wasn't going to help them do anything in that regard. So right now, they got to kind of lock in on defense. Vesh on the side. He's actually going to just leave it able to see if try to force God to make a move. And luckily, the low 50 will clear that out. Christian now with no boost. And I believe he might also be last man until Vesh gets back there. Vesh now rotating back perfectly, which is good. Christian trying to force high. It's going to be down for Vesh. A little bit of a 50 forces it low. Christian okay. with the catch. Has a dribble. Flip reset in pocket. He's going to go for the bump instead. Where's Barris for the shot? No. Barris leans back instead and just says, nope, I'm just going to take this one slow. Two minutes on the clock. Barris. It's not the end of the world. However, he is going to get demoed for his liking. And now with the enforcers coming in for the side of Ball State, St. Clair has to watch out and be careful. Yeah, the play like that, it, it, we, we recognize that that could have been a perfect shot opportunity, but just as easily, if they miss that, then their net's wide open. No one's on the right. back line. Boost is gone. So I respect Barris a lot for playing that carefully. And it might be what's keeping them at 2-1 to one instead of 1-1 uh, one one instead of 2-1. to one. But Vesh going for a nice shot. Not going to be able to follow up off of it, though. Ball State's defense so tight. Like I mentioned many, many times before, the Saints, they have to tie things up. They have to clean things great. And now they want to keep pushing back. They have to play more. We're going to see Christian fighting for his life in the corner. Ball State, they are trying so hard to get something done for the Saints. But no, the shot's going towards their way. Wova is going to find his way in. And the Saints not able to get the save. And in the meantime, we're seeing the Saints green squad playing against Fisher Navy once again. And hey, Fisher Navy, they were down 3-5, to five, but now they're 4-5. to five. Both of our teams fighting for our lives right now to advance to the next day. Seems that Green's having a better time than Gold right now, but with 2-1 to one being the scoreline for the Saints, it's far from impossible. They just have to bring it back. Right, I mean, even in the other one, Goals galore, but we'll touch on that later. That's not what's relevant right now. What is relevant right now is how Barris is going to do on this attack. Reset tries to find a 50, but no, he's going to get beat out by Gah. Vesh, slow control touch. Now Wova trying to play the shadow defense. Forces it to left wall, and he has to wait for a teammate who's going to be Gah to clear it out. Now, Barris with the catch, has a little bit of boost, can maybe force a 50. Yep, that's going to be exactly all he wanted. Vesh 
with the shot, but no, it's going to be 50 out. Besh trying to find another pass, and St. Clair, they just got to be careful. Barris tracking back, leaves it off, calls off Christian. Christian now going to have to be able to backflip, calls it off to Barris, trying to find a pinch, maybe a 50. Someone should be up from St. Clair, and there he is. Christian down to Barris. It is going to be a miss, however, and now the Saints got to be scrambling back on oh, defense. Besh with no boost. He's going to be able to cut rotation and keep a low 50 to keep the Saints alive. No boost on Besh is not what you want to see when you're trying to mount a last second offense. He's going to get some. It's him and Christian at the front lines, but Christian's going to get the demo. Barris has to get this clear back over to orange side and has to be fast. Him and Christian and Barris all in the back line, not where you want to be in the last two seconds of the match. And in fact, the shot coming through, Saints don't have to save it, but it's going to end up hitting the ground, resulting in Ball State taking game two. Right, and I mean, now I, I was going to say we should probably be switching over to Fisher Navy and St. Clair College Green, but oh my goodness, the comeback happens. And with a minute 13 left, St. Clair College Green, Zai, Jazzy, Fabso, it seems like that little, well, not that little, that long break might have affected them a little bit. This was a team that they beat handedly uh, to, oh, I want to say, I don't even think they gave up a game. So again, whether I'm wrong or not, it's a team that they definitely beat in the past, and and I don't really think that this is them playing up to their potential right now, if I had to guess. Fabso with a pass down to Zai, trying to make something work on the offense right now. And it is going to be Adam with the clear out. Has a lot of control, trying to play a low 50 for his teammate, and he forces it into Wanda Mike. Sosa trying to run backboard. Defense Ooh. coming in from Fabso, but Wanda Mike able to put it away. An absolutely insane play there as the pinch from Wanda Mike into Sosa was able to free up enough room and Fisher Navy take the lead in the first game with 42 seconds left. To be fair though, it was the Saints that had the lead for the longest of longest Absolutely. time. So it really could be anybody's game still with 40 seconds on the clock. The Saints can still fight back, but due to the fact that they are in the circumstance right now where they were up like 5-2, to 5-3, to three, and now they're down 1.6-5. to five. It's not looking good for them right now. They really have to find their mojo again. They have to do so fast as Adam really just swats away map so try to get that play set up and they're just toying with the ball now making sure it doesn't have an easy route anywhere except for to orange side jazzy he's gonna receive this ball start taking it over to blue and he has perfect air control as we always see so consistently babzo trying to line this up going for the shot but no sosa gonna send that straight towards the ground but one more pickup's gonna occur we're gonna see Sai keep this one in the air still adam sending it away sosa looking to take so straight to the ground 50, to end though. this around. And it looks like the Saints are ready for it, and they still are. The crease is keeping this ball in the game. Two of them with 100 Jazzy. boost. They are working on it. Fabzo still able to keep this one in the air, but that's actually going to end up being two shots towards Saints side. No one able to stop that from hitting the grass. That's going to be game one going to Fisher side. Back over to the Saints gold. It is one ball up for Ball State University. Bears getting demoed out. It is 2-0 in the series score. Saints need to find one more, but like I said, all the goals they've found have been scrambles, skirmishes, brawls in front of the net. You want to find something more certain, more strategic, more planned, and it looks like they're trying to set that up. Barris trying to get anything going, but no boost is going to make this difficult. Vash trying to catch this one midair. He finds it, giving enough time to, for Christian to get some boost, but it's going to get sent back to blue side. In the meantime, three minutes remaining. Saints need to find one to have a hope of winning this game and staying in this tournament their whole run riding on these last few seconds and minutes adding up to a lot of time here Barris trying to offer some support for his team is coming up for the shot not gonna hit it. he's gonna miss maybe it was a fake maybe it was a miscom maybe it was just a straight plain miss but that's not what you want to see the Saints slipping more and more as seconds go on I thought Oath was about to have a ceiling into a double tap that would have been absolutely disgusting but right now it's not going to come into fruition. The drop down though, maybe a redirect instead from uh, getting 50 out. Barris, right now the Saints, they need a little bit of a play to get started and that's not going to be what the doctor ordered in order to see St. Clair qualify for day two. It's going to be Oath just sitting back. It's going to be just an air and miss from Barris. Not one of his, not one that a player of his caliber makes very often. Just a little bit of a slip up on his side. And again, St. Clair paying for not having a person back on the backboard ready to defend the possible shot. Oath finds the seam in the defense and he takes advantage of it. Ball State go up 2-0 and as the Saints start sending all their eggs into one basket, it's going to be Ball State to start running away with things as Guh punishes the Saints once again for the overcommit. Yeah, I gotta say Patrick, things are not looking great for the Saints right now. 
3-0. And like I said, they haven't been able to find these consistent goals. And in order to, to, to figure out how to do so against the ball state of all teams, maybe something here, but even something like that is not going to go in. What hope do you have? They're able to defend against the worst of the worst scenarios so consistently time and time and time again with three minutes, two minutes left to get three goals and they have to figure out how to do so in a tactical, strategic, calculated fashion. It's looking really difficult for the Saints to stay in this one. Right, I mean, both Saint teams right now with their backs up against the ropes, in my opinion, but more so the gold team than the green team right for right now. Harris off the ceiling. Can he try to find Besh in the corner? He has him right now, but the pass down to Christian is just a little bit too lofted. Oath did a good job of just getting in the way of what would have been a shot. And right now for St. Clair, they have to start playing a little bit faster. Even if it means overcommitting, it no longer matters whether the score is 7-0 or 3-0. You go home regardless if you don't put up points. So Barris needs to get something going. Low 50 is going to force it down over to Vesh. Vesh diving in. Has a 50, won his way. However, Ball State is back and ready to receive. And now Christian is going to dive in, but he's not going to find anything for his efforts. Yeah, it's, it's just down to the last minute here. These last 60 seconds are going to be the accumulation of the last few hours for this team. It all comes down to this. Was it all worth it for them? Christian is trying to lead the charge here, finding his way over to Orange Side. Going to get completely intercepted and stuffed out and in fact now it's in the danger zone for the Saints another shot coming out another shot finding its way in ladies and gentlemen I hate to break it to you but I feel That's like probably going to be the dagger yes into yeah. the heart I'll, I was just saying goal. you know I know you didn't want to say the words <laughs> I'll go ahead and say it for you barring like a, an absolute miracle that will most likely be the dagger. We're definitely not trying to cast across Ball State right now. But what I will say is, no. give it to Ball State. They played an absolutely incredible game. That'll be a fifth one. Add it up. They're just going to run away with it now. It's a great job from Go Oath and Wova. Three players who are of such high caliber, who I have casted for a little bit now, as I've seen through their CRL performances. So, again, it's uh, with the run-ins with the Saints, at least. I again, it's a team that deserves to move on through qualifications. They showed no mercy in this series. No chance of slowing down. And sadly for the St. Clair Saints gold team, that will be the end of their lower bracket run that they paved such a perfect road for. It was a glorious run indeed. And unfortunately, they have finally met their match. We said they didn't hit a wall as soon as they hit that overtime, uh, you know, a couple hours ago. But this, this is that wall that they're hitting, unfortunately. And it's going to come at the end of their day here. 10 seconds until we're going to swing back over to the green game most likely but I gotta say Patrick it was one hell of a run these guys played out of their minds and oh absolutely all power to them absolutely proud to be uh, to be going to the same school as these gentlemen for sure yeah, but let's now focus in. 49 seconds left, and this is such a big game. St. Clair Green potentially going to be put on their tournament lives and they can't get it together. Wanda Mike with a save out from Jazzy. Zai, close wall, has 60. Going to be able to try to find another touch, maybe a 50 to clear out, but no, not going to happen. Adam stays composed. Picked off by Jazzy, though, and now can St. Clair get something going on the attack? Zai trying to find a force into the center. Fabso going to be able to stay composed. 30 to his name. Ball on top. He can try to go for a flick. Goes for a low 15 instead. Wave dash to recover, but no! The team bump coming in from Jazzy, maybe a little bit too preoccupied with his own teammate. He can't stop the pinch from going down. A rare miss from Zion on the back wall, and that was almost one that St. Clair let slip by. And slipping by, no one has let anything slip by in this game. Zero to zero, these teams are playing really solid. It's going to have to come down to an overtime unless something insane happens here. Fabio yep. says no, didn't want to take the risk, would rather have the reset, sent it to the ground, and we're coming in here for their last chance to get at least one on the board. Saints would be in an incredibly scary position if they go down here 2-0 to zero against Fisher Navy, the team they beat before. They want to make sure they're well, fighting strong. Well, it would be such a mental chalk as well if yeah. you lose in the OT. Right now, they're not trying to have that happen. Jazzy with a demo. That's a huge play right there, especially if the first man to its fab. So the shot might have came through, but Sosa staying composed. Control touch from Zai. He has a flip to work with, but he's going to get 
get picked off. It's a great play from Adam to be able to get to the 50 and Wanda Mike as well to be able to stop Zai right now. St. Clair moving up. They have the pass. They have the shot and they have the win in OT. Jazzy to Zai. Need a better combo on offense. Bang, bang. And it's going to be St. Clair going to game three. Beautifully done by the green squad. They are not going to be all doom and gloom in this first game. At least getting one on the board, giving themselves a little bit more time to get back into the swing of things. Like we mentioned, they've been waiting for quite a while for their opponents to become worthy enough to challenge them. Again, fighting their way through. And you can see the green squad not in uh, too low spirits. Regardless oh, of the win or loss, run. it was a fantastic day for the Gold Squad. A lot of yeah. learning, a lot of experience. Hey, they got hey, a lot of bots Danger to review. Taco in here. Shout out Danger Taco, man. <laughs> <laughs> and then, like I was just saying, though, Gold Squad, at least they have a lot of VODs to review today. And those are going to be really good VODs to review. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, you know what? I can't word it any better. Uh, again, I know we're focusing on the green team, but I just want to give Gold a little bit of kudos. They really turned up, and uh, you know the fact they made it to the finals of this Open anyway, coming into it, I won't lie. Judging by past performances, I didn't think they were going to make it. I have to say, I the didn't same. think they were going to make it that far. Especially I thought maybe you know a round or two before was maybe where they were going to meet their demise. They completely proved me wrong. And right now, let's see if St. Clair Green can prove me right. I do believe these guys should be able to qualify. Let's see if they can put the money where their mouth is are, and let's see if they can get this going. St. Clair Green up against Fisher Navy. Let's see what happens. It's going to be a nice pass, a nice Ooh. shot. But however, it's going to be just off the post, interior and out, and man, you're really going to be wanting that one back for St. Clair. Yeah, St. Clair fighting really hard. Mid-air control is going to be the name of the game in this series, seeing how the, they maneuver through the skies. Oh God, as I'm talking about the skies, one slips in from underneath Sosa. Perfect shot. Hey, I mean, look, it is all on Adam, right? He forces the low 50 and yet another one. It's two low 50s on zero boost. I mean, that's absolutely incredible and insanely offensively aware from Adam as he sets up Sosa for the shot. A great play there. St. Clair now racing from the kickoff. They do have the beat. It was Fab, so maybe looking for a bump into Sosa, but now they got to deal with Wanda Mike. Clearing the ball down deep. He's got a shooter online, and Adam, who's going to opt to take it slow. Tries to play the 50 off of Zai, but that leaves it down to Fabso, who has the beat over Wanda Mike. Ball moving back into Fisher territory now. It's going to be Jazzy looking to try to force the enforcement on the offense. Maybe trying to find a demo of his own, but he's going to have to leave it be until later. Zai with a 50. That one goes right by the net, and now it's going to be on the right side. Going now is Wanda Mike. You need to have someone to beat up there, and Fabso is going to be the man for the call. The demo from Zai, and clears are coming through. Right now, things are looking back and forth as we play a little bit of volleyball. The setups from Fisher are so scary. You see them get ready and get in position to try to set up for a shot, and you're like, how are you actually supposed to defend against this? On the flip side, though, what I feel like is the Saints, they are just so much better at nailing them. They just don't get the opportunities to set up for their situations as much as Fisher have been, so while they're not as aggressively natured um, getting those opportunities, when they do get them, they really make the most of them. Sai doing a great job keeping the ball on this side, getting a bump, clearing it out, allowing Jazzy hopefully to get that, but no, it's going to go over his head. Wonder Mike is going to have to battle up Fabso here as Sosa takes control, sends it towards the net. Adam flipping it back over. Sai taking control from the sky, cradling it down, dribbling it. Jazzy going to be battling Sosa on the wall for control of this one. Fabso going to tag in, take control. Sosa waiting for the opportunity in front of the net, trying to collect some moves and be ready for the shot to come through with 100% on the sideline. Wonder Mike setting it up. Jazzy's going to make that not happen, though, taking it straight to the ground. Sosa is going to try now to make something happen. But again, Saints doing a great job playing defensively, stealing out these plays, intercepting them. A good cut from Sai. It's a big boost steal. Out. Big boost steal. Big, big demo. Big, big play. Great setups coming up from the Saints green squad, allowing them to tie things up one-to-one. -one. And sometimes you just got to get a little physical with it. It is what it is. Jazzy able to do just that. He bumps one out, finds the boost steal as well, was one of Sai or Jazzy. And again, it's just a perfect play to tie things up. One all. Again, this is such a huge game. Winner of this forces the other one on their tournament life. And for qualification matters as well for day two. Let's see what St. Clair can cook up. Or let's see what Fisher can do to stop it. Wanda Mike now chasing. He's actually going to opt to leave this one down for
for Adam. And now he will play the second man. Gets a first touch, but he's going to get 50 out by Jazzy. Clear out by Zai. However, it's been such a good job from Fisher to pick out these passes from St. Clair just before they meet the target man. Wanda Mike with a long clear as well. It's not going to be an easy one for Fabso to deal with, but just like his name just like his name suggests and his play suggests so far, as far as I've known him, he's a great force on the defense. Sosa able to find the pass to Wanda Mike, and they're going to have the slot that they needed. It was the play from Fabso that cleared it out, but on zero boost, there's nothing more he can do than watch that one sail into his top corner. Wanda Mike with the perfect setup, playing at the top level. Fisher Navy proving to be such a force of nature. Saints Green are not having an easy time like they did. I don't want to say it was an easy time before, but it's definitely not an easy time now as Fisher Navy threatening to take the game three advantage over St. Green. But again, a minute 45 on the clock. They still have a lot of time and a lot of room to work with, but it gets narrower and narrower by the, each second passing. Sai has to make the most of those. Wonder Mike's going to beat that ball midair. Sai's going to get a great cut, doing such a great job of preventing these clears from going out keeping it stuck on blue side with just a minute and 30 remaining for the Saints to try to tie things up or even get the goal advantage. Things aren't looking great as Fisher Navy sends it flying towards orange side side. Taking control, however, dribbling up doing great aerial control. Jazzy trying to help him out, but going to get beaten out by one to Mike. Time is ticking. Saints looking desperately for a chance to take this one to an overtime potentially. And again now, a little bit of a fast break. Jazzy tries to pass it out. Does he have his man picked out? Yes, it was going to be Zai, but the double commit was able to find the clear out. Fabzo getting bumped. It's going to have to rely on Jazzy on zero boost to pop it up. Zai playing backboard defense. Can he get there? No, he can't. Adam with a great read. Fisher Navy running away with it. 3-1, 50 seconds left, and Saints Green got to lock in or else they might be looking at their tournament lives withering away. I just want to remind everybody that for the first game of the day, the Saints did go 0-11 and against their opponents, so 50 seconds on the clock for two goals. Shouldn't be too difficult, but again, it is Fisher Navy this time around, so she could find a little bit of a problem, but I feel like if they play as if it isn't, they might have a little bit more success. They just have to break through any barriers in their way. And Fisher Navy being the last barrier standing between them and day two, they have to put it all on the table to break everything that could be holding them back with 20 seconds remaining to get two on the board. It's looking less likely. Thankfully, to best of five, they still have at least one more game to work with, but I hope they've spent these first two, or first three rather, figuring things out and getting comfortable once again. Right, and I mean, this is going to come down to it. Seven seconds left. It's most likely going to be a Fisher win. As that 50 comes through, that will be confirmed. Fisher move up two in the series. A little bit of an upset here, in my opinion. And they might be looking to qualify for, game, for day two. Game two, they win. And again, it is going to be Fisher potentially shutting out the Saints. If they can pull out this last win, they will qualify to day two and send St. Clair College Green the last team remaining for St. Clair in this tournament up and packing back to their dorms. Absolutely, and you can see the players, they are still focused, but you can see the fatigue already set in. Now, I can definitely feel the fatigue on our end for sure. Oh. <laughs> so, hey, they are playing a long day. A lot of it was spent waiting, especially since they were in the winner side for so long, and then loser side was even more of a wait. They're still shaking off the rust. They're still shaking off the sleepiness out of their eyes, the doubt out of their heads. But with maybe the last game of the day, there's no point in holding anything back. You let loose everything that you have in you and put it all on the table for this, again, potential last match against Fisher Navy, the team that they have beat before. They just have to bring all of the power that they have in them back to the forefront and really send it home. Well, here we go. You have no more lives. This is truly your backs up against the wall. Probably the first time I've really seen this roster yeah. have to deal with something like that in terms of being eliminated from a tournament. Let's see how they perform. Let's go. St. Clair College Green. Let's see what you can do. Jazzy, solo play. Has a reset now, but he's going to be challenged immediately by Adam. I love what I'm seeing out of Fisher out of these early challenges. They're able to just quickly get to the Saints players before they're able to have one or two touches, which could be all the difference between a goal or not. And it's a great 
great job by Fisher to get there in time and yet also not have to overcommit to do it. Sosa with a touch of his own. He's going to be able to try to stay on the dribble. But he gets picked up by Zai. The dunk potential from Zai happening, but Adam is going to be able to have that one clear. It's going to be Jazzy with a quick shot, a beamer, but a quick save from Sosa. Really, really good defensive play so far from Fisher, and it keeps them off the board. Yeah, the board is still looking clear for both teams, but what I'm liking a lot more right now than the previous game is the Saints have been keeping it on the blue side a lot longer. The frequency of their deadly plays. Wow. You saw it there, Patrick. How many of those can anybody wow. withstand? Not oh many. As one more comes through. Can they survive the third? There you go. No, Surrey Fabzo. Third time's the charm. Takes it back. I mean, one you gotta on be, the board. You gotta be kidding me, man. I mean, those first two attempts, that goes in nine times out of ten. But Fisher, all credit to him, were able to get back defensively. However, when you're racing on your goal line, you don't you start, you know, losing boost from those two previous saves. Anything high usually spells your end. Fabso gonna be the guy to make sure that it gets there. Wanda Mike now tracking back. He's actually gonna team bump his teammate Adam, and now this should be a St. Clair attack. However, Sosa, great job defensively aware as he's able to pick off that pass and he's able to save his two teammates from certain duress. Fabso off his own corner, looking for Wanda Mike now apparently as he can't get the pass central. Wanda Mike trying to clear out. Double tap, does he have it? No, good backboard defense from Jazzy. Gets demoed for his efforts, but because of him, a goal hasn't been scored just yet. And they kind of want to maintain pressure over on the side of the Saints net on the side of Fisher Navy. They're trying to make sure they can get it going. Like I said, the frequency of the wow. offense is really going to be the main differentiating factor for these teams. We saw it going very... Oh, oh Fabso! Oh, my God! Beautiful play from Saints Green. They don't want any more goals scored from Fisher Navy. This is looking like the team that we saw first thing in the morning. And I hope they can maybe bring that scoreline back. It's still zero, but they need 10 more to make it happen once again. I mean, you gotta be kidding me. That that might be one of the craziest saves that Jazzy could have pulled off there. And right now, St. Clair need it. They're up by one. They're holding on by the skin of their teeth, but there's still two minutes 20 to be played, and you can't start getting wishy-washy now. It's gonna be St. Clair with the clear. Jazzy to force the back wall. Wanda Mike waiting. Control touch, trying to get up, but he's actually gonna get beat out by Fabzo. Down his eye for a clear out. Now, Adam, his role here is going to be critical. He needs to wait for the first touch and act upon it. Fabso going to be there, and he's actually going to miss it. Adam's going to miss the ball, but then he comes back and finds a pass. Like I said, his positioning there was going to be critical to the success. He almost ended up committing a failure for Fisher, and then on the flip side, comes back and almost seals the fate to tie the game up. Just again, a great player who can really adapt well, and right now, Fisher still scoreless on the board as we cross him in at 30. Fabso and Sai, dynamic duo of duo of the green team, the Samira equivalent of Vesh and Christian on the gold, and they're maintaining pressure so effectively. Jazzy, look at this. Double, oh triple, uh-oh. <laughs> one more might no be all he needs. Fabzo almost gets that one in, but one to Mike with a beautiful save, taking this now. Adam carrying the torch forward, 115th on the clock for Fisher Navy to get one more point to at least take things to an overtime, potentially win the series right here and now. But the way the Saints have been playing it's looking more and more unlikely by the second. What I really like to see, like I said before, is the frequency of the Saints getting on blue side and really putting down their foot to dominate. It's a lot more frequent than it was in the first few games. Fisher had the advantage offensively so much more, but they weren't as scary as the Saints when they did it, but it was just the frequency of laying it down. 40 seconds now for the Fisher College squad to get one more, but Cy trying to make sure it doesn't happen. We're seeing Adam with that one. Same with Fabso. One to Mike. Actually going to break the curse and touch the ball. One shot coming in. Sai oh, says Sai. no. Bouncing it on the ground. And it just as easily could have still bounced in. But playing that one perfectly is going to bounce its way right out of dodge. Now on the corner on the blue side, Adam is going to be battling out with Jazzy. Ball's going to fall straight down. It's colored white right now. Nobody has full possession. One to Mike trying to cradle this one back. It's going to bounce off his back into the skies. Carrying it forward towards Orange this is the last shot we're going to see here. Can they find oh. it? Adam with one more, but off the roof of his car, going to accidentally flip it to the ground. No one able to recover it. Saints tied 
two to two against Fisher Navy. One more game to decide who goes home. Are we going to at least see one of our squads in day two? Patrick, that's going to be up for them to decide. You can see Jazzy laying down the law. Oh he my wants God. To, what kind of plays are they going to be talking about here? Here it is. All day comes to this moment. You could have not written a better story. So I had my head in my hands after because I was like, wow, we're really going to go we to are? game five. One qualifies, one doesn't. It's Saints Green versus Fisher Navy. Let's get right into it. And Fisher wasting no time on an offense. Going to get a demo, a shot coming in, but a save from Fabso to start us off. Fisher going absolutely ballistic right now in the Saints half. A pinch out wide. And now Jazzy's going to have to recover. The weighted in the tank. Has a flip. He's going to try to just use it to try to charge momentum in into the Fisher player, oh, but it's going to be a dead 50, and right now the Saints are on the back foot. Let's see if they can clear out. The weighted clothes have come off from Fisher Navy. They're coming out of the gate swinging 30 seconds of absolute devastating offense, and the Saints managed to withstand it all. I feel like their odds are good right now, but they still have to get their own goals here. Jazzy looking to do just that, carrying it up with Sai on the ground beneath. This is the duo we're talking about, wow. but Adam says no. Fabso on the back line, however, keeping it up. No boost left for Fabso or Sai. Jazzy is is just going to try to keep it on the side, but not going to have that going his way. Sai, however, so going for it. It's wide open, and they were able to get in front of it in time. Saints, one on the board, 404. This page was not found, but the Saints found it regardless. Taking this 1-0. Can they just maintain this lead to take this all? Absolutely all. brilliant from the caster, from the players. It's just what we do here at St. Clair right now. Getting started, it's going to be Zai who just finds the overcommit, oh and no way it happens again. I was going to say, no way Sosa lets that same mistake go down. It's going to be a demo. St. Clair, they're revving up the engines. You can feel it. You can smell it in the air. They're up one right now. All pressure on Fisher Navy. St. Clair, let's see what you can do. It's going to be Jazzy on the back wall. He has to try to force, but he's going to leave it for Fabso. Fabso instead with the carry, forcing back down to Jazzy. Jazzy has a good pinch, and that's going to change up momentum. He's going to try to read the wall of so one Mike, and he's done perfectly in that regard, but Sosa there to help his teammate. He missed that. Fabso tried to get the interception, but it wasn't going to go his way. But now he's going to come back with the vengeance, taking the shot. Sai bouncing it off of his side. Not going to go in, however. Jazz, uh, or Jazzy and Th uh, Sai fighting it over. Sosa going to meet that ball as it was going towards its doom. Sai now keeping this in the air. Sosa going to intercept it. It's on the ground. Fabso carrying it forward. That's the common theme I'm seeing here. And now time and time again, Fabso trying to slow it down for Jazzy to get the top shot. It was, he was like a moving golf tee, but someone took it away from him before he had the chance. Jazzy taking down Sosa. Uh, allowing Sai a nice drive lane straight towards the net, but they're going to shut it down before he's able to find it all the way. Now with 2.50 on the clock, State still holding that one goal lead. Fisher Navy, they have to dig deep. They have to start panicking now. You don't want to start panicking when there's 30 on the clock. You want to panic now. You still have a lot of work to do, but oh, wow. they're going to get that save. Fabso keeping the Saints in the lead with that beautiful movement and completely clearing it out. Jassy now seeing if he can beat one of Mike, but no, it's going to hit that... Uh, uh, front of the car, setting it towards the sky. Sai now meeting it on the orange side. Saints still trying to maintain the lead. Right, and they just got to be careful right now. Fabso on the backboard. One air in touch, and it could spell your doom. Sosa now with the 50. It's going to be down to Jazzy. Jazzy with a little bit of a touch, but the ball gets away from him right now. Ooh. Pass has to get caught out by Zai. Ooh. The ground pinch. Pass down. Powers. It's going to be Adam, who's going to be able to just barely get a touch on it, and it might be what Fisher needs for this counterattack. Let's see what happens. Fabso off the 100 pad. He's just got to play safe. Zai up on the backboard. He has a shooter in Adam into Sosa, but it's not going to happen. Wanda Mike. He's oh my God. Away. The Saints have left the ball alone off of a missed clear. And now it's going to be Fisher. They capitalize on the mistake. And it is going to be one all with a minute 54. Anyone's game as we head into the final two minutes. Ladies and gentlemen, this is all worth it. Okay. Being here since 12, watching these teams go through. We're coming down to the Y here. One to one. 150 on the clock for these teams to establish a lead. But I have a feeling things are going to only get more stagnant from here as the, the hands start to climb up, the sweat starts to drip, the fear, everything starts to realize that, hey, I might not get to play tomorrow in the CRL Open Qualifier. And that is a hard pill to swallow. And it's one that one of these teams is going to have to swallow. But before then, everyone's going to keep their mouth calm and focused. They only want to be using it to make communication with the team, but 
We're gonna see Wonder Mike going for a shot. Sai gonna be able to stop that one from going much further. Jazzy gonna be able to take that one out. Adam trying to get this one away. He's not gonna be able to get Jazzy. That's not a great touch that one. And now the Fisher Navy squad taking it all the way back to the same side. Right, and you just gotta be careful right now. Adam making some great plays. Wonder Mike, can he find a 50? No, not quite. Not for his efforts. It's going to be so so though. Fisher doing a great job right now in the midfield. Just finding their 50s. But can they Ooh. find the shooter? No, not quite. Fabso just barely offline. He's gonna want that one back. Demo now from Sai. It's going to be gone, and he needs to try to stay back on defense. Fabso oh. with him as well. A great touch there to try to put it to Jazzy, but an even better job from Adam to read the defense. Pinch now gonna leave it up for Wanda Mike on the solo. He has zero, but a flip. He's gonna be able to fake one Saints defender out. Oh Another God. one gets faked oh as God. well. A quick touchdown down from Fabso, and it's gonna have to be Zai to recover. Now the Saints, two up as well. They're double committing a lot. 25 seconds left. Let's see what happens. Sosa up. There's two Saints as well. Zai with a reset. Can he use it to gain some ground? No, not quite. False to Fabso though. One on one. He's gonna be able to get 50'd out. Zai, where's Jazzy in the mix right now? You gotta assume he's coming over near. 17 boost to his name. The miss, and all of a sudden, Saints looking to throw all the rakes in the basket. It's going to be the clear downfield now from Fisher Navy. Three seconds left. One, and the second the ball hits the ground, we are going to get yet another overtime to see who goes on, who stays back, and here we go. Lights, camera, action. It's all St. Clair. It's Fisher Navy. Oh it's my god! Time, and it almost just ended right there if it weren't for Zai. Sai with the day saving goal save. Fabso trying to bring this to a quick end, but Adam brings him to a quick end instead, getting a game changing demo. He's going to respawn by now, but the offensive pressure has been completely shut down at this point. Saints need to recoup. They have the boost to work with. They just have to coordinate it, get it out of their corner first and foremost. But Adam says no. Fabso says absolutely not. Now, one to Mike, trying to take this towards the center. Sai says, hell no. Adam meeting it to the sky. It's a back and forth. The scariest back and forth I think I've ever seen in Rocket League. And this isn't even the last day. This is just to make it to day two, ladies and gentlemen. Fabzo wants to bring it back so badly, but he's going to get demoed for his efforts. Fisher Collars, the gloves are off. They are not afraid to swing, and they keep swinging over and over again, demolitioning our squad members continually. Adam keeping this one back on orange side. The Saints are actually struggling just a little bit, but they're going to get it back to blue side. They can't establish anything, though. They can't dig their heels in, and coming in. This a great shot and it's in! Fisher Navy wins the game and it is a very hard pill to swallow for the Saints. You can see it in their face. No one was expecting that one to go in. A bit of a miscommunication, a bit of a misplay, a bit of this, a bit of that, but a whole lot of disappointment unfortunately for everybody here. Wow. Absolutely wow. I mean, give Fisher all credit that's due. It was That was one of Sosa's best shots he could have had on the day. Absolute crazy control. He finds the area he needs to put it in. Long faces on the side of Saints Green. A team who I honestly really thought was going to qualify to day two. Mm -hmm. However, it did end up being a little bit too much for them that they pulled a little bit of a group of death. They had to face off against Concord. They had to face off against Fisher multiple times. It's not the easiest bracket run, but for someone who thought they were going to have such an explosive day one, I still think they did. Yeah. It just simply seemed to be a little bit too much that they climbed the bracket very quickly and then they had to wait for almost what seemed like forever. It was like two to three it was, hours. It was honestly like so long. It's so long for your hands to get cold. Unfortunately, they won't be able to take the qualification. But you have two more CRL Opens to work on, boys. No worries. It's just one. There are two more left. Long faces for now. But the war is not yet over. Absolutely. And the way I see it, especially as you have multiple qualifiers, you have these strong teams that you weren't able to defeat in the open qualifiers, but some of them are going to qualify eventually. That just means, hey, now you're the top dog. And we saw the gold team, especially, obviously the green team played exceptionally, but I think we expected this from them. And like we said, we saw them and we're expecting them to even qualify today. It's a little, little bit of a surprise that they weren't, but the gold team, that's where things were up in the air. And I feel like they really showed up today. They weren't able to qualify either, but still, they, they really established a strong presence in the bracket. They've showed up, and especially with a roster that's been recently changed, showing up that they can actually cause some havoc when they have the chance to shine and I have a lot of faith in the futures for both of these squads right I mean this was a team that you know from the other side 
they won the CRL championship last year. They've come here since. They've beat teams like Akron. They've beat teams like Fisher. Mm -hmm. They've come very close to, or at least given Concord a run for their money before. They've beaten West Virginia. They've beaten names on the top, a team that n almost no one would have probably predicted to not qualify for day two. But unfortunately, that's what happens. You put three top dogs into one pool, one of them's got to be the one to get sent home. Unfortunately for us, it was our day to do just that. So, oh man, you got to feel bad for Zai. Yeah. But hey, you know what? Again, like I said, if you're watching this back, guys, there are two more left to go on the CRL Opens. No worries. Water off a duck's back. Let's Absolutely. get back into the lab. Let's get going. Let's get grinding again and come back even better for next time. Absolutely the plan. And there's... Honestly, the only better way to end the day would have been them both qualifying, unfortunately. <laughs> but they both left out at the same point in the tournament. I mm -hmm. think that alone says a lot. I think these teams are so close in terms of the way they're able to play and the fact that they're both going to the same facility. That just means you have the perfect training partners. And when you have somebody like that continually pushing you with the same goal in mind, what more could you ask for? It's the perfect training partners and excited to see what both of these teams are doing. But ladies and gentlemen, that's it. Yeah, I was <laughs> it's gonna say, been a long whoa, day. I'm so tired. It's been a long day. We, we, yeah, we, uh, again, I want to thank all of the players for showing up. Um, all of the players in the tournament for putting on a show. Absolutely. Letting us do our jobs. I want to thank every single person in the back room. If it were not for you, we could not do what we come here to do today or for any of the days for that matter. Not at all. Especially me, because I'm just a casting merchant. I can't do anything in the back room right now. <laughs> I'm still, I'm, I'm trying to learn. But anyway, hey, well, you're, you do, you're what you do. You're good at it, and it's always a pleasure casting you, Patrick. Oh, absolutely, want to thank you for what sure. a day, what a day. Maybe I got these long days feel short. <laughs> oh, absolutely, man. I same goes to you. That was, you know, for the amount of time we were in here, it felt pretty good. So hey, there's always that to take away. I will say thank you to our sponsors, the SRC, the SEC alumni, Alienware, Subway, and Tim Hortons. Thank sure. you guys, and without further further ado that will be all she wrote for now no stream on sunday because none of the teams qualified to day two even then rl esports might have taken over the stream so yeah. we weren't sure just yet but anyway regardless so tune in for sure yeah tune in for sure on rl esports to see that day two uh, a couple of the final rounds will be shown there thank you to everybody for coming out for showing support and that will do it here it's been me patrick smoke chambers and daniel better brown hope you guys have a fantastic night take care stay safe